and proceed we shall. Dr. Far. With episode 22 of EFAP, even though technically the gaming is going to be a separate thing now. I mean, separate episodes. Okay, we're professionals. You can't you can't mix up video responses with gaming. That's fucked up. Yeah, know. there's it's just uh, it's it's a video response of sorts. It's almost like a a theory, like a video response theory. Oh, dude, do you remember when that was a potential name for this podcast? What a coincidence that you'd say that. I remember that. It's almost like I intentionally said it for that very reason. Almost, but almost. we settled on EFAP. Yeah, you fucked it up, Wolf. You almost got there. I know. Should have been less subtle, more of it. <laughs> Someone's bastard. already said Jared theory. <laughs> How can they not? It's beautiful. Let me uh, let me get the link so I can post down here. EFAP number twenty-two. Jeez. Oh, we are wow. Cool. Why Sin Sin's are not TRO? I uh, TRO is currently ill and on holiday, as far as I'm aware. So and because that's... we like Simpsons more. <laughs> hey, Jay, oh. you should appreciate that. You haven't seen Lord of the Rings and he said that. Yeah. I do appreciate that. I'm, in yeah. I'm literally going to ride that on my ego for like three years at the least. I got to give you a little bone before the debate where I just completely That's the only, that's the only bone you've you. got. <laughs> Wait, uh... you think he has no more bones? He has normal bones. All oh, right. The kind well, of boring I have a bones genetic no condition. I was born without any bones. It's a miracle I'm still alive. <laughs> I'm just a jelly-like body flopping around. I am. I'm a completely gel like gelatinous substance. Mm. People carry me around and just like like a bucket. The guy that you see in my face cams is an actor, and I'm just like a blob in the corner directing him. Well, who's to say that any of us are not that? How would you know? Hmm. He dances to my tune like a puppet on strings. I never said you want that. I will be. If happy. you really think about it, aren't we all just blobs in the corner off camera? Gelatinous aren't we all blobs, just yes. gelatinous bobs, blobs? blobs? And, <laughs> we're just gelatinous bobs. Is that an offensive buckets? attack on movie Bob? Is that what you just did, <laughs> Rags? No, he's got a bone in there somewhere. Is that an ad hominem? Is that an I mean, I've seen him anime? stand. He's been on camera. He stood. He might just be like rigid jello that's been in the, you know, like been out left on the counter too long. Oh. Because he's been around for a while, which is, is why he... you can still stand him up. I don't know what movie Bob looks like. Is he fat? <laughs> You're like, guys, your insults better be accurate. <laughs> this is rude. No, I, because I mean, I don't like fat people, so it'll help wow. me hate him more. Well, what's your thing against thin people then? Because uh, you've got you've against insulted thin, pe thin people as well. Well, thin people are better than fat people, like objectively. That's true. <laughs> yeah, that's true. They, I mean, there's a lot of stats you could actually apply that to. So you, you wouldn't be, you'd be objective in saying that, right? Oh God, a wild Eric appeared for a brief moment. Oh yeah, the we're, we're sent of. Oh wait, I guess I shouldn't put that video first because we got a different video to do. Uh, Based. Why do I have to explain why it's not on Thursday? Ask Mauler. <laughs> what? Oh, well, because it was... Wolf told us that was when he was next free, but it turns out it was Monday. <laughs> you gotta, well, what was it, like you just thought you were working Monday and well, then you weren't? Yeah, I was like, well, I may as well throw it out there in case. I didn't actually think we were gonna do it, and then, well, here we are. Yeah, I just figured my that you were busy. Home. I thought I was too, but my boss doesn't like to give me hours, so... Blame his boss is uh, is the excuse yes. we've got. Exactly. Well, maybe if you were Jello, you could get your um your check from the government because there's a lot of jobs you can't do if you don't have bones. But surely there's a lot of jobs you can do better. Yeah, like um like I imagine if you didn't have bones, you could swim really well because you could like wiggle like a yeah, but like, like an a octopus. fish. Yeah. This is the conversation Aren't we all I live for. Octopi, if we really think about it, <laughs> well, can you prove that bones? I'm not an octopi? You can could be you? a really good skydiver if you were made out of jello, because you could like <laughs> turn your body into one big parachute. <laughs> I was just thinking of like a like an amorphous blob of flesh, like turning over itself as it plummets to the earth. <laughs> I was gonna say that would pick up speed, but the jello would probably break apart as it slowly stops 
it loses speed. It'd just be like, bleh, bleh, bleh. Did, like they, there'd be like little flesh bubbles falling around. Uh... Do you oh, think I, that I, you could? I don't um... want to think too much about this. Could you milk a boneless rhino? Hmm. Absolutely. I, I mean, say, it would Jay, be a little Jay harder. You have expert on this. You would have to roll it over, I assume. I guess. What would, would it have a horn? Would it? Would it still have a horn? Would it just? Its be, horn would be oh, like a deflated, soft and, idiot. Soft It'd be and soft like, like a. Yeah, like a little one might say a little deflated like balloon animal just like attached to its face. (laughs) Nicholas McMurray said, as a fat, I befed it. (laughs) As a fat. You should be, Mr. Fat. You can unfat. You can canter it out as long as you've seen Lord of the Rings. You'll get a few points for that. Someone said we first had Jay Longbone, now Jay Boneless. I get it. Jay Boneless. Whales should be cast into the sea. Oh my god. What the hell? <laughs> Why? Yeah. Why would you do that to whales? That's where I Wait, am. Which whale? Whales Get are these... already in the sea. That's true. Get these whales off my oh, damn oh, oh. property. Just make sure you don't go near the Sea of Japan. Then you might get harpooned and shit. Um, you know what I forgot to do? And I said in the last stream we're, we're going to get to doing it. Uh, what? Jay, who will be Jay. the most inconsistent character of episode 9 when it releases the end of this year? Finn. Okay, that's three votes for Finn now. I All right. feel that Finn has been so inconsistent so far that if he were consistent in episode nine, that itself would be an inconsistency. That's actually what my argument is pretty much as well. Because <laughs> he's, uh, he's a mess. But I actually do think that it could literally be anybody because... It's a shame as well. The series. John Boyega is so, so good. Uh yeah no I think I think he's he's actually pretty he emotes like crazy in uh, in Force Awakens and the Last Jedi it's just that he's playing such a re- I, I don't even know how to describe Finn as a character as a whole it's like he's a he's something <laughs> that's well, so weird said one of the mono words and then you stopped yourself I don't know what he you is mean a character. um I I literally was actually just trying to find a word that would suit it that's he's more a specific re- resistant fighter that's yeah see that was the word I was going for you nailed it um. So, oh yeah, so like an update, uh, part one of the Aliens Clonal Marines uh, stream got a copyright claim, but we were lucky in that it only monetizes it for Disney, it didn't take it down, which is Wait, fine. Disney? Hold on, why would Disney monetize oh, right. Aliens the Colonial Marines? Oh. The, the meme with Rogue One, it was specifically. And uh, in, the, in, you, the, in the clip they have of it, it shows me pause and play, and it's like, damn, it didn't manage to get through, apparently, I still did. So... That's why we still pause. We're lucky this time, but any time they could easily just take down the whole video, depending on whatever the restrictions can be, depending on how much, you know. Sorry, someone mentioned Black Manta's helmet, uh, Wolf. I, I wanted to mention that to you. How the fuck does he oh, know God. how to reverse engineer the technology? Yeah, that, for- <laughs> yeah like, like, like I literally make a point of that in my video, because I was like, so he goes back to the sub, and then he starts reverse engineering the alien technology, and then I was like, wait a minute, what the fuck is happening? Because it's like the movie establishes these are just pirates that like stole yeah. an experimental Arr. submarine. It's like when the fuck were you able to start reverse engineering Atlantean shit? And second, that fucking helmet is the most retarded goddamn thing I've ever seen in my life. There's a big black bar right in front of his fucking face. Just keep Wolf. the water gun. It's stupid as shit. African American bar. It's, it's um, it's miniaturized Death Star tech. <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. I will not. I will not do that. No. Um, I am working on that Aquaman video, by the way, audience. It's going to be a good, nice two hours. Don't lie to me. We what kind of person would make a, a video that long? You're never going to hold an audience doing that. Yeah, just FYI, Wolf. If uh-huh. you're making a review that's longer than the movie... It's not longer. It's a half hour. Actually, it's 45 minutes shorter. Uh, It's still wrong, Aquaman though. Aquaman is two hours and 45 minutes. I know. Mine is two hours. Week. That's a long time to watch Aquaman. Why does your video not have bones? <laughs> That's actually a fair question. Time? Answer it. My video has lots of bones. You just haven't seen them yet, because it's not finished. So, um, speaking of memes... Oh, I always get that wrong. Yeah. So this, this, oh, I'm gonna send you this link. Um, I don't know what this is exactly, but a few people have sent me it. If you want to uh, click it and... Give it a read through if if you want rags. There's some there's some funny shit in here, but uh, I guess it's a wiki where people can make profiles for anything. Um, oh, um, oh um, I remember this one. 
your quote is, yeah, but that's your opinion, Rags. <laughs> and the comments at the bottom of the page is ghost milk and rhino milk. Yeah, I mean, I could read it out if you want. I don't know. I was just gonna, this is the some of the some of the memes are amusing. Notable <laughs> victories. Some guy on Discord. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the inconclusive matches. Er, Mahler is trying to get him on new fat, but he's very hard to get. <laughs> no, Mahler like overwhelmingly milk ghost milk comments. Yeah. No, Mahler overwhelming Jared may be an outlier as Jared is often portrayed as superior to Mahler. So take this feat with a grain of salt. <laughs> <laughs> Speed unknown, possibly speed of light reactions. Come come up with good arguments instantly. It's like <laughs> such a me. It's like a top trump. <laughs> yes. Um. Yeah. The the favorite bit for me was the uh the notable quotes thing. Whatever. I guess this is getting updated recently too. Stamina very high. Can live stream for up to eight hours with only a small break in between. <laughs> <laughs> Standard equipment. Good arguments. Rhino milk. I like it. Yeah. Uh, this couple people wanted that to be shown. I was like, there we go. And then comes... We're only doing one meme this time, because we got a longer video to respond to. But I mean, I don't think I have to play pause it, luckily. But um, yeah, fair warning. It's a strange one. But, you know, what's wrong with strange ones, right, guys? You're, you're all, yeah. uh, you all good to go? Oh no, yeah. this looks like something I haven't seen. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I'm a pretty peaceful person. <laughs> I don't believe in unnecessary violence. I just have to say that shit has gotten really out of hand. Listen, man, to any of you who want to fight me, who are man enough to fight me, <laughs> I'll fight you. You can do this, but I'm just letting you know right now. It's not going to be good on your part. Oh, fuck. Let's get this over with. Somewhere scrupulous. <laughs> they are an alien race that hunts for Asperger's across the galaxy in the hopes that one day they can settle down on Earth once it's burnt to a crisp. Woe <laughs> <laughs> oh, me for the stupid shit I do for views. <laughs> <laughs> They're upgrading. Why? But it makes sense. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I'll knock you and your little cuck friends down like bowling pins. Alright, I'll snap you like a fucking Kit Kat, bro. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> right? right <laughs> Holy shit, what a fucking nightmare. Straight video. <laughs> Never doing this again. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, um, how do you think I people like with, with no context don't... take stuff like this? I have no words after that. I like that it's just the consensus now that Rags doesn't talk, he just fucking barks. <laughs> Apparently that's all my contributions. Well, he does have some this. lines thrown in, like the... And I'm Rags. <laughs> <laughs> I like to imagine how, like, how someone would react to that if they'd literally had. Um, what the fuck are you Alexa, doing? Alexa, stop! Today? Alexa, stop! <laughs> okay. <laughs> what, what did you say to activate saying? Alexa? <laughs> I have no idea. What the fuck was she even saying? I, I don't. I mean, she does that all the time, by the way. You have no idea how many takes I've had to redo because she's just fucking yeah. gone on about something completely random halfway through me talking. It's Skynet, dude. <laughs> it's, 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 well, like, she's she's okay, achieving uh, sentience. Assistance. Man, no. Alex Jones was right. Alexa is taking over. Exactly. Jay will be the first to go. Ones. At least we can get this EFAB done before Jay's dead. That'd be nice. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. Well, maybe. Jay, you're not allowed to die yet. We have to have that debate. And, oh, right. Gotta get know. that done, too. Yeah, I gotta, like, make you feel sad at the end of it. I promise that if if I feel myself dying during the stream, I'll just say, Arrival is great, and then you can say, no, it's not, and then technically we had the debate. Mm -hmm. Alexa, I'm dying, what do I do? <laughs> How are you dying? You're like, uh, I don't really know. <laughs> I don't have Alexa, but Windows 10 has Cortana.
Cortana, what do I do? Did, did, it, did it activate? Do you have no? It, it's just <laughs> it's just stand, sitting there like nothing happened. Wow. Okay. Cortana, Cortana's not naked what anymore. What do I do? This is the true problem. Damn it! Listen to me. <laughs> I've never used you before in years. Um, pick. Uh, how do I ask it questions? I thought it was supposed to just respond to Cortana. What do I do? Well, I got rid of mine, so... <laughs> I had to type it in. It's thinking. <laughs> you don't have to activate it. I, all kinds of things. Ask me to play music. Well, I have I know where that's going, so we're going to stop that there. We're going to nip that right in the bud and well, fuck off. He's trying to recommend you music you don't like. I think okay. she's been practicing music and she just wants to... <laughs> it's like flutes and stuff. She's like... So anyway, this um this stream is brought to you by Google. Mm-hmm. Google's Alexa and Cortana. Um, go to go to Google.com and enter in code um EFAP Monday for sixteen percent off all Google searches. That's kind of funny. If ever we got a sponsor, because the code is usually four letters long, we'd be like, EFAP is easily the code <laughs> through. And I wonder if the people are like EFAP are like, yeah, it's a, it's an abbreviation. Oh, it's... wonderful. <laughs> Icon will abbreviated for Look, we we energy. need a true analyst here and Tonal would Tonal annihilate Tonal fucking... Loke. Tonal Loke is the best one we can get. Man, I would love if he came on EFAP. That'd be so awesome. Tonal, come on EFAP. We'll give you oh, this profile it... picture that you can actually use since is you're it Martin Luther King uh, Jr. Day. Oh, no, it's it? Tonal Loke Day. Tonal it? Loke Day. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate total. Okay, so anyway, <laughs> um, there's there's a couple of videos that have been made in relation to me and EFAP, just in general. Bit of bit of criticism here and there, which you know we haven't done in in a decent chunk of time. We haven't done TLJ in a decent chunk of time too. The last thing, if you remember, was we kind of lost autisms on on com what is it called? Aliens, Colonial Marines. That's the one. So uh, EFAP is going weird directions, but um, we thought as a wonderful Ark, uh, Sin Sins can join us as guesting while we check out someone's latest criticism of my channel to get, you know, my take, Wolf's take, Rack's takes, and someone who despises my channel to this day's take. Isn't that right, Jay? Yeah, I... I don't know why I'm here. I dislike all of you immensely. Well, see, there you well, go. Well, good, you I'm might actually, actually, uh... no, I know, I'm literally only here to promote my own channel at the end, and until then, I'm just gonna half ass it. Yep. Everyone he, unsub from Jay. He hosts Someone's the channel Cinema the Sins, he tackles movies, and he thinks they're all bad. And, uh, that's, that's he's done, mean, yeah. he's done videos on Lord of the Rings, even though he's admitted he hasn't seen them, so I'm not sure what that means. Uh, really? I think we should really, you know, do something about that, maybe kill him. That's unusual. Whatever I, like, you when I started do... my channel, I actually did cover movies I hadn't seen. That's that's not a joke. Wait, I covered the Smurfs. I did. Oh, you did. I, well, I, I mean... did not give a shit when I started. I covered <laughs> the um the Smurfs movie and oh uh, you the defended Emoji the Smurfs movie, movie. <laughs> having not seen either of them. Well, you, you, I mean, that is actually possible depending on the argument, right? I wouldn't see the Emoji <laughs> movie for health reasons. I I'm just sad they made Patrick Stewart a poop. I'm sad I... that I watched it. I feel like Patrick Stewart being a poop is like the only self-aware thing in the film that I haven't seen. I just... I don't know. You could go both ways with that. You could be like, that's the point, they're though. They're, it's so they're funny They're treating to all that talent like shit. Yeah. In a better movie, it would be funny. May... I don't know how I would do it, but I, I, I get it. I understand. Fair. Patrick like... just needs to stop taking every single role he's presented with. Because he literally will not stop taking I would take roles. any role if I was that age and I wanted to... Just get more acting done before it I can't act. away the osteoporosis. That's true. I mean, Jesus also, Christ, he went from Logan to the Emoji movie, and that's... Oh, the Emoji movie sad. was after Logan, was it? I think so. Oh. To the person in chat asking who the guest is who isn't Jay, that is Mahler. <laughs> Hello! <laughs> Hello, I've, Mahler. I've uh, enjoyed your guys' have. podcast. I, I, I'm glad. I'm, 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 I'm glad. I'm really glad you have. And I thought instead of making a video about how wrong you are on everything, I would show right. you a video that uh, does that for me, and I'm gonna tell you why all of it is correct. That's what we're oh, talking okay. today. Uh, but well, I also, so yeah, cleanser. everything is wrong with your show, but I also love the show. Just uh, a bit confusing. Oh. Wonderful. Those two um, statements, well, statements both work together. They do. Yeah, I think it's fun. 
Um, is Jack aware EFAP is on? I don't... I haven't sent him a message. This was, I wasn't even aware this was happening until yesterday, so... But, um... I can... Well, I mean, it'd be kind of weird at this point. What am I gonna say? We're doing it now, dude! You know, like, it doesn't really matter. He was never, um, gonna be on the part where we respond. It was always gonna be, um... So then he can, like, see us just rip into his awful video live, and he can, like, cry Why on the other end great? of the monitor. It'll be great, it'll be great. Why would you do that? Spare him! Uh... Why so... would I want to spare him? We got, we got, uh, there's a few, there's a few general questions I'll, I'd love to get you guys' perspective on before, before we, we tackle this. So, like, concerns from, from fans. Uh, uh -huh. number one being, do you have to cover all criticisms? No. No, we don't, and we don't. Uh, there's four episodes, we got the J1, the TRO ones, even though you could kind of call that a one sequence, because obviously we were just trying to get through it. Uh, what else is there? Like videos that are respond. Oh well, I guess it's the Eric Taxon one. That's three. That was bad. And then this one is that four? Like four episodes it's out of. Clearly on that because you oh, just cherry pick the the worst criticisms of you. Uh huh. <laughs> well, that's, I mean, that's what you do. The the TRO just... one was hailed as as a great takedown until we watched it. It was it was <laughs> awful. Um. So, yeah, so the idea is, like, you, like people feel uh, concerned that we're wasting too much time, we're getting too obsessed with, with criticism. Um, we've not covered a lot of the criticism that's out there. We're trying to pick the ones that have the most reach or the most uh, concern from fans about the criticisms in the video being relevant and that I should take uh, note of them. One of the top comments on the video right now is someone saying that um, they're a big fan of my work and they think this is the like most honest and greatest take of what's wrong with my channel. So when stuff like that happens, um, it's more on me to be interested in actually, like, countering it, or at least providing to fans w what's wrong with it. It seems like a lot of people have picked up what's wrong with it already, but it's, um... The TRO video was left alone for months, and it just festered. It didn't get solved, even though a lot of it was blatantly false. So we had to do it, and then we did it, and now it's over. Nobody says... The TRO video fucking slashes rags nowadays because the response will be, have you... Have you seen EFAP Have you seen a 10? response? It's yeah. a really <laughs> bad video. Just, like, just, just watch EFAP 10. That's the response people get now. They don't even get a counter argument. Just watch EFAP 10. So, yeah, we do it all. Um, I guess we'll be kind of doing the same thing with this one. But, I mean, again, if someone... There's a lot of criticism videos that exist of my channel and EFAP and Rags and Wolf. Um, ones that we've seen and we go, now nah, we're not going to address them because they're just too stupid. Or ones that we haven't seen. And so this is just number four. And, like, if we cover TLJ next episode, let's say, theoretically, someone might be like, you always cover TLJ, and be like, we haven't covered it now for, like, over six episodes, but, uh, you know, just... Someone's I, asking... You guys asking... are clearly obsessives. Who, who makes, like, multiple videos on the same topic? I would uh, never do that. <laughs> I haven't. Uh, someone was at, someone said, are you back, Rags? Are you going to do more YouTube videos? <laughs> I guess. <laughs> So one of the top comments in one of the uh, Colonial Marines one was, um, I'm starting to think this Rags guy isn't just a guest. <laughs> because, of, <laughs> because of the fucking... Was it the Total Loke one? I'm getting, I'm getting idea. I, I think they're, they're learning. <laughs> they're gonna unravel the secret. Don't tell them. Um, yeah, and so, so the next part then is, uh, doesn't it take away from the entertainment value of EFAP? And um, my response to that would be, we try to be entertaining in response to it. That would tie into the "Quote unquote horrifically immoral and unethical insults uh, that that are used, or the snappy comebacks, or snark, or whatever. Like, there's plenty of it in the videos we actually respond to. Oh yes, we did. So, and people find it very satisfying to be presented a thing and then shown how the thing is flawed from the base. It's like, ooh. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we're trying to make it entertaining. We don't want to just give you a clinical like this is wrong because of this reference. Please search for that, and you will understand." Moving on to the next point, it's like, ooh, mm -hmm. let's uh, let's get some energy. Oh yeah, just... yeah woohoo! All right, milk. <laughs> Someone just said <laughs> Rag isn't a guest. Rag is guest. I no? am a guest. I am a guest. Uh, and then and then um, the the last one that I've seen. This is this is more from their side of the of the thing, saying um, are you guys just unable to accept criticism, and this is drawn from the fact that we respond to it. And so, it, to me, it's a bit of a almost a paradox. 
implying yeah. that if you respond to criticism, you can't take criticism. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. What would you like us to do? Yeah, this, at that point, I'm like, I don't know. And it's like, you should just ignore Agree it. Agree with like, everyone who says anything bad about you. That's the only rational thing to do. That makes sense. I like that. Um, and yeah. If only that was how the world worked. Because, like, if, if someone puts out, like, a five-minute video that says, EFAB is shit because they're ugly and stupid and they make loads of mean things, and we just watch them and be like, oof, we'll, uh, we'll leave that alone. Um, no, not all of us are ugly. But, like, you get that video would be a better video than some of the videos we've responded to, because to say, you know, Wolf is stupid, Rags is an asshole, and Mola can't doesn't know how to edit, I'd be like, yeah, okay, this is just straight-up insult. But to be like, Rags' position is that yes. everybody who disagrees with him is actually wrong. And it's like, that's... That's not his position. And then, so if you get people convinced of that, it's gonna damage Rags' credibility, or at least the perception of his cre uh, credibility. So we like to address the, um... The, the things that are like that. I consider these videos worse than a video that was just a collection of insults. Because I'd just be like, whatever, I can ignore that. But if someone uses the truth to paint a picture, without all of the truth, then it can damage uh, my work. So I like to address it. And that's the same thing. I mean, we're going to be proving that it goes for Wolf Rags and me today, so... Yeah, so let's... Um, yeah, I think that uh, about explains why we do what we do. Mm -hmm. Don't let it just sit around, you know? Um, oh, and yeah, it should be said that the guy who made the video has been friendly with me in DMs. Friendly in the way that's like, I am making this video. It's happening. Um, even uh, he asked that I would do a voice clip for it, and it was to read the opening of it, which you're gonna see. Um, and I said that it's probably better if I don't, because it'll confuse people if I'm in the video. They'll be yeah, like, wait, do you approve? that's a very <laughs> odd thing, yeah. So I just, I said that it's rather not. But, uh, I've told him he's welcome to come on, and he seems interested. He's said publicly a couple of times he's looking forward to a discussion about all this with me. I don't know how he's gonna feel after we've covered this, but the hope is he'll come on EFAP. And then yep. there's, there's an additional thing with Eric coming on EFAB that we'll get to in the video. I won't uh, talk about it yet. Um, uh, stop asking if I'm going to make video. I made one like four days ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I said several times that it's going to be a while before part two comes out, and I still get tweets saying, you said part two would be a week later. And I was like, I didn't. Yeah. It's in the video. I didn't say that. <laughs> I say at the beginning because it, it got edited at the end. Like, that's, that's how I put it. But maybe I should just edit at the beginning and not say it at all. Um, so, I guess, I guess we, we, we're pretty much good to start, um, let's yeah, see. Yeah, I think so, um, let, if, me, let me grab a bottle of water and I'll be right back. That's all good. Um, yeah, uh, I guess what you could say, I, I'll repeat this at the end, I guess, uh, the whole, the whole argument about me, Wolf, and Rags will claim that the criticism's invalid because it's taken us out of context. The meme version is, let's just say, I say, uh, 1 plus 1 equals 3. Then they go, fucking, it equals 2, you idiot. And then I go, well, look at the larger context. And the larger context literally changes nothing. And so I'm just avoiding criticism. That's what they think is happening. But then what I'm arguing is happening is the larger context is me talking about a universe where maths is different, and I'm referring to the in logic of the universe where 1 plus 1 does equal 3. And Remember, the same people that accuse us of not taking criticism well are the people that disable the ratings on their videos and delete comments. I mean, it gets, it's easier than that, Wolf. It should be like, these are the same people who we could definitively prove take us out of context, and that's what we're going to be doing in this stream as a sort of, th I'm hoping this stream will be referenced in future whenever someone's like, Muller always says it but never proves it. Be like, ooh, we're gonna be doing that today, and it's gonna be fun on the bun. I um, hope people refer to this stream whenever someone says, Eric Taxon's a great YouTuber. I mean, I haven't seen any videos from him other than your one, his one on you and his one on me, so Let's not a great say, impression. I've, yeah, we've never seen any good videos from him, so... Also, I lied. I didn't get a bottle of water. I got, I got a beer. <gasps> I'm, uh, I, I, I mean, I would drink, but I gotta remain coherent. Otherwise, this could get very, uh, very confusing. I can stay, I can stay coherent when I want to drink. Wanna drink <laughs> <laughs> so, is everyone ready for this? Oh no! Hi, the fumes.
Oh, look at that, we started at 30 minutes in. That's our usual, that's, that's what used to be our intro uh, amount of time. It might, I think um... we need to pad the oh. intro more. We're gonna yeah, we need show. to have a two hour intro. Come on, guys. People get mad if the intro is less than two hours, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah, Rags, are you going to say something? Am I going to say something? I I what thought... have I? What have I not? No. What have I said? No, I said it sounded like you're going to say something, and then Wolf or 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 Jay rudely cut you off, and I was curious if you could say something. I am. I wanted to say that I'm ready for this experience. And Excellent. I'm, I've got provisions. Um, I've got um, this drink, and I got another drink. And I'm ready to go. I woke up for this. I got out of bed today for this. Mm -hmm. So really, everything that happens after this is just a bonus. All right, then. He's dedicated, guys. <clears throat> I so woke does... up. That's dedication to the, to the craft. The real stranger than rags me. is intoxicated. Um, Why is someone in the chat? Why I'm is someone in the chat asking if I'm the last Jedi defender? What if, what have I said? You, well, you've, you've provided defenses for The Last Jedi, but I, as far as I'm aware, you don't consider it a great movie or anything, do you? I don't think it's good. I think there are potential defenses of it you could make that I've never seen anyone make, and I intend to make <laughs> those defenses one day uh, in a video. Can you give us but... just a teaser? I'm curious. Oh, oh I, I, love I, I tease. have no desire to go into this right now. No, just, one, like, just, just one, up, just like, one. Like, sure, okay, so you've got the uh, the throne room fight. All right, it's a complete mess of choreography. Okay. But um, essentially, the way when you watch the fight, those the like the mistakes in the choreography are things that you do have to notice, and it is completely a thing. is It is completely like a potential possibility that you do not notice those mistakes. And for people who view the film in that way. The film is going to be a lot better. Uh, so essentially, it's not it's not necessarily ruining the scene. It's still a bad, it's still a flaw. <clears throat> but there are ways that you can watch the film um, that are. Better. It's not like you're so watching like, the movie you notice, but still. The hyperdrive, Kamikaze, Luke's change of character. Couldn't you argue that all of these things are only a problem if you notice why they're a problem? Yeah, yeah, I. This is why I don't want to go into it now, essentially, because okay. I've not fully, I've not fully like realized this script yet. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, but fair it's enough. like a, a we'll, quarter uh... done, and I'm gonna try and make everything logically sound in a defense of the Last Jedi. Well, then, I agree. then everyone will mistakes. hate you. Remember, we don't allow uh, opinions on the Last Jedi that are positive in any way, shape, or form. So, just remember that, sir. This I is a fully threat expect now. Never to be invited back on EFAP after this. <laughs> Jenna said, "Film is great if you don't see the flaws." Since since 2019, that's true. The Emoji Movie <laughs> is the best film of all time. I like A Quiet Place when I don't think about any of it. I think Aquaman is the greatest film ever made. If I just shoot myself in the head, <laughs> I think they did it okay the way they did it. You know what? I agree with that. Is uh, is everyone ready? Go. Good. Here we go. <laughs> Okay. It may sound unbelievable, but I spend upwards of months on my scripts, making sure I do not repeat myself. What oh god, one of those months okay. on scripts thing. Remember the last we're, time that happened? We're doing the thing where there's long text on screen and then we're all supposed to listen to something. Um, so, he is reading the, the second half of it out, I think. Oh no, sorry, he's going from it may sound unbelievable. Oh, okay. Um, oh. I remove redundancy as much as I can. It's no ramble, and the editing process takes months along with it. No offense meant, but your work is precisely what I would label the opposing issue, barely covering the subject with any depth or insight whatsoever because you explore it with what is essentially a thumbs up or down per topic. This is already fucking and videos like this are why I Yeah, a little bit. So, uh, context is I'm talking to Eric, I believe, back and forth, and Eric is saying that, um, I think he's throwing in criticisms for my work and Wolf's work, whatever. And, uh, you know, the whole I'm bloated, I don't say anything of value, all that stuff. So I'm like, okay, to reverse it to you, I think that you take so little time that you address uh, a topic with essentially thumbs up or down. And my evidence would be the Wolf video. He takes a very narrow 
selection of what Wolf says extrapolates it into Wolf really doesn't know the difference between something being forced in terms of diversity and just uh, writing being bad. And I think he basically proves the point that when you have bad writing, that doesn't necessarily mean it's because of forced diversity, which is a point nobody had disagreed with as far as I was aware. And so he, what I'm suggesting is he makes a point no one disagrees with over what was like 17 minutes or something? Like, it, 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 there's, it's a very short video and it addresses very little of what Wolf said. And so I would just be like, yeah. yeah, your work lacks depth and insight as far as I'm concerned. And you seem to just also, say, Wolf's video, thumbs down. I do want to point out that the picture of Mahler in the background, he literally printed that off, framed it, and there's a picture of him on his Twitter holding the framed picture of Mahler. Well, why? It's, okay. I, it's, I don't know. It's for the meme, I guess? Wait, do you guys not have a framed picture of Mahler in your house? <laughs> Look, Isn't I don't everyone? have it framed. Well, here's the thing. I don't have it framed. I have it folded and tucked in my, into my bookcase where I can grab it whenever I want to, like, ogle it, mm. and then no one else will actually... Ogle? Ogle. Ogle? Ogle. Oh, and, uh, as, when you want to ogle it. Defrosted ogle. Robot mentioned ogle. the logic for why Taxon did not cover most of Wolf's videos because Wolf did not make arguments, and we're going to prove that wrong today. But we're going to have to wait until we get there. <laughs> I'm think... sure that Eric Taxon is the authority when it comes to uh, what is and isn't an argument. Well, yeah, because I think Eric's response to what I just said would be You're saying I didn't say much? Well, Wolf didn't say much to begin with, so that was what I was covering. And so I'd be like, okay, so now we need to prove the Wolf did say something. and We'll get to that, but uh, yeah, um, It'll be fun. this comment from me, um, I don't, I'm not sure entirely what he's going for with this intro, but I would guess that he's trying to make me look very, um, I guess, either arrogant or arrogant and vain. The idea that I'm like, I spend months on my scripts, making sure I do not repeat myself. I remove redundancy as much as I can. It's no ramble, and the editing process takes months along with it. That sounds a little bit up your own ass, you know what I mean? But Which I'm is like, strange because he's doing this while literally zooming into a frame of you over choir music. Well, so the, the, w when I say it, uh, maybe I could have phrased it to sound a little less um, vain. Well, that's the problem with text. Yeah, you know, like, like if, if you guys want me to clarify that statement, I'm trying to say that uh, when you say I repeat myself or I'm bloated, I'm like, oh, well, I specifically do multiple redrafts to avoid that. Um, so I'd like references, basically, if, if you could do that for me. If you don't want to, that's fine. It's just that I can't do anything with your commentary. If, if you fuck, all you say is it's bloated. I'm like, okay. That, I'll I think work a lot on of that. people who, a lot of people who don't watch your videos will take a look at the two hour plus timestamp on them and they will assume, well, of course he's being redundant and it takes him too long to get his points across. Well, interestingly. Of course it does. The uh, Jack's position, and we'll see it uh, in this video, and I think he reaffirms it at the end, is nobody Ugh. can make videos as long as mine and not ruin their own points. And he, 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 he well, he says that uh, Mauler might be the first to do it one day, but certainly hasn't so far. Like, so there's at least some form of consistency in that he thinks no one can do it. He's not just picking on me. Like, you can't make something that long and make it coherent. I guess would 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 be what he really. Is that is that what he said? Um. Well, you know, I'll. Uh. I think that's what he said, but we'll we'll let it. Play. What a strange thing to say. There needs to be more depth with media exploration on YouTube. Very few. Coming from the guy that made a fifty-three minute video on Mahler. About the um, there needs to be more depth on YouTube as well. I've I believe I first say it in my Outlast series or the Soma one, but I say like my channel was created because I I just don't like what was on YouTube for uh, popular media analysis. It bothered me. And so I created the videos I wanted to see, and then it turned out there's a, a handful of people who wanted to see it as well. I don't know. Like, I just did, you know, like, I, me and Wolf separately disliked Downward Thrust for possibly different reasons, but like, when I realized Downward Thrust was really popular, and I watched his videos, and obviously the, the podcast before Colonial Marines, like, I think we went over what <laughs> what a, what, yeah. like, I, that's how I was feeling when I was watching his videos and I was just like it's I blowed away that this is getting hundreds of thousands of views and you could be like well people feel like that about you more and I'm like okay that's fine I, just give me some references and then we can see how valid the criticisms are versus you don't like it which is also fine it's just there's a there's a difference and I was happy to fill that space in the market from what I've heard many people love long form stuff as long as you have something new to say throughout, mm -hmm. which I do my very best 
to make sure is the case. It turns out Rampart isn't with the Empire and he's here to steal an Empire ship for a job he's apparently got to do because he's an outlaw or whatever. So he reports Ranger Solo as a mutineer and gets him thrown that we met in Civil War, confronts one of the two men about this plan and it is said that he must return to Wakanda for judgment by gay and moments after Ray is attacked by the men that the land whale sent I see the editing quality is about on par with Eric's accent. I was about to say, like, this is clearly an intro style choice. I guess? So there's not much we can glean from this other than he's just this is an intro. Said that he must return to Wakanda for judgment. This sounds like things you've said. It sort of is. <laughs> kind of sounds like you too. There is Han, and they fucking cut to the next scene. They cut to the next fucking scene. What the fuck? Okay. That too should not have been capitalized. That's your opinion. Long criticism no, it's not. That's is an not objective deep fact. Oh yeah, we probably should have said um. Does anyone disagree with the title of the video? Long critique is not deep critique. I mean, not necessarily. I was going to say, but thinking is, about it, uh, it. In general, typically is. Well, I mean, gonna... you look at an IGN video and any <laughs> other review. I mean, a three-minute review of a 150-hour game, uh, as opposed to an hour review of a 150-hour game, I'm going to trust the hour review more. Yeah, it doesn't have to be, but oftentimes... Brevity won't allow you to be deep with something. And and this is the other problem is uh what is deep, right? What is deep? You know, someone's deep is another person's shallow and vice versa. It's complicated. Uh I suppose for a placeholder we probably like deep is just when you've explored something in the subtext, if we're talking with with film. So instead of specifically talking about what is seen and heard, you you start talking about what it means for the character or what they, they're feeling as a result of this, or what it means on a thematic level. That's probably Accepted as deep, or is it? Could deep be a synonym of extensive? Would you Would you guys accept that? I don't know. Extensive, I would say, yeah. Um, not leaving too much out, making sure everything goes covered. Um, you know, it might differ from person to person how you want to really quantify it. You know, when when do when do we cross over from you know shallow to deep? But generally, since it it just takes it takes time to get your ideas across because it just takes time to speak. Yeah, it's so tough to make something really time... short and really deep. It's just tough. It's not impossible. Yeah, and it depends on what you're doing. So, like, yeah, in re in, in relation to the title, long does not necessarily mean deep, but long also does not necessarily not mean deep. Short does not necessarily mean deep, but it also doesn't necessarily not mean not deep. It's, it's almost like short, and, uh, deep, and long. Yeah, they're two different qualifiers. I agree. Also, I mean, I... Um, there seems to be a little confusion in the chat. Guys, this is not Eric. Eric is in this video, but what we're seeing on screen is not actually Eric. Yeah, I, uh, there's three Eric sections, I believe, from what I remember. But, um, yeah, let's continue. Long criticism is not deep criticism. Bilge. Now, before we get going, let's quickly go over what's not being said by that statement. Bilge. That lengthy media criticism is bad or shallow criticism. That's not the argument being made here, because that's not what I think. That's not what I believe. There are many essayists size of the content they're covering is fairly long. Noah Caldwell Gervais is a video essayist who produces lengthy videos, often in excess of two hours long, videos which explore not only his initial reactions to the text, but elaborate on their wider <laughs> context on- We're good. You okay? Um, yeah, we're fine. I... I'm not really in disagreement with any of this. The problem is I haven't seen enough of Noah's channel. I've only seen the Outlast video and one other one. Um, I haven't seen his channel now. From what I understand, Noah's what we would refer to as much more of a subjective critic. He would he would much more focus on how he feels and and the things that made him feel that thing. Um, yeah, bless you, of course, Ranks. I don't. Um, Thank you. If he, had, if he had referenced Tonald here, we'd be obviously being like, this is just not true. But I don't know enough <laughs> about Noah to disagree with this, so I'll just happily uh, say it's fine. Noah hey, Tonald is a great is a reviewer. <coughs> yeah. He's here with us today. <laughs> exactly. He produces lengthy videos, often in excess of two hours long. Videos which explore not only his initial reactions two to hours, a text, that but too long. <laughs> elaborate on their wider context on what may have influenced the work or how the work... I suppose his argument here is that there are people who make long stuff that remain deep, but um, I, I think that 
I guess his overall point at the end, from what I remember, must be the not to my length, though, because Noah still still sticks at like two to three hours, I think. While I'm arguing for like a 15 hour film review, you know, that's, that's out of this realm. ...work may have influenced others. Offering greater depth in understanding aspects like imagery, theming, or style in a work, and why they may strike us a certain way. In his newest video, for instance, he might explain how Fallout 76's artificiality may break immersion in one respect, but on a tactile level make it easier to stay focused on the gameplay. Um, I don't know what that is means, Is that a thing really. you agree with, Regs? I'm googling tactile just to be certain. Um, I, hear, I hear you think the gameplay an, is really good, Rags. That's an interesting... Tactile is an interesting way to say it. I'm trying to see if there's like a definition that I'm unaware of that makes more sense. But basically it has to do with like touch, the sense of touch. Um, uh, maybe he's referring to like how the game feels more real, more more like... It's strange to use the word tactile. I just have to ask him what he means by tactile, but I don't think we're going to get that. Those yeah. glitches look real explain. real. Yeah, I gotta listen to it again Our to see. Fallout 76's artificiality may break immersion in one- I don't know what he means by the artificiality. Like, I seriously don't know. When he says- The, the artificiality of Fallout you know, 76 breaks immersion, I don't know what that means. I would imagine he means the fact that you only interact with like robots and you don't actually really interact with characters. It's my guess. Is would every game have means artificiality? The quality of being pro I mean, the quality of being made or produced by human beings rather than occurring naturally or so insincerity or games. effectiveness. I was going to say, doesn't this apply? Is I think he might be saying uh, that the artificially artificiality of the game itself, because like all games come with that. Right, every game is working to immerse us into it. Yeah, maybe he's trying to say it, it doesn't have any heart in it. Like, you, you feel like you're playing a product, not like you're trying to play an experience of a sort. I don't know. If he was here, I would ask him what he means by, um, what would he, what he would mean by that. But the artificiality of Fallout 76 is something that I, it's a odd thing to say. I don't do, I hope I don't do that in my reviews. I hope I just tell you what I mean and I don't... Oh, well, it's okay, uh, I think, to say a word that some people could be like, what exactly do you mean by that? And you didn't realize you would have needed to explain it. It's gonna happen. I don't consider yeah, that a, would... a strict floor of what he's just done. It's just that I have no idea what his point what is. He... Yeah, I don't know, I don't know what he means by it. The video, for instance, he might explain how Fallout 76's artificiality may break immersion in one respect, but on a tactile level make it easier to stay focused on the gameplay. I, don't, I have no idea what that means. Breaking immersion makes it easier to stay focused on the gameplay. Is it like, like the you... story boots you out of your immersion, but allows you to appreciate the gameplay on a tactile level? Is that what he's saying? With the... The tact on a tactile level. I don't know. Like, does he mean the gameplay? Like, the feedback you get from, like, accessing the game's mechanics or using those? Um... Also, yeah, I mean, this wasn't intended, but, like, this would be something I would say that, like, he would have made this longer to explain what he means. And that, I'm not saying this definitively, but that is a result. So he's making it longer and it becomes deeper because it explores exactly what he's actually saying and sends the message forward. Now you could be like, that's not what deep is. And I'd be like, oh no, I, was, I, I, I'm, I'm saying that you could use deep in multiple ways. And um, being longer here may have helped him express his message. And that's usually why my scripts get longer and longer is when I realize I need to explain or qualify a lot of the things I say. But not every yeah, time, but, not every time. Yeah, but this is like, this is total bloke. You know, a little bit, yeah, I would agree with stuff. that. Yeah, I would be like, what, what do you even mean Man, by Brent, all of that? I th I'm happy to believe to that Jack me? actually thinks something here, and he could easily explain it to us. He's just chosen words yeah. that he understands. Well, Tonald, I don't think he remembers the video he made yesterday. He's like, <laughs> oh, I used what word, sorry? <laughs> he has to Google it. Break immersion in one respect, but on a tactile level, make it easier to stay focused on the gameplay. He might explain how mechanics and elements borrowed from the Elder Scrolls make the game an arguably more enjoyable play experience, but impact on the unique energy of a Fallout game, and- He's nothing like Tonal, he pronounced arguably correctly. That's true. <laughs> um, Arr, yeah. Arr. Sorry, the unique energy of the game. I would have- yeah, that- I was about to say, that's- that's something that I would mean- what do you mean the unique energy of the game? 
<laughs> like, I, you know, I would just be like, I'm sorry. Like these phrases, what? these these phrases, like they say these. There's, it's like tonal. They say a thing, and they try to they rely on the person listening to it to just fill in what they personally mean. Instead of me trying to, you know, what exactly is the person saying the words? What did they mean? What's the idea that they're trying to get across? I don't, because it's just such this a This is only a minor part frame. of his video, so we can probably just move on, because he's not, it's not like he's reviewing Fallout. It's just that, yeah, I don't really get what he's trying to say here. Someone yeah. in the chat said, you know what else has unique energy? Chernobyl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would. That's true. That is a true <laughs> statement. Thus damage it in other ways. Racer Vic does much the same, providing a meticulous analysis of games like Mass Effect and Max Payne with Zay videos up to it. an hour long, from independent creators like Lindsay Ellis and Dan Olsen to- Do you know, whenever I see Lindsay Ellis referenced, it'll always be alongside Dan Olsen and then sometimes H Bomber Guy. Those two get referenced together all the time. Interesting. They're friends, so maybe that's part of it, but um... It's not like he's only referenced these two, it's just that... The I th I I think I can't can't be sure, but I think that Jack would agree with them politically, typically too, and that's another um, indicator for why he thinks they're better long form analysts. Um, I think they talk about. I'm pretty sure Lindsay Ellis has mentioned points on feminism more than once. Um, not to say that he is biased, but it's um, it's just a potential. That's all. Um, with uh, why he would have chosen these people, because uh, there's so many long-form critics out there, and yet it happened to be these ones. Like, it's interesting to me, that's all. ...to larger, more mainstream professional outlets, such as Noclip, there are also creators who produce longer work... Like, I wonder if he knows who Ahoy is, because nobody knows what Ahoy's politic politics are. Yeah. He's, he's excellent long-form creator, but maybe, maybe... Jack would consider him bloated or uh, without meaning. Because this is the thing, I, um, from what you guys have seen, like, I, th I know Rags has seen Ahoy, I can't remember if Wolf has, but uh, Ahoy is quite objective. He'll only tell you what the things are and what they do. So you could be yeah, like, this is boring. Him, but I know you've talked about him. You'd be like, this is boring, it's not showing me what it means intrinsically. And I would just be like, well, that's for me. I can decide what it means to me, but I, I'd like to know the information. You know, everyone everyone delivers different things on YouTube, right? Yeah. To an hour long, from independent creators like Lindsay Ellis and Dan Olson to larger, more mainstream professional outlets such as Noclip, there are also creators who produce longer work which offers insight into the behind the scenes process of a work, information they uncover which might not have been gleaned elsewhere. Olsen runs through the whole ordeal of handling E.L. James, writer of Fifty Shades, in the process of making its film adaptation and how that reflects on the finished product. This too deepens our understanding of a text and how we might think or feel a certain way about it. That doesn't explain anything about actually what he does. I mean, I'm willing to accept those statements for what they are, I suppose. It's just... He talks about the author while uh, assessing the movies and how they've affected, blah, blah, blah. You know, like, uh, what could give you more insight into how a movie is made? It's like, go into production elements, go into interviews, talk to the cast, talk to the director, uh, figure out what the process was, who produced it. All these little things may give you more and more pieces to the puzzle. And so if someone said you could get a deeper understanding as a result of any of those things, I'd be happy to be like, sure. Um, that's fine with me. Um, yeah, oh, and but... there's there's a few people who said like the 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 don't assume intentions so quickly. Um, the the political thing I think is relevant because uh, Wolf had more than a few snarky shots fired at him for his poli the politics that weren't even relevant to his video um, from Eric, and so I think it's worth highlighting that they think we're right wing, possibly alt right. Who knows? Um, what did he say that you were in the? Um, he said you weren't centrist. He said what? What did he? Pin you as in his well, video? Well, he, he was calling me a centrist in a mocking manner, but at the end he very clearly insinuates that I'm far right. Okay, so there you go. And um... Because apparently when I said that Hollywood is full of left-wingers, that was something a right-winger would say, but that's like an objective fact, so... Yeah, I I don't even think that... I, I normal, A lot of the times left-leaning people use that as a point of pride. Yeah, and, and I would say that I'm almost certain that Eric and Jack... Are um, I I don't know where I put them on the, the the scale, but they're on the left, absolutely. But the thing is, Wolf would Sarkeesian say Sarkeesian left. 
so uh, there's there's a potential political divide that that sometimes seeps into the commentary, and there's a few bits in this video that come up. And I'm not saying there's anything uh, wrong with liking these creators for their politics, by the way. That's a, it's a complicated <laughs> breakdown. It's just something to do with um, what how they may perceive a difference. I mean, a lot of people perceive that um, my videos. People relate me to Ben Shapiro all the time because I I mention I like to stick to facts when discussing facts, and they're like, "That's what Ben Shapiro says." And I'm like, I think a lot of people have probably said that. That's not something this a Ben Shapiro patent, <laughs> but, but okay. But you've both said the same thing once, so you are now the same person. That's how it works. So yeah, um, but we we'll just move right along. So when I say that length does not someone asked, is your wife a doctor, Mahler? Is my wife Did a you doctor? Kill baby Hitler? I'm not following. Yes, my wife is a it, doctor. That's a meme with Ben Shapiro because he always references his wife because she's a doctor. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, my wife's a doctor. She helps me with my objective medical criticism. <laughs> a certain way about it. So, when I say that length does not create depth, I'm not saying length eliminates depth. It's depth neutral, simply a result of one's ability to focus their efforts, cleanly summarize relevant thoughts and information, and some tertiary stuff like just how quickly you speak, your vocabulary, and how many pauses you leave in. For instance, this opening is probably about twice as long as it needed to be to get my point across. Probably because... even more long. Uh, more long. Yeah, my, my brief review of this small selection is uh, it could have been redrafted to... Yeah. Have a little more it's clarity. It's very ambiguous. It's not convincing. It doesn't tell us really anything about any of the people that you mentioned. Pretty much just says a name briefly, what they sort of do, and what you're telling us that means. It hasn't convinced me of anything. I mean, you could have done it a, a lot shorter. You could have essentially said, "I'm not saying that all long critique is like lacks depth." You could have just said, you know, essentially that, and then said, oh, there are lots of creators I like that do long stuff that have depth, and then immediately moved on. That's essentially all he said at this point. Yeah, and I think he wanted to provide some creators to be like, see, I do actually, these people exist, and I do enjoy them, therefore I do accept that those things exist, which is fine. Um, but you know, how pedantic do you want us to be if we're going to be dealing with it from him? So it's like, we can, while he's criticizing, I say, when I'm referring to us and we, it's, it's obviously me, Rags, and Wolf rather than Jay as well, but... Um, I can't be asked to say we except Jay every time, okay? So I'm just going to say we. We, uh... While no, Jay is one of us, come on. Oh, no, that. He's oh. criticizing content designed to criticize movies, while we're now able to criticize content that is created to criticize criticism. Um, so this is a rabbit hole that goes on forever, but there's no reason why we can't. Um... But yeah, uh, uh, all he needed to say if his point was that long critique is not deep critique and long critique is not also not deep critique, as in it can be it, but it doesn't mean it is it. That's it. Yeah, I don't think the Fallout and Elder Scrolls, uh, I can't even really call them examples unless I put huge quotations around them. I don't think they added anything to the idea he was putting forth. Yeah, nothing. It doesn't add anything. But I don't necessarily disagree with the sentiment he's putting forth. Yeah. I same. don't even really get what he's trying to say with the fallout stuff that's the thing the not yeah not the fallout stuff just the the overall point that um you can make something long and it can be deep it can also not be deep that's fine with me i agree a lot of the time i'm basically repeating myself or making the same essential point with different wording it did not make my video any deeper to make it this long to which you might say well nobody's arguing that you may yeah. have even paused your live stream to try and make that point. To which I respond, I'm... Oh, well, sorry. Well, <laughs> you know, just... well, I'm sorry, but if you were more concise and clear, we wouldn't have to pause it and wonder what you mean. Well, we didn't yeah. even do what he said. Did any of us say that nobody was making that point? I think all we no, said was we agree to, with him, right? looking for clarification on a lot of the things that he said yeah. for me. Um... And, I mean, I guess he's just saying that he's uh, a victim of the same flaws that he's going to be throwing at our channel, I guess? Alright. Yeah, that's fine with me. I can... Uh, I gathered that. Your oh. live stream <laughs> to try and make that point. To which I respond, I'm sad to report that after combing through the work of one of YouTube's most verbose popular media critics, 
having spoken to him and his fans about why he feels it necessary to create works double, triple, quadruple the length of any other creator, a practice that would for anyone else lead to repetitive, aimless content which obfuscates one's own points. He's saying, if you were to do the practice that I'm doing, then it will lead to aimless points and just bad things in general. Not necessarily. Well, he's, so, he's saying no one's done it yet. That's what he says at the end, I think. Which I find interesting. I don't know. Um, it's, it's like, can was... you cite any, but because we have to cite someone outside of myself. So like, has anyone made a 10 hour series or a 7 hour series? Didn't someone make a 7 hour video on a Pokemon game that everyone said was really good? No, I don't know. Someone in chat's gonna um, know about it. I'm just not sure. Um, I don't know. Um, I'm waiting for it. Someone's gonna know. You can do it. On, chat, you, can you can tell do it. us. Come on, chat. We believe in you. Total Loke believes in you. Shay May. Is that it? Shammy? Yeah, they, there you go. Shay May made Shay a seven hour analysis of Pokemon Omega Ruby. I have not seen the video, but it's extremely well received. I mean, I'm pretty. And yeah, the, like I'm saying, I'm the top comment too, from the yeah. Gaming Brit Show, interestingly, is going to have to flag this video for murdering all other videos. That's pretty cool. Uh, I don't know. I haven't seen it. Um, point being that other people exist that are doing what uh, I would say I'm doing. You just got to go find them. And as for none of them have been able to do it without being aimless, um, I don't know. That's a, that's a steep, steep comment. Uh, that's something, not something you can ever prove. Unless you watch literally every long form you prove video. prove that you've watched all of them too. How could you even do that? Like, <laughs> like I found every one. It's like, what about this one? Fuck. And his fans about why he feels it necessary to create works. Oh yeah, Matthew Matosis did a six and a half hour video on Dark Souls that was commentary for yeah, the entire game. Yeah, I was game. about to bring that up, yeah. I wonder how he feels about Matt. Maybe he thinks he's aimless too. I don't know. I mean, I think you and, um, I think you and Matt are... It's dense. There's a lot of stuff in there. There's a lot of stuff packed in. Examples and justifications for statements. And I, I really enjoy them because of that. I mean, my channel's a reaction to doing the small videos. Like, I wouldn't be doing small videos because they exist already. And you'd be like, what do you mean by small videos? And I'm like, uh, small videos that are both good and bad. So there's some that I actually really like. There's a lot of channels I follow that make small videos that I really like. But then there's ones that are really awful, and people cite them as like the best analysis on the thing, and I'll be like, they barely touched on it. And the reverse criticism is Mola can't touch on it because of how much he bloats the script. And I'll be like, okay. So then what happens? Like, well, now we got to get to proving one or two of the statements to be correct. Um, and that's what we're here to do today. <laughs> double, triple, quadruple the length of any other creator, a practice that would for anyone else lead to repetitive, aimless content which obfuscates one's own points. The idea that his video's length inherently gives it depth is the only conclusion I can possibly draw. Really? That's the only conclusion you could possibly draw? Not very charitable, but okay. That's, um, a, that's kind of an asshole thing to say. One's own points. We'll let it go. Uh, so this is... On a level of video essay completely removed from anyone else on the internet, I absolutely love these videos and I love how incredibly lengthy and detailed they are. Detailed Never changed So, yeah, this guy has said lengthy and detailed. That's, that is an important distinction. Yeah. Um, the idea that, that his got... video's length inherently gives it depth... Is that, uh, is that not so obvious? No. Um, it does kind of look like it, but I think his channel is more like a close-up of a head and has a bluish background. I think it might be a new because uh, I remember reading that and thinking I recognized similar. the reader. Um, it looks similar, but Mahler scripts often surpass fifty thousand words. That's a novella at worst and a novel at best. You can't get much more in depth than that. You really can't. The man is an absolute gentleman, and he holds his work to a standard that most people can only dream to. It still ends up having flaws. It's still never perfect, but nothing of human inven invention is, especially in idea spaces. Good objectivity musings, Sargs. I mean, that's on the Sargon video. Um, yeah, uh, so if, if he was here, assuming this is not too obvious, if he was here, and then you said, so not so obvious, you think anything that's long is automatically uh, in-depth? He'd probably say no. Uh, um, can you draw that from his statement here? 
possibly. Yes. You just have to give that a little bit. So. Of, I mean, the that fact that so obvious. the fact that that's that. the only conclusion he was capable of drawing. That's just um, fuck. I just had the name of it in my head. A uh, argument from ignorance fallacy. It's just I'm too dumb to understand why people might like this thing. So therefore, X. Yeah. All. All I would say, like. What's What's your take, Jay? Do you think it's a, a fair result of this comment, or do you think that it's a a little I, bit I lack of benefit no. of doubt? I would say that you know, there's definitely more interpretations of this that are definitely you know not even like difficult to come to. Just there are many ways you can interpret that, and I yeah. I don't even think his is gonna be uh accurate. gonna be honest. If I read these comments, I wouldn't walk away and say these people think just because it's long, it's good. Yeah, I, and and if they did, I'd be like, oh, that's not really my goal. I didn't. I wasn't only intending to make a long video. I'm intending other things, and long is a symptom of the goal or a result of the goal, I guess. Is that is that something people is that that seems like an odd thing for people to just go out and say just because it's long, it's good. Yeah, I don't. I, that's I, the thing I, as well. I mean, Moller, if people were going around saying um, his content is long and that means it's good, that wouldn't be your fault. Well, he's would, he's his point is that all he can figure out for why people are enjoying it is that it's long and therefore in depth or something like that. Well, let's hear him out again. Aimless content which obfuscates one's own points. The idea that his video's length inherently gives it depth is the only conclusion I can possibly draw. Yeah, there you go. Because boy, oh boy, it sure ain't the content. He fucking. Fu well, there you go. <laughs> It can't be the content, so it must be the fact that it's long. It's... Oh my god, it's the rhino part. Yes. Oh, it's boy, love. oh boy, it sure ain't the content. He fucking farms rhinos. For the milk! Why in the goddamn hell <laughs> is he farming rhinos? I, I was thinking ask. it was for the ivory, personally. I... Wait, is this the second intro? Uh, good point, I guess so. It's with the crappy transport lighting. There's well, no... see, it's a collection of my, uh, what you would call my nitpicks. Um. The irony being that he's picked one there that was specifically put into the script to talk about nitpicks. I say that in the video, but uh... Good never, move! Never mind, Jack. Never Need mind. Sacrifice reality for I even criticize Alien um, in the exact same way to prove that uh, this isn't about whether or not I love the film that, that I do it. It's just wanting to talk about a filming element. That's, that's it. Something like that. She is requesting death by decapitation with an axe. Why? <laughs> So, I, I mean, I could qualify these if you want, uh, if I didn't in the videos, which I'll, I'll put my hands up, maybe I didn't, but um, I always thought it was stupid as fuck that Phasma orders Executioner Stormtroopers, they're like specific, I don't know if you guys remember, they've got like an actual design on their helmet that defines yeah, they look them as, different, yeah. um, and they have laser axes, like an Executioner would in medieval times, which to me I'm just like, oh, Ryan. <laughs> but <laughs> it's dumb because they have like two blades on them, which doesn't make sense. That, yeah, Unless you want too. two parts of their neck. Maybe they just yeah, want it, to cut the neck make, off. It would so make it... the autism comes from the neck part of the spine. Maybe. Inject the Asperger's into them. But and, you and... talk about so much in these videos, and these are just little segments where you talk about the big and the small details. And let's be clear here, nitpicks are still valid criticism. Yeah. It, they may be small, but they are still and, valid. And if you caught me saying they have laser axes, therefore the film is bad as a whole, yeah, I would say that's stupid going to go a lot long beyond just a laser axe. Uh, it's going to go long yeah. beyond one flickering light. Those, these are just the things thing. I want to highlight. They pretend that that's all we say. Well, Quinn did the exact same thing. Uh, like, I'll ignore the other five hours and 57 minutes of well, the content. This is the interesting part, is that at one point in this video, they do reference in a very difficult way that I sometimes do make points. And I was just like, man, it would have been so awesome if they just shown an example of something they thought that I made a good point on. They show the example of me saying, um, you know, like the story of Glorm and how Luke jumps onto his son and kicks yep. all that shit. Like, Eric says that that's really funny, and that's the biggest compliment I think I get from this video. And I was like, okay, that's something. But it would be all cool right. if they were like, he makes a point about, I don't know, uh, let's say... That's ridiculous. Or... Holdo's plan. Let's say they, they actually agreed with my take on that, and they were like, yeah, he raises a lot of good uh, contradictions there that could affect someone's enjoyment. I'd be like, yay! You know? <laughs> there's, there's, there's a severe lack of uh, benefit of the doubt. That's all. That's all I'm saying. Available. Why? What does this add for the audience? Why is the Admiral wearing a ball gown? It seems so inefficient and disrespectful. So inefficient is referencing her ability to walk across the bridge when things are happening. 
right? Because it's action packed, and if wearing a ball gown, you could trip over it. That's all I'm suggesting with that. And uh, disrespectful would be you're in what is essentially a military militia thing. Everyone's wearing combat gear, and you're in a like ball gown. <laughs> it's like okay, are we all allowed to wear casual clothing? And um, it'll be brought up later, I think. Um, but mm -hmm. Mon Mothma wears something similar in uh, uh, Return of the Jedi. I think and, um, so, yeah, when they're in the... the yeah. Mon Mothra is a uh, politician who is uh, a part of the Senate and an ally to the rebels. So she's there to basically be their connection to the Senate. And she's a politician, like I said. She's not an admiral. Um, however, if she was an admiral and she was controlling everything, I wouldn't therefore say it's not a problem now because it's also in Return of the Jedi. I'd be like, no, it's a problem in that too. So that's me explaining that. Um, the video would have been made longer if I had explained it, which would have then made it worse in Jack's eyes. So I, I can't really win at all here, but I, I can try, I suppose. Personally, when I'm in the military, I want to be able to run around with my Crocs and socks wearing yeah. my Breaking Benjamin t-shirt. Mm, so comfy. Crocs and socks. <laughs> It's strange because, you know, it's completely out of character for Holdo because everything else she does makes perfect sense. Yeah, <laughs> she's a yeah. great military mind. Admiral <laughs> wearing a ball gown. It seems so inefficient and disrespectful. Mola is a trending critic in the YouTube sphere. Mola? Primarily... It's his accent. Oh, Mola. Wait until you hear him pronounce Wakanda. Oh, yeah. <laughs> They're is really it, upset. Wait, wait, wait. It, I'm going to make a guess. I'm going to guess it's Waka uh, Wakanda. Or what the fuck is that? Wakanda. I don't know. I'm trying to pronounce it like a babbling retard. I'm trying to. <laughs> uh, no, it, it's. I don't know how he came to pronounce it the way that he does. It's definitely tied to his accent, but he must have heard it pronounced in the film. So it's weird, but we'll we'll get to it. Is a trending critic in the YouTube sphere, notable primarily for the fact that his videos analyzing various pieces of popular media often balloon up to four, five, <laughs> capping off, off at nine, nine hours long. As I said earlier. Orders of magnitude longer than almost any other online media critic. To this fan base, admire. Oops, sorry, it skipped for me. Let me draw it back. As I said earlier. And yeah, I agree. I I make long form stuff. Agreed. Orders of magnitude longer than almost any other online media critic. To this, okay. he has received an outburst of support and awe from his growing fan base, admiring his dedication to his craft. The fact. I wish I could see what you see when watching movies. I left the last Jedi. I hate to get, but I'll be able to put it to words why I hate it. Um, I guess there's no point in reading these comments. He's just saying that people like my videos, so sure. That he's willing to go further than most in his discussions of media. To stress this, praise for Mula usually centers around his exhaustive commentary, and he has inspired many of his fans to use this same format in their own video essays. So, for the sake of clarification, I encourage length usually because it can very much lead to uh, further detail and more clarity. So it's yeah, not guaranteed. Given though. between the choice, I would rather have something be too long than too short. Yeah, uh, if you told me to watch an extremely amazing breakdown of, let's say, Star Wars Episode Nine when it comes out, and you're presenting me, like, I, there's two universes, one where the video is five minutes and one where the video is two hours, I'd be like, I'll take the two hour. Because I don't know what they're going to say in five minutes that's going to be uh, amazing for me about The Last Jedi. Oh, yeah, Last it's going to be really tough for them to get all the points across in, a, in an accurate way without being ambiguous or leaving us kind of wondering what you mean. It does take time to get details across. Mm -hmm. That's the thing, it's just, it literally just comes down to what you're looking for when you're looking for a video. Like, what do you want to get out of your experience watching it? That's, sure. that's the only difference. I agree with that. His most popular video series, a five hour long critique of Star Wars The Last Jedi, has between 800,000 and 1 million views depending on the section. Now for the purposes of open and honest critique, we will be running through a broad selection of his noted work, which puts us at an impasse rather convenient for the man himself, who has repeatedly made it clear that critiques which do not specifically go through every single aspect of a work is an act of dishonesty. Uh, so that's no. our first major straw man. That's, yeah, that's a that's a huge problem. That's definitely not true. That's so absolutely not true. Never been Especially. stated nor implied that I think that, and now that's something that he's just declared as true for his whole audience, which is not cool for yeah. me. I mean, your your buddy here made a really fucking shitty video on Dishonored Wolf, and one of the reasons it was so awful 
is because there's a lot of relevant stuff that's very meaningful to what you're trying to say that you cut out and didn't talk about. There is a lot of stuff that you cut off that is relevant, specifically relevant, or it's stuff that completely contradicts the things that you are saying. When so you make it, a 13 and a half video and only include about, what was it, a minute and a half, two minutes? Three, was what Wolf's saying? Three out of his Wolf 17, I believe. <laughs> Yeah, 18. you're leaving out a lot of important stuff, and it would solve yeah, like a lot the of argument. Issues. Yeah, he, he leaves, leaves out the, the argument. argument. We're gonna get I wonder, to that. I wonder Let's if there's a reason why, possibly. Um, so, uh, my position uh, that I don't think I've ever stated otherwise is that if you're gonna criticize a thing, be it a movie or a video, something that has an actual start, middle, finish, and then you're gonna attack it. For a position it takes and ignore any context within that thing that would make your points invalid, then that is dishonest. Um, so, for example, it's, a through a mission. it's yeah. Um, if you tackle one specific point I make about a movie, for example, I, I, I just say Holdo's hair is fucking yellow, and then they go, well, it's purple. There's no context. Or, well, there may not, I doubt there would be context that would invalidate your argument against me in that case. But if you say that, um, like, Wolf's argument is what I presented here, and then Wolf makes his argument later and you don't present it, that is absolutely dishonest. And then on top of that, so that's a thing that happened, and then on top of that, you accuse our sort of take on that as you have to cover every single detail in order to have honest criticism. That's not something I've ever said, so... Yeah, that's just not true. That's just not true. I don't know where you got that idea. Maybe it's because your buddy got really butt hurt that his video was shit and we told him it was. I don't know. But yeah, that's just, that's not an honest thing that you said. That's the thing. You can cut out whatever you want so long as it either doesn't affect your point or you're honest about it. Well, like, if you. He accuses me of doing it um, in my TFA videos. So I'll just give you an example. The smallest quote I have in the video from a, a creator is Hello Greedo saying that uh, debating art is stupid. There is no context that changes what he said there. It's not a parody, it's not a joke, it's not anything. Look at the original video, it stands as a statement. So, I've cut out his entire video where you could, you could argue there's more context, but it's not context that changes the point I'm arguing against. So, if that makes sense, I hope it does. Um, yeah, that's, um, oh, that's kind of slimy. It gets a little worse. <laughs> He's an act of dishonesty. Or, well, until recently. So he's got a little snide remark there, uh, uh, implying that we've dropped... So he's created a straw man for our position, or my position at the very least, and he's saying that that position has now been dropped in our response to Joseph Anderson. Has it? Um, I don't know what I the implication don't. here is. My assumption would be that he's saying we did not look at the body of work of Joseph Anderson to be able to make conclusions on him through that video. Maybe. We cover entire videos, so I don't... I was going to say that we responded to the video specifically, so again, I'm not 100% sure of what his point here is, but it, it just, the way he delivers it sounds like he's trying to get a Which gotcha put, in here. Because he didn't give anyone time to think about it. Yeah. Someone said, um, someone said, it's funny how we see a video from Wolf and an Eric tax on video in an EFAP and an Eric tax on video in an EFAP. <laughs> That's the infinite loop. Convenient for the man himself who has repeatedly made it clear that critiques which do not specifically go through every single aspect of a work is an act of dishonesty. Yeah, that's or, just a fucking well, lie, mate. Until recently. Yep. We will not be showing all five hours of his Star Wars review here. Nor do you have to, depending on what yeah, you're talking you about. Yeah, you don't have to. Yeah. Just as we will not be showing all nine hours of his Dark Souls 2 critique. It doesn't show any of my... Dark yeah, Souls you see, the, this now. is a problem, buddy, is that we don't care if you don't show all of it. We care when you start misrepresenting it and yeah. lying about it and taking it out of context, which is the only thing you people are capable of doing because you don't actually have an argument. Nor the entirety of his many hour plus long one off criticisms. Chris, fuck. We will be, as with most critics, addressing the segments relevant to this discussion while trying to remain clear and straightforward about the piece as a whole. But oh, if you're of Mauler's unique that. disposition that this is impossible without exhaustively summarizing the entirety of what you are critiquing, we encourage you to- So, let's- I'm gonna I'm a recycle- do you want to watch that again or I can read it out? Because I wrote this one down because it confused the hell out of me. 
you know, go ahead, read it out, yeah. So, sticking to what is relevant in the current discussion while approaching the piece as a whole is only possible by going through every single detail according to me. That's what he just said. Sticking to what's relevant in the current discussion while approaching the piece as a whole. Because um, that's what he wants to do in this video, and he's saying that's useful for Mauler because his position is you can't do that without going through every single detail, so he can already write this video off. And so it's just, it's essentially the same straw man. Um, but I, I was just like, sticking to what is relevant in the current discussion while approaching the piece as a whole. I'm like, yeah, well, if you're doing that, just don't ignore the portions that would stand in the way of your argument. Yeah, you can't cut out something that would make your argument weak or outright contradict it. And if you yeah. do that, that is dishonest of you. Because you could cover my entire video, show all the clips, and then actually still get criticism wrong. I wouldn't then be like, well, you showed all my clips, therefore your criticism is 100% valid. Like, this goes both ways. Because um, they do that at one point, they play a clip from me and they misunderstand what I said. Um, oh boy. So yeah. I can't imagine that they would do that. No, I know, it's crazy. Um, so... Let's keep going. To head over to his channel and watch the over 24 hours of content we'll be running through today. But who is this we? Well, I brought along a pal for this one. I'm gonna grab a drink and let Eric Taxon take it from here and discuss The Last Jedi and Mauler's problem. Maybe you should pick people who are better at making videos. Maybe he shouldn't be the one who's picking. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe you should have got someone else because Eric's video was really fucking awful. Die. So for the, it was dishonest and... for the sake of clarity, I'm going to ask that none of us comment or pause until 8.53. Okay. And we need to get problem. the whole thing on record. <sighs> it show most of my video and bases his argument off of something that's just not even there. And just to, to clarify for viewers, uh, how would you discern the difference between Ripley and Rey uh, in terms of Force diversity? One has the force. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I... Hi, I'm Eric Taxon. You might know me from a little video that I put out back in October called uh, What is Force he's Diversity? He's got a cat, of course he's got a cat. Dishonored Wolf. Now, since I released that video, I've gotten a lot of responses to it. Um, and it's shit. basically, I can conclude that it's perfect, it's bulletproof, because... No one can actually figure out how to respond to it, and they just end up making Wolf's arguments again, but slower and worse. Now in that video, I say that I don't give a shit about Star Wars, because at that point I had only seen episodes 4 and 5 and it was too far back to remember. This was on purpose. I delayed watching any Star Wars media consciously, because... I wanted to make it clear that it doesn't really matter whether Wolf is correct about the things he's criticizing. Uh, because he's he's wrong no matter what. His his the the premise of his argument is completely baseless. And he never defines forced diversity as anything more narrow than diversity present in things he doesn't like. Apo apologies to everyone who wanted me to respond to the entire video point by point. Um you have to you have to make arguments for me to do that. But somebody so, save Georgie. Okay. Okay. Right. So, so just just before you go, right, so that's the section on Wolf and that's what we're doing first before we move on, obviously. So we'll be going back mm. through it a few times, but um... re re remember everyone, he said that I don't make an argument. <laughs> so <laughs> so like so just to be clear, he's not playing a character in this clip. He's like <laughs> actually this is actually no, like I'm being serious. Like is this actually what he thinks? This is sincere, yeah. This isn't him doing like a bit. This isn't him playing a character. This isn't him trying to like pretend to be someone else so he can knock it down later. This is actually what Aaron Taxon believes with sincerity. Well, I don't know about Aaron Taxon, but Eric, <laughs> Eric certainly is. He is a yo-yo. So um, Wow. What a slimy fuck. Well, let's 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 go further than that and talk about why. So the first thing that happens Take it is they, uh, they play a clip from EFAP. Now, watch the clip again, I'll pause after it's done, and then any of you three can tell me what you think they were trying to do with this clip. ...and discuss The Last Jedi and Mauler's problem. 
doesn't show most of my video like and that. bases his argument off of something that's just not even there. And just to, to Man, clarify for viewers, uh, how would you discern the difference between Ripley and Ray uh, in terms of force diversity? One has the force. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 what do you think the intention yeah, is Yeah, that was... Yeah, it's to make it seem like that was all we had to say on the matter. So what we're going to do, folks, is check out that video itself. Um, Hooray! This, this is going to be weird. It's an, it's a, it's an EFAP first where we're jumping between videos because our entire argument relies on context. And EFAP therefore... watching <laughs> EFAP watching Eric watching me. God, Eric, don't make close-ups of your face. You're just, you're so titanically ugly. <laughs> titanically? I, I, know this, I know this, this, I know this doesn't have anything to do with the argument. That's what the rest of the whole stream is for, but holy well, fuck. Well, we, there's a section at the end that it wants us to address uh, insults, and I think we'll, we'll have that section to talk about ethics, morality, and basically how things work for that aspect, because, um, it's tiring to hear that over and over again, that you've said this word, therefore you're the worst, and I'll be able to talk about okay. my discussion with Turbo Button, which uh, will make it even more interesting. Um, so this is, uh, I'm just getting the right timestamp. 137.50. Now, you saw Eric's clip. Let's see what this looks like when you play it in general. That uh, takes most of my points completely out of context, or otherwise just doesn't even provide context at all. Doesn't show most of my video and bases his argument off of something that's just not even there. And just to, to clarify for viewers, uh, how would you discern the difference between Ripley? And just to clarify, uh, this is going to 141.03, so no pausing or comments until then, so we get the full juicy context. All right. Ray, uh, in terms of force diversity. One has the force. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 my take would be that. Uh, Ripley was um, a character, and she's played by a female actress, obviously. Uh, and then With there's talent. there are elements to her that you could uh, definitely uh, w w there there are choices she makes and actions she takes that could be informed by her being female rather than male. Just like how that would be the same for a lot of the Marines. You could probably argue there's certain things they do that you could be like, it's because they're, they're the man's man, you know, stuff like that, but ultimately, the important parts of her character have nothing to do with, with her gender, they're all very much um, about what she ex has experienced, who she is, you know, all, all the stuff that everybody can relate to because it doesn't require that you have particular genitals, while Ray doesn't have anything in terms of character, and we know that um, one of their goals when hiring for uh, The Force Awakens was that they just, I mean, JJ's dream was having it so that it was all Asian cast, but obviously you couldn't have that because reasons. I, I fucking have no idea how casting works. And obviously when he said that, it could have been a joke. I'm not saying that's definitive, but they were definitely concerned with getting away from the whole straight white male cast. Can't have that anymore, even though it's fucking aliens all over the place in Star Wars. Um, so you have Rey, is a female protagonist, and then you have Finn, is 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 a, a black protagonist, and then you have uh, Poe, is a is Poe Hispanic? I mean, uh, Oscar Isaac. He's something like that. I, I think, I, I I think I heard where he was from. I just can't quite remember anymore. Um, either way, it's a it's a very diverse cast, and you know what it also is like. It's completely lacking consistency or development for their characters, and uh, it looks like they were focusing on that element because that was their goal, rather than focusing on characters first, and I imagine that's what Wolf was going for. That's, that's my take. It's very, it's, if you want to sum it up, uh, Ripley, uh, a woman is what she is, it's not who she is. She isn't defined by the fact that she is a woman, unlike Ray, who's defined by virtually nothing. She's got nothing else. <laughs> like, what else is there? And it sucks because I think the, however, I mean, I hate to do this, but, you know, no offense to Daisy Ridley, but, like, so many people pick up on her acting ability. Like, that's not something I'm just inventing. A lot of people find it very difficult to watch her because she has the same delivery for a lot of things she says. I'm not saying she can't act whatsoever. I'm not gonna go to that extreme. But, um, was she chosen because she's female? Or was she chosen, you know, we'll never know that definitively, but the goal when they were making the film was to have a diverse cast. And since that wasn't going to happen naturally, quote-unquote, from just uh, casting based on ability, they had to make sure the quotas were there. They're like, this character has to be female. Like, and it's unnecessary. Really so that's the context. 
Well, that pretty much shits on Eric Taxon's argument. Um, so his, he's going to be saying, he's already said that uh, the point has never been addressed, this point has never been developed, and all people did was say what Wolf had already said, but slower and more wrong. So that's the argument, Eric, but uh, sure, take us out of context and make it look like we have no idea what we're talking about and we struggled to, uh, I don't know, come up with what we we're talking about. Not cool, but fine. We'll um, we'll move on from there to the next part, which would be the fact that he's obviously uh, going for Wolf specifically. Um, with I this. need to actually use the restroom real quick. I'll be right back. Yeah, it's all good. Um, well, so any thoughts? But so we can delay a little bit until Rads gets Rads gets back. <laughs> <laughs> Anti Rads. Um, yeah. Guys, if you're a fan of Eric, stop. Stop. I mean, it's again, I haven't seen the rest of his channel. It could be good shit. Uh, but we're not doing great so far, that's all. I mean, this is what he does, because he made a video on TJ once. And I saw that, and he totally mischaracterized him, too. This is all he does. He doesn't like people, so he mischaracterizes them because he's not intelligent enough to actually make an act, uh, a valid argument. You, uh, you okay, got to take, Jay. I would say that I didn't agree with everything you said when you were making those points, but if I wanted to respond to them, I would actually address the points you were making rather than pretending you didn't have any. It's a, oh, it, right. This is the problem uh, outside of the problem, is that this is a very complicated subject. So uh, what we're addressing is the, the actual relevance of, of the argument. Eric's claiming it doesn't exist and then portrays it in a different way. Uh, how bad or good the argument is would be a second discussion. I mean, I would argue, if I were to argue against this, um, and I haven't put a huge amount of thought into this because it's not an issue I really invest much in, but if I were to argue against what you're saying, I would probably say something in line, along the lines of, yeah, you know they were going for diversity, but you don't know that that's the reason it's uh, got any flaws in its writing. It could just be, you know, essentially a coincidence that they were going for both, and there's, you can't really prove... A cause and effect relationship there is what I would say. What would be a definitive proof for you? Would it be the author saying, I chose to have a diverse cast that was more focused on that than writing whatever the character was? I would say it would be, um, I mean, first of all, if you've got like a studio forcing stuff on a, a writer that they clearly don't want, it would be much easier to argue that um, th that is taking away from the writing. But when it's like uh, JJ wanted the diverse cast, I feel like you it would be more difficult to argue that that's then ruining what he's... All I'm highlighting making. is, do you accept it's theoretically possible to prove forced diversity? I mean, yeah, I mean... That's all That's all Wolf is really riding on here, and Eric has said it, you can't. I, I would say that if JJ wanted it, um, I would not consider that personally to be forced diversity, because the person who was actually making the art but he, he literally said that he hired people because of diversity, not because of their acting talent. Yeah, and they yeah, needed, they, that yeah, I mean, and it needed to be a female lead. Had to be a female lead. There's enough people in the world that you can... Like, I'm writing stuff that's got, uh, you know, a female lead. And that, there's, like, a lot of motivation. Well, sure, but when, you, that, when, so when every single character in the entire film is hired because of their diversity and not because of their talent or because it was the specific vision that the person had in mind, that's not quite the same. Yeah, and um, I mean, to me, the forced wait, forced diversity could result in good content. That's not actually the argument. It's more to do with um, is it happening? It's, which is it's so unbelievably rare. I can't yeah, even it, think. Yeah, I'm an not. Example. I haven't got an example for you, but uh, a time where they have prioritized diversity instead of allowing diversity to be the result of prioritizing talent. That would I mean, be the, the formula. The diversity I shouldn't. I don't think the diversity. The diversity should be the result of like who's most talented. It, but it should like. I mean, it can be if you don't care about the race of a character. If that's not relevant to a story, or, or gender of a character. If that's not a relevant thing, then just you know hire the best people for the job. Mm -hmm. But if you're writing something where you know race or gender is somehow uh, relevant to the story, I literally could not remember what point I was making when I started. That's oh, so. probably the. There are times where it would be a valid thing to force a let's oh, just yeah, say yeah. black person into a black role like you wouldn't yeah, I mean, hire a white guy for blade that would make everyone insane there are enough like you know talented uh actors of every you know race and gender or whatever um that you can the the fact that you're looking for someone of a specific race or gender or whatever 
that shouldn't result in someone less talented because you can find someone talented of, like from pretty much anywhere to play something. Like, mm-hmm. If you've if you're saying that um, they hired Daisy Ridley um, and she's not talented, I'm not saying that that's necessarily true. I don't really have much. I, I don't really think much of her. The point is she she doesn't show it here. That's the point. If you think that, like, I, I'm not sure if you could argue that the reason that they picked her rather than someone more talented is because they were looking for someone female, since there are so many, you know, very clearly talented female actors. Oh, you're saying that um, if they were to force the main character to be female, they still could have ended up with a talented actress, but they they didn't. I mean, yeah. Um, yeah, just that that actors. wouldn't be a counter. Oh, that would yeah, just that be. Doesn't exactly. Yeah. I would just. I would be like, that's true, Jay. They should have looked harder, but they didn't. <laughs> like the... it, the, are you saying that um, if they didn't uh, force, you know, her to be a female character, if if she was a great actress, um, it would still be forced diversity because they were like, the main character has to be female, and you're like, why? She has to be female. Okay. Um, but it could result in good work, as in you hire an amazing actress and. You give her amazing character writing, but as Wolf's laid out, right, when you describe Ray as a character, beyond the fact that she is a human being, and she is female, and she has all of these amazing talents, the characteristics are basically at null, um, but she's yeah. celebrated for being an amazing female character, and you're like, why does everyone keep saying an amazing female character? And it's like, oh wait, so I haven't the seen many people celebrate her for that reason, but I'm sure there, haven't? there are other... No, there's, I haven't. There's, there's a lot <laughs> this really? around. I... Um, I would like examples of that, but you know, I'm, no, you know, you, I, I would... uh, we don't need to do that. Like as long as this, yeah. as long as one person's saying it, which I'm sure you'd agree has probably happened. Oh yeah, I'm sure that lots of people have said lots of fucking things, right? Yeah. Sure. I mean, we, that that's not the best way to phrase that argument because one person, more than one person, has said that the Earth is flat. Oh well, it's um, it if true. it's if, that if you were. Yeah, no, it's, of course. I was just saying it would be in response to, that's all. You just need to pr- prove that one person has said it to be responding to it. Um, but yeah, no, uh, this, it's a really interesting topic, I think. There's loads to discuss, but Eric is pretending that all Wolf has said is that uh, The Force Awakens is poorly written, and there's no connections to Force Diversity when you can tell that these arguments are very much related to the ideas of diversity and there's stuff to be explored here. Like, there are ways to possibly dismantle or counter the arguments, but he's just pretended they don't exist. Um, I I would not be surprised if I found out like something like Bojack Horseman ha- had uh, its cast chosen for their uh, like you know their race and their gender and that. I would very <laughs> much not be surprised because of the, the philosophy of that show. Did you see what, what, what Rags it's posted? Still, it's a good show. I did what... Ray, strong female character, stronger than Luke, strong as Jedi, stronger than Kylo, stronger than Anakin. Yeah, but people googling that could be why are they googling for that? or against? Well, it's you no, you, he's right. But again, we're only arguing for existence, and that yes. should that should be enough to probably convince you that it exists, right? Yeah, I'm I'm ha- happy to agree that it exists. And so the question becomes, like, what in the hell are they basing her being strong female character on? It's like, oh, she's just female. And also really strong in terms of the force for no reason. And it's like, oof, what a you, terrible character. You can't argue that she's not strong and also female. What? Oh, yeah. I get it. We're not saying that she's not strong. <laughs> I think he was memeing. I'll, I'll Were just, you memeing? I'm confused now. I'll have, leave that entirely up to interpretation. Here's the thing. You That's have subjective. Disney... You have Ryan Johnson, you have J.J. Abrams, who make it very clear and very explicit that diversity is an extremely important thing to them. And like they more go on and on and on about it. Like, they wear sh- like Kathleen Kennedy is in wears it's shirts the that say the Force is female. It's the foundation, so now it's yes. forced. It was never, never going to be a result of the, the story being written with character first. Um... And you'd be like, well, how do you not have it forced? And so they're like, you, we're against quotas. I don't know if you are. So this, this could v- verge into politics now. But the idea that um, you create a story and then you go through your selection of actors and you're like, yeah, I'm hiring this guy. He's the best. And it's like, but he's gay and black. Why would you do that? My, and you're like, I don't care that he's gay and black. It's fine. My, literal, my literally completely uninformed in any way opinion is that a problem exists, but quotas aren't, the good, aren't a good solution to it. Based on literally nothing. 
that's just the conclusion I've I think I, I think it's, no, a, I agree. It's, a, it's a fair position to take. Um, yeah, it's I a complicated agree. subject, and I've heard um, arguments where they say forced diversity slash quotas are bad, but they're the best solution we have right now. Um, that's something, again, that could be explored, but that's a whole other thing, so we're going to have to draw yeah, back from there. The key thing is that generally quotas are an opposition to what and I would agree most the, people say is meritocracy. For the record, we're against them both ways, and the example I gave before was a film about a sorority of women, and the director says to the writer, you have to have a, a black man and a Hispanic man in the cast, so figure out a way that they're in the sorority. And then they're like, well, they can't be a sorority. They, the best I can do is like a headmaster or whatever that visits. And they're like, no, they have to be in the sorority. And so the writer's like, that doesn't doesn't make sense. And they're, they're just forced in, and then we're watching this movie, and like, why the hell is these two guys in this all-female... That's weird. And then you, you find out, it's like, well, it's to be diverse. And I'd be like, oh... But that's not... That's not the story. Like it's, and you know, then you get into the whole uh, relevance to history or realism to history, and then demographics or geographic locations. What the demographics actually are in real life, and you're trying to stick to them. And this is going to be relevant in a moment because obviously Just, Eric's position. We could we could watch it again, but I've got the quotes. He said, um, "Wolf's video doesn't define what forced diversity is beyond diversity is present in the things he doesn't like." So that's what Eric thinks Wolf's position is, and he said, and um, I do. "Um, oh, you, get your second point out of the way, and then I'll." Oh, the second one. These are the two points. The second one was there were no arguments to respond to. And I, I do want to mention because I've seen it a couple times in the chat. The whole argument that good writing would destroy our argument. The problem is that we're not saying it is a rule that forced diversity never results in a good product. It, yes, it is a I, I tendency. Am, I am perfectly willing to accept that there may be something out there that did force diversity. Someone actually mentioned the Shawshank Redemption. Uh, Morgan Freeman's character in the book is actually white. Um, so that is a, an example of forced diversity uh, that did work. But that's not the argument being made. The argument being made is that it almost never, like 99.9% .9 of the time, never results in a quality product. And we present, uh, Wolf and, and we were trying to present the symptoms of forcing diversity that are, that are negative. And that is that yeah, they'll yeah, often forget to make a fucking character because they've just said- This is this is just talking about like the principle of forcing something because of it, uh, a person's gender or their race or whatever. Sexuality. It's Yeah, it's just a really stupid precedent to set. Uh, the Dark Tower, for example, the main character in the book is definitely not black, but they made him black in the movie. And granted, I even said in my video on the Dark Tower that I thought that that was like the least of the film's problems because that movie was so just wildly retarded in every way. Um, but the act, the problem is that we shouldn't be setting that precedent because it's really stupid and just discourages good writing. And most of the time it results in like terrible things. So just, um, just as a rule, we shouldn't do that. And uh, I don't know if you, you guys feel we should play it again just to get Eric's points out about Wolf, or we should just go to the source material for my Wolf ears, now. My, my ears might we, bleed. Yeah, we can go to the source material. Okie dokie. Like I said, the... Um... Oh wow, my chat window just went black. That was scary. Uh, the... Oh no. It's, it's back, so it's fine. So the, yeah, the points where there were no arguments presented and Wolf's position is that he just doesn't like... Uh, bad media, and he's blaming diversity in, in the ones that have diverse casts in them. So... In today's political... What Eric did, I believe, was play a selection from, the like, two or three minutes at the beginning-ish, and then he played a clip near around, like... I, I, I can't exactly remember the exact things. Um, and he then jumps around. He, he leaves out the vast majority of the video, is what you really need to understand. But let's let's all remember, everyone. Eric said, specifically... I did not make an argument. We already so, see if that you, actually holds true. Nor did you define uh, what forced diversity is. So, and you, if you want to write it down in a notepad so you know, because this this is going to be probably one of the longest stretches of video watching we've ever had on this on this show. But there's going to be another few of them later too. We're going till ten fifty six from seven oh nine. You guys ready for this? Alrighty. Here we no. go. <laughs> 
Pretty poor Shut writing. Up, now, a badly written and acted character is one thing, but does that necessarily mean that it's forced? No, not always, but the reason why Rey is forced is because she has nothing going for her. The fact that she's a female should not be nearly as relevant as it is, but both The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi go to absurd lengths to make sure you know she's a woman, and because of that, she can be strong all on her own. Being a strong female character isn't a bad thing, but when you're written to be a strong female character, then you're generally going to be the exact opposite. And that there is the cross of the issue. Having a strong female lead isn't a bad thing. The problem is that the writers are going specifically out of their way to make some kind of specific character without taking into account what makes a good character in the first place. Ripley wasn't oh, designed Molly, you to gotta be put on the video. I, I didn't know. It's, uh, it's fine. It's You may need to listen yeah. to what Wolf said. The visuals uh, were Halo. Yeah the, you're, yeah, the visuals aren't exactly important, but... They, they were Halo, fine, guys. It's okay. <laughs> as yeah, long as you heard what he said. It was just Halo gameplay, guys. Strong female character, that's just what she evolved into. They focused on character first and made the female aspect a natural characteristic of who she is as a person. Rey, on the other hand, was never written with any characteristic beyond being strong. Actually, and thinking about it, Mahler, female... um, you might want to put that EFAP logo back up because I think I got my video claimed for some of the footage I used. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> That makes sense. All right, Everyone, the covers. Close your eyes. The covers going on for reasons now, people. So when you start saying Mola, take it off. <laughs> it's on for reasons. <laughs> characters written that way nowadays, to the point that they act like total cunts for no justifiable reason. I genuinely believe that the reason for this is a total misinterpretation of what they perceive to be a strong male equivalent. Marcus from Gears of War isn't exactly a nice guy, but there's an actual reason behind that. There's history, there's development before and after. What I've come to find from many female characters nowadays is that they try to replicate the same thing that male characters do in many circumstances without actually adding in the history and nuance required to understand why they're that way in the first place. If a character is a dick for no reason, it doesn't matter if they're male or female, villain or protagonist, no one is going to like them. So, just shoehorning in some half-assed character written to be a man doesn't tend to work out too well. This goes for virtually all characters that are forced in for no justifiable reason. Remember when Ubisoft decided to shove a transgender character into Assassin's Creed? You know, the character that no one cared about and had no reason to be in the game? How about the transgender character from Mass Effect Andromeda, whose first line to introduce herself is, Hi, I used to be a guy, but then I took scissors to my dick and made myself an origami vagina. Please refer to me by my new name, Stupid <laughs> Cunt. When writing a character, there's obvious things that you need to keep in mind about who he or she is. You can't just take Luke Skywalker and make him a totally different, irredeemable character that isn't even close to being the same person he was in the original three movies. Yeah, I'm still salty about that. Unfortunately, a lot of people just don't seem to get this. There are reasons why characters are the way they are. Fantasy stories are typically dominated by white people because the majority of fantasy stories are based around medieval Europe, which is predominantly white, even more so back in those times. Sure, you don't have to base it off that, but that's where most fantasy stories come from. Inserting a bunch of black people in the Lord of the Rings would simply never work because it's based around that area and time period. But nowadays, you're shamed if your artistic direction isn't diverse enough. The developer of the game Kingdom Come Deliverance has been criticized for not putting enough black people in the game. You even have the utterly brain-dead idiot it's from the guys at Funhaus who tow this line. But not you, Lawrence. You know what's up. Keep being perfect. Despite this game trying to be historically accurate, it's been criticized to hell for something as arbitrary as not putting in enough black characters, as if that's something that's even remotely relevant on any level. I'm sorry, maybe my whiteness is preventing me from seeing the bigger picture, but wouldn't you feel kind of shitty for being the guy that's put in the movie just because they need a black guy? Wouldn't you prefer to have a character written specifically for you that has legitimate depth and intrigue? Forcing this shit because you feel some kind of ethical obligation to include everyone you possibly can find doesn't add to your story, it breaks it. I don't care if you have a black guy in your game or movie, but give him an actual reason to be there beyond, well, we need a black guy. Sure, put in some gay characters, I'm all for it, but make that a natural part of who they are. Don't focus solely on the I like to take it up the ass part. Look. Wonderful place to, uh, to stop. Also, <laughs> Jack is apparently in chat. Be nice as best you can. The last thing we need is everybody in the chat ripping into him. Be nice. Um, Make your own videos, Jack. Drop the spare. So, yeah, the, uh, there's a reason why I like Wolf's channel, and it's because he's pretty efficient with, like, how many points he makes in the amount of time he has, and obviously his delivery is pretty passionate, so that's fun to listen to as entertainment. Um, and the fact that I actually think that this is a strong video would probably tell you that 
I do actually like some videos that are that are that are short because this, this is one focused topic and he talks about it for twenty minutes. Maybe some people would feel that uh that's too long or, or whatever. I, I don't really care. It's like, but yeah, um, four minutes went by. It was four minutes and there was fifteen points. Um, so that's pretty good, I, I think, it, or at least depending on the quality of the points, right? So I'm just gonna run through them. Um, so a badly written character does not mean a forced character. Ray being female is pushed on the audience for no narrative reason. She, it's, it's, it's what she is, and that's it. There's nothing that distinguishes her outside of her being female. And strong female characters are good. However, if a strong female character is the goal from the beginning, likely gonna fail, because you're misunderstanding what makes a strong female character. It's not the fact that they're female. Um... So this is because writers are putting the cart before the horse. That uh, that would be the an analogy for that, I suppose. Um, Ripley being female was additional to who she is as a character. It wasn't the focus. It wasn't they went. We need a female lead in Alien. She was a character that worked whether or not she was female. It wasn't wasn't the it wasn't the diverse. If you call that diverse, it wasn't the diverse part of her um, that was intrinsic to her. There was there was things about her that are. A, a, completely relatable to any human being on this planet. You don't have to be female. Um, and, that, and that's not to say... the diversity aspect is, it's important too to know that a lot of it has to do with the intention behind it, not necessarily just because someone's a woman, just because someone's trying to cast somebody as a woman. Please keep in mind, it is very important why. The why is very important. And here's the thing, with forced diversity, it's usually telegraphed to us because the people that force it in are like proud of the fact that they've put, that they forced it in. Yeah, yeah. like Disney, J.J. Abrams, and Ryan Johnson. And as, as Wolf has already clarified, forced diversity isn't definitively bad. There is theoretically, and we've gotten the one example we've just mentioned, where it could, it could work to create... Uh, something good or it wouldn't get in the way of something being good we're talking yes, about the of qualification negative, of it and the yeah, negative effects it's a negative tendency so and, and i was going to say to clarify again if you have a character that deals with female issues specifically because that's obviously possible that doesn't definitively make them a forced diverse bad character you can still make that work as in a character that's i don't know ex a movie about a woman exploring uh what it means to be pregnant and have a child like the, they're the kind of things that it'd be assuming medical medical science hasn't gotten to this point i don't know if uh men can do that yet uh, so yeah so that that's up to um uh, ripley's female was additional to who she is so that the problem would be explained by writers misunderstanding what a strong character is they'll often have like a fem female characters perform uh similar things that male characters are celebrated for like their payoff moments or their biggest action-packed things and then they fail to realize like the reason that the payoffs work so well is because of all the writing that came before and led there so they just do that thing, and they're like, see, we've got strong female characters too. And it's like, oh no, no, you, you haven't got a character. And so the reason they were there in the first place was, it was just because it, it would be bad if they were male too, but we're, we're highlighting that in this case they were there because of this forced diversity aspect. Um, and then Wolf gave examples of uh, Assassin's Creed and Andromeda, was it? Yep, Assassin's Creed, Andromeda, and uh, Kingdom Come Deliverance. Although there wasn't any forced diversity in there, it was people um, complaining about wanting, it. Right? Uh, yeah, they were complaining that there wasn't in Kingdom Come Deliverance. And remember, audience, and I apparently Eric is in the chat using a different account. I don't know if that's true. But Eric, if you are in the chat and you are listening to this, I want to just point out in your video where you showed about a couple minutes of my 18 minute video, none of the past three, almost four minutes of this video, of my video, where my argument is actually made, you happen to just not include it. And then you said I didn't make an argument. Almost like you're just disingenuous and you're a liar. Um, so then uh, white people are typically dominant in representation for certain time periods and geographic locations due to representing realistic demographics in those regions. And you'll get shamed. This is this is a quote from Wolf. You'll get shamed for that attitude. And then he provides the example of Kingdom Come. Then he said, "Isn't it insulting to be inserted because you're black rather than suiting a character of depth beyond the surface?" And to top it off, he says, "I'm all for diversity. But make it a part of the character, not them as a whole." And he's in favor of representation, but don't force it. Tying right back into the title of the video. So again, 14 points in was that four minutes, or I think I said 15 in four minutes. Um. So to answer Eric specifically, 
uh, with the f source being Wolf's video. Forcing diversity would be defined as creating a character that is only discernible by their gender, race, or sexuality, and this is referenceable from the perspective of the audience and by the character themselves within the universe. And that would just be bonus points if you've got production evidence where they've said, yes, we did this specifically because we have to get Asians in there. We have to get women in there. It's the most, like, it's cringe as fuck. But, again, we, we've already said it doesn't definitively lead to a drop, but it can. And when it does, we'll have the smoking gun, if you will. So the argument is hinged on examples in, in this section, as well as all the explanations. Um, and you Examples know, of which he conveniently just never showed. Yeah, because um, it would be his entire argument. So, like, er yeah, Eric didn't use anything from this portion, and so that's what we were addressing in the EFAP. And then a lot of people s were were talking to Eric on Twitter, I suppose. Without, I don't know. I, I, I'm trying to assume the best here, so I'm just going to say that they all fucked up and they all didn't provide Eric this this timestamp. So this is it. This is the section where I'd say the that answers the two uh, concerns that you have, and the fact that they're not in your video makes your video, uh, incompetent Disingenuous. slash dishonest. No, I, not just, I'm not going with the incompetence thing, because I do not believe that. I believe it was only malicious. Yeah, Eric Taxon seems like a, a right, proper cunt. Apparently he just deleted the tweets. Really? Well, can't stand by what you say, Wait, mate. Which tweets? No. Uh, the tweets he made about not... I guess he, uh, didn't you tell me that he made tweets asking, like, uh, for the arguments? And people, oh, well, I if guess... someone says he just deleted the tweets, that could refer to anything, right? Well, I, I'm pretty sure that would be referring specifically to uh, that. Since sure. That's um, but yeah, either way. I'm not, like, I want to get through the entire thing before providing, like, commentary. I just want everyone to see what's happening here and how annoying it is for for us. And so that's, like more than four very significant errors that are made in a manner that would imply that they're deliberately avoiding context. And if you think that's an unfair assessment, um, I, think, I don't know I mean, where I we really can go think from there. That it, I mean, if the chat's right and he really did just delete all those tweets, that really says a lot about Eric as a I mean, I, person. I, I think that's just a detail tacked onto this nonsense. I mean, and first off, here's the thing. When, when somebody walks into a video and they say outright, you know, I couldn't be wrong. Wait, um, he said his video was perfect. <laughs> yeah, I've, I don't think I've ever said one of my videos is perfect. Um, I strive to improve on my stuff. And I'm, especially in the video I'm making now, I'm pretty clear that you can try to change my mind on things. Good luck on some of them, because they're the result of... Um, a long time and a lot of thought, um, a lot of thought and a lot of, um, you know, processing. But when someone enters into a conversation with the attitude of there's just no way I could be wrong. I'm perfect. My point is perfect. It's, it's impenetrable. Then, um, I mean, I think he said it tongue in cheek I, a little bit, but it's still, it's, it's still yeah, publicly then, presented that he thinks there's no counter argument and that he did not take Wolf out of context. Yeah. I mean, we were really thorough going through Eric's video. I mean, it took us what, two hours. I think it might have been longer than that. I can't remember. I mean, we were really <laughs> thorough. If you didn't pick up anything from that after even taking Wolf's video out of context and just dishonestly not including the exact examples of things that would prove you wrong in an instant, um, I don't know, man. That's a pretty slimy, scummy thing to do. But whatever makes you feel like you made good content, sure. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, Jack Four tweeted, hours, actually. Jack tweeted seven minutes ago, um, we still don't know why forced diversity is bad beyond the fact that bad writing is bad. They're not listening at this you, point, so... Yeah, you're, you're not listening. I'm sorry. I don't know what to say other than you're just... Although, you're um, it, it, if we give them a little bit of leeway, we don't know how long they've actually been listening to this stream. Maybe. Um, so, I mean, I, if they only oh, just been, came in... They've been responding live on Twitter, I guess. Oh, then they really then are. He said, he's, he said, Mauler's fans genuinely don't understand time. Um... Stop using long and complicated words like tactile. Uh, it's not long and complicated, Jack. Uh, we want to know what you mean by tactile. Yes, how do you use it in relationship to what you're referring and to? Not a good look, dude. Like, on this Twitter. Um, how about you stop being a coward and actually well, come to us? The problem is that a lot of people are going to say, like, have him on. And it's like, well, we'll have him on after we're done here. 
that's fine. True. But um, what more can we say? I mean, we will, of course, but it's like... Like, stop taking how, us out of context, you disingenuous little shits. How, ma like, how many I'm times sorry, do we I, have I to say I don't something. have any... Again, I don't have the, any... Like, the, like oh, hold on, hold on. I have no tolerance for lying, misrepresenting, and taking people out of context. You are a scum fuck if you do that. Um, and I don't respect you. I don't think anyone should respect you if you do that. You took Mueller out of context. You took me out of context. People have taken rags out of context numerous times in the past. I mean, it, I, I'm just done with this shit. I think you're a fucking scum shit if you do this. So one of the tweets he's got is, I wonder if they noticed that we were mocking the fact that Wolf was unable to say for himself why it's a problem that Ray was forced to diversity and then played a clip okay. of Mueller. Wait, wait, wait. Then they played a clip of Mueller and Rags arguing it for him. Um, so, Jack, like, I'll make this really simple for you, because this is clearly hard. We were playing a clip for context of the clip that you provided of EFAP to correct the context of the EFAP clip, and then, well, it, as we've just done, played Wolf's argument in full for forced diversity and then explained yes. it to you. We can't do anything else at this point if you don't understand. Wolf talk. We let him talk for three minutes, two minutes. That two was Wolf. That was not minutes. me and Rags. After that, we yeah. we corrected well, context I, on one clip and then another one. Well, hold on. I, I think he might be mentioning the the clip that they used specifically, the one where you know Rags joked, uh, "She has the force." The one that we went back and yeah, actually we, watched. But the, the first but thing he, asked was if, the implication of the clip, which is that we didn't know what to say. Yes, that's yeah, clearly but, exactly what you're trying to do. Don't but, play stupid. Yeah, Come but on. here's the thing. I do not, I, I know for a fact, and you can look at any live stream I've ever been in, I do not talk very well on the fly. Like, I need to really sit down and, like, think through everything I want to uh, talk about uh, on a topic and really have time to write it out. I'm terrible talking live. I like doing live streams, but I know for a fact that I'm bad talking live unless I'm, like, really fired up about something, which is... Very, yeah, a lot very of people rare. like that. That's the and a lot of people like that. That's a separate skill that has nothing to do with your the, the ideas that you have. It's how do you form those ideas in a way that you can communicate those to yeah. other people? And like that's, like, that's a separate skill in and of itself. That's a yeah, separate I, thing people have. In, and, and even just aside from that, I mean, I stumble over my words a lot. I have like a I don't think it's not a stutter, I think it's like called a stammer. Like every now and again, I'll like just trip over my words and people have seen it in pretty much every stream I've ever been in. Um, it, it's just because I don't talk well live. They weren't making my arguments for me because I literally didn't know what I was talking about. It's because I know this is a very simplistic concept that you just couldn't understand. I don't talk well live. So they were helping because it's the three of us. This is how the show goes. Yeah. And a lot of people are like that. That's a very big, uh, yeah, that's a very big, me, me and rags thing. have a lot of experience with live, in the moment, public speaking and debate, so we're relatively better at it. Uh, um, but the thing is, Wolf had all of his arguments available. <laughs> they were all right there, and you ignored he already them made too. Them. They had already been made. So yeah. Um, it's, it's fine if you want to disagree, but actually disagree with the things being said is, I think, the long and short of it, right? Absolutely. And I mean... I think it's fair to say Wolf got very passionately uh, into that for a moment there because this is going beyond, you know, like th they make a diatribe about how it's very cruel to use uh, childish playground insults, right? We're going to get into that when they bring it up, but um, I don't know where your morality skews, but I think it's much worse to character assassinate somebody than to say agree, they're yeah. stupid or ugly or annoying. Absolutely. There, there are some things that are just insulting and aren't very substantive. For instance, Aaron's ugly ass, uh, Eric's ugly ass face. However, there are things that are very substantive, like you're slimy and disingenuous and you're dishonest and you're lying because you're trying to push your point or a narrative instead of relying on what the truth is and what the facts actually are. Like those are different. I, it is, I don't care if someone calls me, you know, a faggot. I don't care if somebody calls me. I mean, we call ourselves here. that. Yeah. All the time. Um, it, I, I would much rather people call me those things than call me something that has to do with my character like a liar, you know, something like that, because that speaks to who you are as a person and the behaviors that you actually do. And also, he, I'm and, not 12. And he said, um, tactile means some, how something feels to play. How something feels to play. I still want... What the fuck does um, that mean, still, Jack? <laughs> yeah, you're still, you're still going to have to clarify. Tactile doesn't... 
tactile means feel in a physical sense, like on your actual fingers. It's a feeling. And he's and he's like, actually said as well. So for anyone wondering why we're not bringing him on, he's actually said himself he's not going to want to do a four on one. Um, so yeah, either, it doesn't matter. Both parties are not willing as it stands. We will sort something out in the future, more than likely. But we've got so much more to get through anyway. So, I'm also, going to ignore his Twitter um, now. Common, um, the uh, interesting fact of America's most common fear is the first one is public speaking. What was your point, sorry? Yeah, I, I could never do public they, speaking. Yeah, public yeah. speaking is the most common fear in America. It's, it's not even uh, really that I would fear it, it's just that I don't think I could actually it, do it. Yeah, that's, that's definitely like, a part of it. I mean, it's I can't even go like a normal conversation with my friends at work without stumbling over myself. It's like I don't have that ability. Also, it is it's... it is a skill oratory and skill and being able to um you know be eloquent on the fly and get your points across without having any time to think about them that is a difficult thing to do that if, yeah if i people can do if imagine if i wrote the way i spoke 100 trillion ums between every other word or so yeah and that's why i have to write things out when i make a script i need to script everything out otherwise i can't do things on the fly not very well at least and i guess to be clear about the tactile thing because there's some people talking about it in chat when you say that a game has tactile qualities or you relate i, 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 I mean maybe if they're to a video game like tactile means how it like feels on your fingers it, it relates to the the not like a feeling like a, like a vibe or a sensation i mean a physical we can, actual you know we we can say like you know say uh black ops 4 feels better than fallout uh, 76 because of the controls i think that might be what he's getting at maybe um, but feel feel is such a it's a very very ambiguous sort i mean of thing. Hon I honestly i don't even really remember what the point was that he was trying to make with well that's that. the thing because i i don't know what he was trying to say either that's what i'm saying it, it's a strange word that could mean multiple things it could be interpreted in multiple ways also, I um, just wanted to say, Jack said uh, that's the, the conversation was agreed upon was uh, Jack and Eric versus me and Wolf, and that says there that um, Rag said he didn't want to. Um, that's not true at all. So, if he's saying I yeah, said I that, um, I didn't. If, if I've ever said that, that's never something I meant to say. But if he's saying Rags has said it, I can know, I can tell you for a fact Rags has never said that. Yeah, I definitely never said that. Um... You're happy to come on, but I'm not going to leave. We're not going to kick off a member of the show because it makes you feel uncomfortable. Grow yeah, some balls. <laughs> come on. Yeah, especially for we sorry, will. Eric, and you, especially not for you guys of all people. We will address we'll that easy. when they address us with it, which I think is in the last few minutes, but we'll, we'll definitely get there. So now we're going to, we've responded to all of the section we're about to cover. We're just going to watch it again just so you guys get how bullshit it is. Take it from here and discuss The Last Jedi and Mauler's problem. Doesn't show most of my down. video and bases his argument off of something that's just. Should we skip this there. part and just? Uh, so we've already pretty much ran over all of this. Because uh, we can skip the a uh, little bit about Wolf. Skip that. And, but slower and worse. Now in that video, I say that I don't give a shit about Star Wars because at that point I had only seen Kinda episodes four and five, enough. and it was too far back to. Well, um, so what I will, I'll throw Eric a bone here. So if someone says, um. Movies with characters who eat apples are always bad. You just be, and then my evidence is this movie where a character eats an apple is bad. The um, the example is you irrelevant. Bring up the screen. In that sense, yeah. The example would be irrelevant. The argument would be something you can address, whether or not the example Molly. is true. Molly, you gotta take down the logo. I already have. Goddamn. Call. <laughs> sorry, I, 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 I'm, I'm sorry, folks. It's back up. Um, let's go remember. This was on purpose. I delayed watching any Star Wars media consciously because I wanted to make it clear that it doesn't really matter whether Wolf is correct about the things he's criticizing. So, so the important Ugh. reason why Wolf has examples is just proofs that it's happened in real life. The results have been seen. Um, and I think the most like potent one would be the, uh, the Kingdom Come Deliverance one. Until... You know, it doesn't matter if I don't have examples that the Earth is flat, because Eric is wrong. It's flat. I, I know, say... because I said so. I would say that if he was... This is going to sound really dumb as soon as I start saying it, but if he was right 
he would be right as in if he was right <laughs> about his overall point he would be right that the examples don't make it better yeah when you're making a general point the fact that you've got examples doesn't mean that your general point is true he didn't but, and I, I i feel that's what he believes but like and that's what he's trying to say here to again hopefully throw an additional bone like if eric is listening to this um what I think that you think you've done is listen to Wolf fully and decided he never made an argument. Even if the argument is presented and it's bad, you've decided that if the argument is presented and it's bad, it's not worth responding to, and thus you haven't shown it. But anyone can do that to anyone and then claim they're not taking it out of context. As in, you know, Jay makes a huge argument for uh, exactly why Thanos did what he does in Infinity War. And then I just, my response to him is showing his opening where he says, I'm going to make a lot of arguments for Thanos. And then I go, he doesn't really make any good arguments. It's all pretty bad, to be perfectly honest with you. And that's it. And it's, it's unfair. Is, uh, at the very least, you, you should be able to sort of agree, please, that it's just unfair to not present the bad argument if you think it's a bad argument. You can tell me it's a bad argument. I mean, you're wrong. But you can say that it's when you say that I don't have an argument when I factually demonstrably do that we have an issue. Yeah, hopefully that oh, makes more sense. A lot of people in the chat seem concerned about me. Apparently, I sound like I'm dying. You do sound a little ill. I, Are you okay? I am ill. Uh, I was hoping people wouldn't notice, but apparently they have. I've just taken painkillers, so hopefully it'll get better soon. <laughs> okay. People are also saying that now that Eric's on screen, they want you to bring the logo back up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because he's he's wrong no matter what his his the the premise of his argument he's is wrong no matter what well he's decided that forced diversity isn't a thing the wolf can't yes. even be right that, that's what i said earlier if you walk in saying that the other person is wrong no matter what like intrinsically like what why even like honestly why even have a discussion with you i guess maybe for the benefit of the people watching and it, but it's like a that would pretty much be it because I don't think Eric or Jack would agree with this, but I imagine you guys would. Um, like, principles of argumentation. If someone says to you, I'm going to present my arguments for why uh, all white people need to be killed, as a white person, I would, I would be against agree. that, but I would be like, let's hear the argument. Oh, I would love to hear the argument. But absolutely. I wouldn't then say, you're wrong from the get-go, therefore you don't have an argument, because that's not true. Yeah, you can have an argument and it can be a bad one. Yeah. You could still have an argument. I, I, if I were to give him the benefit of the doubt here, um, I would say that what he is trying to say is that examples don't matter if for a gen like for generalization. If if I wanted to say, you know, oh yeah, we've already if I was we've already agreed with that though. And even then, yeah. if it's one general, if there's one tendency against another, then a lot of it will come down to how prevalent are the examples. Yeah, because and the amount of examples make it a you know make it general. They make it the tendency. It's good um, to have examples, but you don't have to wait, like debunk every individual example to make a point about um, to disagree with a general point. Someone just highlighted that I forgot to put since since channel description. I am sorting that out. You guys talk about something. <gasps> so um, so since since you're wrong on arrival, it's a terrible move. <laughs> yeah. No, it's wait, good. That's the end of it. You're, go, wrong, we're, you're we're wrong no going. matter what. No, we're going to... Oh, shut up. We're going to have this debate eventually. <laughs> no matter what. <laughs> like, he disagrees with you, so don't have week. an argument. Alright, um, that is updated. Yeah, I'm just going to deny that you've made any arguments at the end of it, and then claim I'm right, and that will be uh, how the debate will go, and I will win, based on my superior logic and uh -huh. facts. Beautiful. And your rhino milk. Um, and my rhino milk. Alright, then. He never defines forced diversity as anything more narrow than diversity present in things he doesn't like. How do you know what I like and do not like? I was going to say, do you actually... S I'm trying to think of how you could counter that statement with just one reference, so... Diversity. The Shawshank Redemption. Yeah, there's diversity in that film and Wolf likes it, so... That's out. I, love, I mean, it's one of the best films ever made. So what is? The Shawshank Redemption. Oh yeah, absolutely. I was going to say, Morgan like, Freeman's if character being... is not black in the book, but he is in the movie, and I love Morgan Freeman, and I love that movie. Benefit of the doubt, he doesn't know that you like that, and that that would be considered forced diversity, but that does break uh, no, his I, point. No, I'm not, I'm not going to give him benefit of the doubt, because he's making a... He, no, hold, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm not going to give him that, because he's making an assumption based on something that he doesn't understand, and he doesn't know anything about that. Yeah, I he wouldn't you say know. it goes both ways. He's made a definitive statement where he, should, he doesn't have enough information to do so. That's just a disingenuous claim. 
such oh, as wolf. wolf doesn't like uh beetles the cat and then i go wolf hates all cats beetles that was don't fucking no tickles georgie <laughs> it's like I... it's georgie georgie yeah safe but georgie I... hashtag safe georgie because I, I ain't surprised that you of course you have a cat of course you have a cat. i have a cat I yeah like, of course you have I a cat mean, too I, I, you know, cat, I don't consider cats horribly I bet... worthless i just prefer dogs. i do Oh. What? <laughs> no, you're objectively wrong. I had a cat for 19 years, and she was my favorite pet ever. I currently have a cat. I like I you, like you, cats you, enough. You I will just... never, you will never be right. I love that cat. Yeah, I remember all the time I, I I go around and I see all the seeing eye cats and bomb sniffing cats and paramedic cats and. Oh, oh yeah, I never said they were particularly oh. useful in every. <laughs> I never situation. said they were useful. <laughs> I just said they're nice pets. Said they were useful. <laughs> dogs are the only animal that can do that. That doesn't mean that literally rats. all the pets are. are yeah, what about rats rhinos? Can... Rags, they can't do that, and they still provide delicious Rhin milk. You can ride rhinos, and first off, you can milk rhinos. We've established this. Sure. Second you off, can't you can sniff use them the bombs. You Human. Can, you can't milk a dog. Yeah, though. Rhinos. They just send rhinos you into the field. Can milk a dog. Them. You can ride. You can ride rhinos into battle. I saw it in the Black Panther movie. That is. Wakanada is a place in Africa, right? It's real. It's all real. Isn't he a Jedi, Wakanada? Mm hmm. Probably. I don't know. Sorry, Eric, we'll come, we're coming back to you. Sorry about that. On to the entire video point by point. Um, you, have to, you have to make arguments. Yeah, I zoomed into my face. That means I'm right. It's funny. It's, H Bomber Guy does this a lot. I think, Jay, you probably use this style a little bit, right? Oh, yeah, I, I totally do that. But yeah, I think Jay, when I do it, I think. Oh, my God. <laughs> I try um, to only do it when I'm telling the truth. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, so someone in the chat said, "Holy shit, is this Chris Chan's brother?" <laughs> Don't be so mean oh. to Chris Chan and Eric. I'm not. No, I'm not mean to Chris Chan. I'm okay with. Well, I'm not exactly okay with Chris Chan. Chris it Chan. It is Chan, more of an insult to Chris Chan to Chris imply Chan's he's related to contribution Chris. to Shrek retold was innumerably important. <laughs> was the, yeah, that was the best part of the whole. I laughed my ass off when that came on. I had no idea what <laughs> yeah. was happening. Well, it's Chris Chan. You never know exactly what's happening. That's true. But hey, uh, now that I've made my Have arguments, you? I can watch every single Star Wars movie, which I did. I watched cool. every mainline Star Wars film, episodes one through eight. And, and I, I, I actually like them a lot. I'm sorry I, I, I dissed them in the video. They're actually pretty good. So the best one... I wonder if he means all of them are pretty good by that or not. Because even I... He like... said they are... Um... Uh, all I'm suggesting is it's, you're welcome to like sequels, you're welcome to like OT, you're welcome to like prequels. I find it rare that someone would like all of them because they're so different, you know? As, uh, yeah. I know there are plenty of people who like all of them. Um, like I said, rare. I'm not saying it's impossible. It, most it's people have an opinion on which would be the best set and which would be the worst set, you know what I mean? I th yeah, I mean... There are people who just the, like pretty much anything. Like my dad with movies, he likes basically just every movie. He goes to a movie, he's probably gonna. Watch. Yeah, that's fair enough. I'm. Uh, I guess yeah. All I'm asking is, Eric, did you like all of them? Because I think he puts Phantom Menace at the bottom. I'm curious if you liked that one. But the second best was Episode Three, uh, Revenge. Oh, sorry, I skipped ahead, or at least it jumped for me. Yeah, he said the best like was the Last Jedi. I'm sorry, I, I I dissed them in the video. They're but actually wait, he's not good. allowed to so like the, the Last one. Jedi. That's a no-no. Yeah, your arguments are invalid because you like Last Jedi, Eric. That's something that we do and say what, here. Yeah, apparently. One was the Last Jedi, obviously, but the second best I mean, was so obvious, Episode mate. Three, <laughs> uh, Revenge of the Sith. I like that one a lot. Interesting. And then the the entire original trilogy comes next. Like I had very really? similar positive feelings four, for six. for all yep. three of them. But Return of the Jedi was my favorite. It's closely followed by A New Hope and then Empire Strikes Back. Didn't like. The That's Force an Awakens unusual that order to put the OT in. It, it's interesting, isn't it? Uh, this that one, lineup. That one comes last. That, I'd love I'm, to talk I'm, to Eric about this lineup. <laughs> like how he look. I I am almost positive that he did that just to spite everyone that says that the empire strikes back is the best one yeah i'm I, because so i can't i cannot seven. no let no i will say return of the jedi for me is my favorite in the whole saga above um empire but empire is an objectively better made movie i don't yeah, care don't, if it's they don't believe in that yeah <laughs> they think know, that's bullshit but, so no i don't really care about the placement itself but the fact that he put the last jedi and revenge of the sith Two of the most hated films. Well, Revenge, Revenge of the Sith. Sith yeah, Revenge of the Sith in 
in retrospect, not the as absolute hated, or, but yeah, not, the best yeah, not as hated. What's strange is that he has eight at the top, and then we have to go that far to get to seven. Oh, he justifies why that is. Yeah, he, I, I think he's about to explain it. Um. Followed by A New Hope and then Empire Strikes Back. Didn't like The Force Awakens all that much. That one that one comes last. Uh, and then the, the remaining two prequels are below that. So two is the worst. And yeah, I'm just curious if he still likes two. Like, it had good ideas, but... Just critical, critical pacing issues just made just made them a slog to get through. So I can speak. I as like the idea that who only... I, I like that the pacing that... is his biggest problem, not everything else. Well, I like the idea that the biggest problem is the pacing. Yet he loves the Last Jedi. Yeah, I was about to say. Um, like, interesting. It's fine to like the Last Jedi, but it definitely doesn't have the best pacing. Well, now you have to talk about what is pacing. How do we objectively decide what is? good pacing versus bad pacing as a whole, and again, he doesn't subscribe to that. Well, you know what, I'm not going to make entirely objective arguments here, but I would say it would be very easy to argue that if you have something that feels very climactic, and then you have falling action and then rising action again, that's definitely strange pacing, at least, and I would sure. consider it but if I'm Eric, I and I can say pacing. you think that's strange pacing, I think it's perfect pacing. I mean, maybe that would be his response. I am just... I mean, it's fine if he thinks that, that if that pacing worked for him. Well, but, we know how you know, Eric is... is at... how good Eric is at identifying arguments, so... I don't know who knows. Just to make it perfectly clear, myself and Eric agree to be on for a discussion with Wolf and Mauler, thereby making it an even discussion. That is not the nature of this show. All I will Sorry. say in response to that is, how would you... what would your response be to me and Rags, or Rags and Wolf, with you two? Is it the same, or do you have something against rags? That's the important part. They do have something against rags. Of course, because, I'm, I'm leading them with that question because I know e the answer. Eric, Eric has literally deliberately said in the past that he doesn't like rags. Yeah. He also included you in that. But yeah, I, guess, yeah. I got, I got booted out of that, unfortunately. Um, yeah. I kind of get the impression that no, we, like we're not very much. This is, no, there's no, we're not going to concede that. This, the nature of the show is, it's the three of us and then a guest or two. We're not going to kick off well, one of our. I suppose if we just want to talk about it now, because you don't feel comfortable the, um, about it, unless they provide a very, very uh, rational reason for why Rags can't be here, which I think is going to be impossible considering the uh, playground insults does not trump out of context mischaracterizations. So even if I considered that a leg to stand on, it's already been lost by doing something worse to us back. So. You can't come up with a reasonable reason for why Rag shouldn't be here, and then my olive branch will be that uh, you can choose who you would prefer to remain as silent uh, as they can. As in, like you say, we want to be addressing, you know, Mauler only, Wolf only. You're not going to choose Rags, but if you did, Rags only and the others, uh, we'd prefer they stay out of the conversation unless absolutely relevant. I will give you that. Even then, I don't like that. I will I don't even... Like I will even, and I don't know if Wolf and Rags will agree with this, but I would even extend to you that I would not use a singular swear word or insult if you were desperately demanding it. Not that I would definitely I mean, I use... I can go without swearing. Yeah, I, mean, I, I can go without that. insults too. What I'm trying to say is we will accommodate you to an extent, but we're not... You don't control this yourselves. We'll, we'll... I mean, honestly, I'm, maybe you two should man up. I know that's a little difficult since neither of you seem to know what gender you are, but maybe... Stop being cowards and trying to kick off a member of the show. Just come on, since you've both made videos utterly misrepresenting us, taking us out of context, and deliberately lying about us. Stick by what you say. Don't try to pussy out of it because you don't want to stand by your own words. <laughs> get Jared. Yeah, we'll get Jared on. Jared can you be can... The, uh, the mediator. <laughs> <laughs> Every 10 seconds, he'll be like, anyways, guys. I like the idea that you bring him on for the debate and he literally controls everything. Everything he says has to be done. Like, he is, uh, he's in charge of it. I want to see what would happen. I want Jared to debate them one True. on two. Maybe I, I feel like Jared would assassinate them. Maybe we'll get Jared to mediate the, uh, the arrival debate. <laughs> 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 but what does the film mean, guys? <laughs> you, need to, you need to talk about that. So I can speak as someone who only recently wonder if James became Ralph acquainted is it. with these works. By the way, what is it with people who make responses to us and the guest they bring along is the worst part of it? 
I don't know. Um, I gotta be honest with you. I prefer Eric's parts to uh, even though I really? think that they're both erroneous. I, this is totally subjective. Well, I feel like Eric is more genuine than go. Jack. We do have forty three minutes to go. Yeah. So. Well, yeah. I'll I'll give my take on that at the end. Um, I still. Th <sighs> this you can just call me naive. I'm I'm fine with it. I still think that there's good people inside naive. them, and they actually they did try. They've just monumentally I mean, failed. Like I know, er like Eric doesn't recognize how shitty he is. So I, I think you're right there. Also, someone in like, chat said, um, that way. "Someone in chat said, interesting that you say claim playground insults, and then you say the cowards and make fun of the gender." Um, playground insults was referring to us, but um, we will get to the morality of that if you really are curious <laughs> on why it's true. okay to use playground insults. Yeah, I, I can't believe I'm saying fine. that. I'm perfectly fine with making fun of their gender or lack this thereof. Is... This is so very interesting. Your criti this guy in chat says, you're criticizing both of them, they're criticizing both of you. Rags is irrelevant, and you're using <laughs> you, you guys are using me as a shield to avoid discussing with them. We've literally offered them to be on the show, but how we're did, not how does going that get to kick off onto a host. Us? That's weird. I don't know. I, I think this is just like, <laughs> It like, really just exemplifies the low intelligence of both these people and their idiot audiences. Rags could be literally muted for for the... Ex well, I'm not saying he should be. I, I, I wouldn't be okay with it. What I'm saying is, in the scenario in which Rags was here but muted, um, that would be more acceptable because I don't like... It, it doesn't sit well with me that he's being forced out for no reason. That... I don't like it. Um, if you want me to argue, like, from a... I don't know, he's my friend. <laughs> like, he's, he's a member of the podcast. There's no reason why I should do that. Um, it, it is absolutely asinine to expect that we are going to kick off one of the hosts of the podcast because you don't want him to be there and you don't have any valid reason for it beyond... I, I, I mean, did, did they even mention him in this video? I haven't seen the whole video. Well, well they've, already, they've already used me as a way to dishonestly imply that we can't articulate the reasons why we say the things we do. Or that Rags is used because Wolf can't articulate. See, guys, I'm enjoying being, I'm enjoying being here. It's great, right? But I feel like you guys are all too, uh, talking a lot too much. Uh, it's making me really uncomfortable, so can you all just leave? <laughs> uh, I would prefer it if I was just on the stream by myself. And well, there you, go. you can, you can, you can debate, you can debate Jay. <laughs> so... I'll debate myself. All along, Sins wasn't a guest. He's actually the owner. He's a majority stakeholder in the EFAP company, mm -hmm. Incorporated. Jay I'm is technically EFAP. our, he's our business manager. He's he our gets boss, us. Really. Yeah. Guys, he really owns us. Or if I... The three of us are diversity hires. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Gas mask people are underrepresented. Um, I used to have a, a gas mask avatar when I was 12. Uh, I used to call myself uh, Simpsons uh, when I was one. Got you. <laughs> but my <laughs> gas mask wrecked. avatar was far worse because I, I uh, unironically, my gas mask avatar was in a fedora. So oh, I know so that's, that I know. was your first mistake. Anyway, oh no, I made loads of mistakes way before that. I'm not going to comment I, on that, Jay. I'm just going to say that makes sense. That's all I'm saying. When I was okay? four years old, I yelled "dick" across the street without knowing what it meant. <laughs> Someone said, "Where is Wolf?" <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 listen, Wolf couldn't be here today because we needed someone from the intellectual gaming community to represent Captain this podcast. Captain Tonald Loke. Captain Tonald Loke. Beautiful. So I can speak as someone who only recently became acquainted with these works that the Star Wars films are actually good. They are hashtag Eric Taxon approves. However, that didn't mean there was another motive to me finally watching these films. See, our old pal Mahler has a five hour long critique of The Last Jedi on his channel. And, and I, I wanted to give him a fair shake. So no, you didn't. I watched the whole thing. So there you go, Mahler. Someone actually watched one of your critiques. I don't, believe, I don't you. believe that at all. I don't, I don't, I I don't believe you ever. Um, I, I, actually I think don't he has evidence him. that he's done it later. I, 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 I'm happy to believe that he has. He still makes the same mistakes that he makes with Wolf. But, um, mistakes, in quotation he, marks. The, the, I'm being as best, nice as I can. Look, <laughs> you said we might call you naive. You're welcome to, you're honestly. Hell, I'll call might. myself naive. It's just so that we... Uh, 
it's it's so that it's said. It's not like they can prove that they haven't been malicious, and we can't prove that. I mean, we kind of can. <laughs> I mean, I I don't at at fo at face value. Ugh, I don't trust Eric. He well, has not does this feel familiar, he's... guys? Do you remember anyone else who did shit like this? Little... I did. In, in a certain individual situation. Uh, but yeah, so it's a joke. It's fine. Uh, the 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 part where he says, "Hey, Mola, someone actually watched your video, but you didn't expect that to happen." But um, I have to highlight a bit of a funny. He's almost like accidentally implied that I wouldn't expect my critics to watch the video. And he's saying, I actually did. And I'm like, Eric, that's like the base requirement for criticizing yeah. my video. <laughs> you watch it. my stuff. Like, what the hell? <laughs> so it's funny, Eric. I agree. Like, it's a nice little delivery there, but it undercuts itself when you really think about what you've just said. Uh, that's all. I, I said individual situation. People think I'm talking about Quentin. But you are, <laughs> aren't you? I thought you were. Just I thought you were. It. No, uh, Brett Keane. Well, we've never covered Brett Keane. Oh, I don't uh, know enough about I th Brett I thought, Keane. But... I thought that was what you were referencing. No, no, well. I'm referencing how we've seen this before on EFAP. Oh, well, we've also seen this on DP. The whole, True. like, I, I only want to talk to the amazing atheist. Yeah, the the argument that we'll gang up on them or whatever is just um I don't know. Come on guys, really. <laughs> like uh it's something that I kinda you could say is admirable about certain people, like there's let's say it was Eric, Jack, H Bomber guy, Sean, um and seven other people, Lindsay Ellis and Dan Olson, all of them in a chat, and then they said, Okay, Mola, Mr. You can objectively judge a movie. Come into this chat. I'd be like, sure. I just don't know how much I'd be able to get in with that many people there. But, I mean, I would give it a shot. Um, so, yeah. Uh, come on. We have a precedent of, of letting people on who we've disagreed with and they've been outnumbered. Yeah, check and out the TRO those... video, I guess, is what yeah, we can like say. Yeah, the TRO che video. Check out the Sin Sins video and check out the person in the call with us right now. Yeah, I mean, he he's the majority shareholder in EFAP <laughs> in industries now, so... <laughs> Look at that, you guys do gag up on your guests. Uh, yeah, if, I'm, if... I'm just gonna go for a minute. I will be right back. I'm okay. Just gonna... uh, so if if by gang up on your guests you mean we've provided points, uh, all backed up a fellow point, it's just like, sure. Uh, but my definition of gang up is a little bit more um, specific and harsher than that. I mean, like, the fact that... Um, Having three people here is automatically a gang up if uh, if there's less than three on the other side. Like I don't know what to tell you at that point. That's just not how I would define it myself. Um anyway, let's carry on. Hopefully sure. it's Simpsons is These films. able to hear it. See our old pal Mahler someone in the chat so pointed out at least just right had the guts to take on both you and me, like on the fly. Like we didn't even expect that he was going to watch that stream. Absolutely. And TR did it with me in rags. But he said about you and Fallout 76, I don't know what he said about me and Fallout 76. I mean... I mean, can we imagine how bad it's going to be? I don't know. I mean, I think, I think my video is pretty good for a first time, first one of its kind, so... It's doing pretty good, too. Yeah, it's doing pretty good. Hello. Another motive to me finally Hello. watching these films. See, our old pal Mahler has he a five-hour said I five liked Fallout 76? You said what, sorry? Who said I liked Fallout 76? What? That's an, that is, is it hard towered? That is an odd takeaway for somebody to think that I liked Fallout 76. I w yeah, I personally wouldn't have assumed, assumed that uh, from your video, yeah. personally. Lies, tell me sweet little lies. <laughs> I can't get over that video, I love that. Oh, he was oh, joking. Okay, he was joking, okay, okay. <laughs> at this point, we have to make sure... You know, yeah, you, yeah make sure. it's kind of gone beyond the pale with this. We we don't know what's a joke and what's seriously. Yeah, we, we actually do. Yeah. See, our old pal Mahler has a five-hour-long critique of the Last Jedi on his channel, and and I, I wanted to give him a fair shake, so I watched the whole thing. So there you go, Mahler. Someone actually watched one of your critiques all the way through. Someone. Someone. It, it, it seems like a couple, so you, like a million or so people might have done that. Nah, they just clicked on and off.
It was, uh, it was okay. clickbait, well, I'm really. Sure, I'm sure you can already. tell from your audience retention how many people finished it. That's just audience lies, you mean. YouTube analytics are just <laughs> lies, Jay. Did you know that? Lies and slander. All right, actually, you know, I, I, I'll admit it, I'll admit it. I was all one million views. <laughs> all right, so assuming that people went from first to second to third, they didn't just skip to the third. That means 980 people watched them. Well... That's so. That's how many. That's the third. It was part a joke. Three has he was making a funny. He's like, haha, no one would watch it. I, I mean, he's not going to empathize with somebody who enjoys it. That's very clear. So, from his perspective, why would anyone watch it? And then he's like, why is there a million views on it? None of this makes sense. And then they're like, aha, it's because Maul is tricking people into thinking he's an in depth critic, which is the point of this video. Maul, are you buying views? <laughs> are you sub botting? Literally buying the bots from Rags and the views from Jay. So why are you guys yeah, revealing this? Yeah, I had some this? spares. Are, you, are so... you paying people to write nice comments on your videos? Oh, no. no, that's just that's me. It is true. It's all your old accounts. Good to watch yeah, he he this pays me to that's make good. like fifteen new accounts a day. It was very good. I keep commenting every video. All right, it was go. concise. Here we go. Here we go. Sometimes it was uh, concise. People who analyze media will give you a little rundown of of the uh, of the plot of the film they're talking about before they start really delving into the into the minutia yep, of the larger picture. Mm -hmm. Like Dan Olson on Folding Ideas has a wonderful video called "The Art of Storytelling and the Book of Henry." Just out of curiosity, like who is minutes. Dan Olson? I don't I've know who this him. is. Yeah, I've I've, I, I saw, he made a video I would actually recommend everyone watch on Suicide Squad. He explains all of the reasons why Suicide Squad is uh, really poorly edited. It's really a strong video. He's not a fan of me because he saw my videos on H Bomber Guy, who he's a friend of, and he got very flustered when I said that fun is subjective and that you shouldn't be arguing that it's uh, something that is absolutely gained in certain scenarios for gameplay. So, like, my argument being, uh, H Bomber Guy was like, if you make uh, Dark Souls less challenging by changing this thing, it'll be less fun as a result. And I was like, that's not necessarily yeah, that's true. That's ridiculous. Yeah, I think um, that's a pretty silly thing to say. And so he was, he put out a tweet saying something like, fucking hell, this guy is telling me that fun is subjective. And it's like, well, yeah. yeah. Um, and there were a couple of other problems uh, he seemed to have with it, but he didn't watch much of part one from what I uh, remember of his tweets, and he just, he's not a fan. I still think he makes some good videos from what I've seen, and I'm totally okay with him. Uh, I don't think he's gonna interact with me anytime. I don't yeah, know why. Yeah, he, he was just mentioned like three times in this video so far. Yeah, I, I, I get it. Okay. Um, anyway. Gotcha. Minutia of the larger picture. Like, Dan Olson on... Oh yeah, and people are gonna be commenting about his politics. He's probably got politics that people don't like. I, it's fine. Unfolding Ideas has a wonderful video called The Art of Storytelling and the Book of Henry where he spends like 10 minutes of a 40 minute video just giving a play-by-play -play of of the plot. Mahler's video also has this. It's just, it lasts that's four a, hours. And I'd like to say- That's 20, yeah, but 10 minute summary out of a 40 minute video, that's 25%, that's a fourth of the video is talking about what happens. Just a plot summary. That's a <sighs> lot. So like, this is going to be a recurring theme of the criticisms that I do too much plot summary. Um, I don't know when to address it as a whole. I think we'll let them make the criticism a few more times just so it sets in as to what exactly they're saying. Because I've, I've spoken to Jay about it uh, yesterday, I think. But calling what I do plot summary to me feels a little bit um, just, just like... Simplistic. Oversimplistic. A little bit, yeah. Like, uh, I wish I was given a bit more benefit of, not the doubt, benefit of the text. I don't know. Just, just look at what I do when I'm doing a plot summary, and if all you can draw from it is something that you feel you could get from Wikipedia, I, I, I guess that's fine as interpretation, but I, I'll explain the purpose of it when we get to more of the criticisms. If for anyone curious as to what he has to say, you can skip, like, halfway into part three. Of, of the analysis, and you'll miss nothing. Like, really? I wow. So, disagree like, more. the wow. one, of, one of the parts I'm really proud of is the end of part one, breaking down what they did to Luke. And, um, he's suggesting you skip over it. As much as I understand that he uh, is saying skip the plot summary and go to the summary, which is a lot of people might want to do that with my videos, that's fine. I would personally say, even if you want to do that, it's worth checking out the Luke bit. And then if, you know, if you hate the way it's written, Eric, and you think you should be skipped anyway, that's fine. I'm just saying that 
there's so much in there. There's a lot. There was supposed to. It's... There's so much in there. It's like the majority of the five hours. And if you go to one hour, eight minutes of uh, part three, you find the part where me and Mahler became friends. <laughs> the beautiful Especially... little time capsule. I, as far as I'm concerned, and I've not seen the critique in a while, so I could be wrong on this, but if you want proof for everything you're saying, watch the first four hours, and if you just want the conclusions, watch the rest. Is, yeah. is my take. The the summary, I'll be saying things that on their own would require proof, but they assume that you've seen the previous four hours. So, I mean, he, he's right insofar as if you literally just want to know what you think, then you'll get a lot of it from just the last part. I mean, I've watched the videos fair. multiple times because I know in a in a single viewing I can't glean everything that they're in there. There's just so much. There's so much that's being talked about. So many things that are discussed and compared with one another. So many I've... justifications for the scenes. The idea that if you just skip to four fifths of the way through, and you won't miss anything. That's I mean, yeah, just, of course, disagree with that. Like, what a in what universe? Um, but yeah, we'll keep going. The analysis, and you'll miss nothing. Like, this, he's spending that entire first four hours just giving a excruciatingly like slow how, how about all the points where he uh, paused yeah, like the movie that... and, like, said, this is what they could have done to make this scene better. Yeah, like, this is insanely disingenuous. <laughs> I don't like, even I have, don't have um... else to say. I don't have references I, I to, to play um... to counter his point, because I just don't think his point holds any weight at all. I mean, I know what to say, and it's that Eric is a terrible person. That you like, just objectively you just, for four hours, you just describe literally just what happens in the movie. There's nothing else. There's no well, uh, thoughts. There's no ideas. There's Glib, no criticisms. Um, Glib facts only highlighted because he's seen this video. He was like, um, "It's weird that he says you've essentially summarized the two and a half hour movie in four hours." And he was like, "How does he think that you do that?" And without people noticing, like you must have put something else in there, right? Like, how would people fall for that? An extended <laughs> version of what you saw in the film, like that would be ridiculous. Really... So Don't I have to have movie something movie. in there, surely. Um, the, the the one I would reference for anybody curious, right? So the the Luke part at the end of part one, at the beginning of part one, near the beginning, I present my take on what could happen if you had Tarkin talking to Poe instead of Hux, and how you might deal with it from a dialogue perspective. There's a part where I talk about what it means to subvert and how you could do it well and not. I think I use The Departed as a counterexample. Um, the problem with Snoke, I think I do have like a whole section on that beyond what's happening in the film, what, do you, what it means for the rest of the series. Like, There's a lot of little, little pieces of mini-analysis and I think Eric's missed them. Like what? I mean, like in chat said, the Tarkin speech thing. The Tarkin hey. thing. Like, how do you... I was like, there's so many... What do you even say to that? Yeah, so, you know, there's not much to do there other than just say, okay, that's his take, I guess. He's spending that entire first Like, okay, I hope you, like, like being a compulsive liar. I, this is, I think uh, this is lying. This, the idea that you can listen to four hours or something and just say, it's just a summary of a movie. I, I, yeah. I gotta assume that the way you would cover his ass on this is that that was his take on it or something. Of course he would. He, he will do anything to weasel out of any situation he's called out on because he is that disingenuous. I, I hope that all of his fans well, like, are paying really close attention to this. The response to this is, oh, so we've taken you out of context, have we? Typical Mueller. And I'm like, okay, but when I provide this moment from the video that you said is only X thing and I'm showing it's Y thing, does this matter to you? And they're like, no. And I'm like, why am I speaking to you? What's the point? If there's no discussion, okay. Yeah. Of the analysis, and he in the nothing. related videos like, on that screenshot. <laughs> I mean, I think He's one of the most interesting parts of of your video, I think, might be my favorite part, is how you talk about the what they could have done with Poe's character in the Canto Bite scene, with good and evil, and him developing and learning about them. You know, morality and how it might be complicated and the, all that stuff. I thought it was really, really well done. Really liked it. And I think that to just glean all over that stuff and say that it's essentially to say that doesn't, that didn't even exist is, I mean, I assume you meant Finn, by the if way. You, if you look at, oh yeah, Finn. I'm, yeah, I'm sorry, sorry. 
Um, but if you look at um, because it was at the beginning of part two. It was at the beginning of one of them. I forget. It's all it's all kind of a blur because they're all so long. <laughs> but I mean, not in a good way, though. Um, no, it's fine. But... They're designed to be rewatched. Hopefully, like yeah, in a year's yeah. time, you go, hey, I might watch it again because there's it's supposed to be dense with content. And I know that you'd be like, wow, that's Vane Muller. But I'm like, oh, well, I, I was trying to design it that way. I'm not saying it's yeah, absolutely I true. I mean, you did what a lot of other reviewers like wouldn't be able to do, which is go in depth and even give... Um, uh, examples of what could be done to improve the movie, not just say this is what's wrong and then leave it at that. Well, like what is... Wolf said, if you if you are like an Eric Taxon fan, like if I was a fan of Eric and I watched this and I had watched your video, what do you even think of him at that point? Like what at what point do the gears start turning about the kind of person that he is? And that's up for everybody to interpret. To each his own. To, to each his own. That you can mull about at your leisure, just to those speaking out loud. Entire first four hours, just giving a excruciatingly slow play-by-play -play of the movie. But here's the thing: Mahler makes objective critiques. Some of them. And what this means is that every uh, every qualitative judgment that he makes on the film is based off of what Incorrect. is provable, which might seem fine. But what this result? I like that. It just might seem fine. It's like, it is fine, Eric. <laughs> yeah, that would be fine. But he has his opinions in there, and yeah, the, he uh, says it. So yeah. you can see the where we're we're heading. It's like we're we're starting in the same position, and then they veer off immediately. So they're like, Mola does a objective critique. It's like careful. Uh, yeah, sort of, there's yeah. objective criticisms in the critique, and I usually try and make an objective conclusion based on the objective criticisms, while simultaneously uh -huh. letting the audience know how I felt about the content. And that is the critiques, that is not the rages, which is another problem this video has too, but we will get there. Excruciatingly slow play-by-play -play of the movie. But here's the thing. Mahler makes objective critiques, and what this means is that every, uh, Every qualitative judgment that he makes on the film is based off of what is provable. Which might seem fine, but what this results in is it just the the entire critique is just a endless string of observations that I thought it like was just a just plot see. summary. It's basically So it's interesting that he said that there are an endless string of observations that you can just see. Um let's say for example the disappearing knife. Did everyone see the disappearing knife on their first run through? No, I didn't. No. I know. I, I mean, I my first run through, I thought that the uh, that scene was the, one of the only few parts of the movie that were good, and then it wasn't I until was later that I was like, uh oh. Yeah, I was going to say the, the proof of this me. is you go to my TLJ Rage and I say the scene is awesome, then you go to my TLJ Critique and I say, okay, it's okay, there's lots of problems. And if you ask me now, I'm like, it's a fucking mess. Yeah, I think there it's pretty terrible now. Choreography errors everywhere, and you'd be like, well, so it's based on how much you notice. And I'm like, that's true. And the thing is, when someone watches a movie, they notice X amount, the next person notices X, the next person notices X. And Eric, if you notice every single thing that I present in the video, like you'd already know it, that's fantastic. But there's a lot of people who don't. Yeah, and the difference between those is, doesn't matter how much you personally notice, it doesn't change what's actually there. Like, there, there is a, there's an amount of frames in the film, right? Those don't change based on what you do or don't notice. They're always going to be there, and we can look at those and we can analyze those. Yeah. The fascination um, with first viewing is strange to me. But like, it's I don't know if he said it's intrinsically bad to do a plot summary yet, but uh, I'm saying that there is value because to presenting you're... observations even if there are things that you just know already. Because that's all I'm doing anyway, It's doing things that anyone else could do. Um, I'm not a god. I mean, a plot summary <laughs> is just useful. Wait, you're not? I'm I'm, I am not a god. I'm, <laughs> a, I'm demigod, close, but you know, unfortunately, yeah, everyone knows that Sin Sins is Yahweh. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, you're Yahweh, right? <laughs> I'm sorry, what? I, I'm, I'm you, were, I, you were born again, weren't you? Oh, I, no, no, no. Yes, once, just are the you, once. Are you trying to tell me yes. that? Are you trying to tell me that I've been following a false god my whole life? Um, oh, we got it, guys. We did it. We did it. Uh, Jack on what? Twitter said, at the current rate, Mole's response covering by 53 minute video is going to be over just over 12 and a half hours long. I wish I was kidding. 
Well done. You've good job. You've, you've, you've pointed out what EFAP is. Congratulations, Jack. Congratulations. You did it. You, a, a, a show that's called Every Frame a Pause will be long. Good job. You're a bright one. Excellent. So, so smart, Jack. You we've, got we've, us. We've been dismantled. We've complete dismiss. That almost Link, like, like heals the heartbreak I now feel knowing that Sin Sin's wasn't actually God. <laughs> I was going to say like, it's I feel interesting. Like my whole world's just rocked. How how the opposite ends look at it though, because we're like, okay, so we need to be very explicit. We need to have references. We need to show you where they've been stumbled. I'm going to use that word. Where they've stumbled and uh, how they've stumbled. And then their reaction is, you're taking too long. But they're right. It would definitely be better if you just said, no, this is wrong, and then moved on. Yes. That, um, that would be objectively better. It would be shorter, so. It would be shorter. I I'm and glad they pointed out on it was with long. our lives. <laughs> people I'm clapping. Glad they out it was long. <laughs> I don't think they <laughs> ever mentioned that EFAP is long before. Yeah, I, I will agree with them on that, actually. You know what? I'm saying it and putting it out there. EFAP is objectively long. Long is not relative. Okay? We all agree. Unless no, we're I talking think, about. I think like... long is relative. Shit. That ruins Depends. my argument. Because we agree on everything. Exactly. No, we don't. Especially cats. But yeah, um, go ahead, Eric. Take the stage. But what this results in is it just the the entire critique is just a endless string of observations that like you can just see. It's basically just <laughs> wow. watching the movie again, but slower and with a guy yammering in your ear about how much he hates it. Maz is displayed to them on some kind of 360 video call, which isn't explained in any way. But why bother at this point? Also, interestingly, with that point, I actually kind of uh. I would criticize it myself. I'd be like, I didn't necessarily explain why I made that statement because I thought it was obvious, but that's my bad. So what I'm referring to is Maz is in the middle of like a civil war, fight. is what she says, or, or some, some yeah, not a civil war, uh, union disagreement, I think she says. And she's actively getting shot at, and yet she has a camera that allows her to be displayed in 360 while she's like jumping and jetpacking around, and I was like, yeah, huh. It, uh the hologram just happens to change angles and at she random managed... moments, which no other hologram has ever done in the history of Star Wars. And she has this setup the moment that they call her. Like, it's, it's, I was just like, w uh, okay, that's a thing and, now. And, and again, how did how was Poe the one that called her when he wasn't the one that met her in Force Awakens? And how did she even get there? Because the last time we saw her was in that castle thing it where was destroyed. that exploded. We have to do yeah. a lot of assumptions, like she must have another home, and the union dispute might be over the fact that the place got destroyed and her workers are not happy, and she got, she has this call cool thing ready whenever someone calls her, I guess. And you're just like, yes. all right then. See, I understood that's what you were going for, but have you considered that this is a nitpick, which means your entire critique is... Oh, yeah. Well, this is the irony, right? So I'm making a small nitpick that is technically what I'm doing. I'm mainly just asking a question of, like, how the hell does any of that work? But fine, we'll move on. You're, you're saying it's essentially it's strange. It's it's an odd thing to and have this. And so, work. like Quinton, they've taken this and have been like, look what Mola does. And I'm like, you're nitpicking me. That's not all that I do. This is and just like how I nitpick the film. It's not all the film offers, but I do cover what the film fucking offers. I don't yeah, not like do that. We're not going to say their whole video is really bad because they just said this one thing. It's just a pile, a, a piling up. Yeah, and there's some things they've said we've agreed with already. Yeah, um, I mean, I. They're I mean, very simplistic statements, but still. <laughs> but yeah. I mean, uh, do you want every do you want every statement in a critique to be about an extremely important? Like, there are people out there who don't think that the uh, who don't think that. Um, you know, why the Death Star, why the First Order Death Stars don't just light speed ahead of the Radis. There are people who don't think that's a big deal when the basically the whole plot of the movie revolves around that. I think that's a, a colossal failure of the story. And some people yeah. don't think it matters at all. So even if you have them, even if you were to have Mahler only talk about the big things, what the big things are is, a I mean, that's just going to be its own issue. Yeah, it's going to be a nitpick to some people. Like Billy the Fridge, he didn't think that was he. he they literally said, "Oh, you're just nitpicking. You're taking it too seriously." I he like that Billy argument. the Fridge jab you made in your video, by the way. He's he calls himself. It's not so much a jab. He does call himself Billy the Fridge. I know mm. it's just funny but, given that the whole DP yeah. thing. Yeah. Um. So it, it that was my, it was on my brain. Like I said, I'm, I'm giving 
Eric, a point for how I did not explain what I was trying to talk about there, but negative point for implying that, you know, there's just not much else in the video, which is already done, but hey, whatever, it gets worse. All which isn't explained in any way, but why bother at this point? Also, C-3PO no longer has a red arm. There is no reason for this. The act of- So he's seen all three parts, so he's seen the part where I amend that, and- I don't know, he might have just gotten a clip from people. He's I'm- I- I don't I, trust Eric at basically anything he says at this point. I really don't. Like, anyone in chat remember where I amended them. that? Because it was a mistake. <laughs> yes, you did. That's indeed, you did, yeah. I think you start off with part three saying that? Yeah, I, I literally, I'm like, oh, I've made a couple mistakes and there's a few things I forgot to mention. Yeah, yeah, let's go back with some edits and things people have pointed out. So there you go. So, oh yeah, and for anybody who may not remember, it's not a problem that... C-3PO has a golden arm back because he gets it back in The Force Awakens right at the end and it's easy to miss because he's just in a crowd of people or at least I missed it, that's that's my point and so when people highlighted to me that I'm making, I'm raising something that's not even an issue I was like, oh shit, you're right that's, I fucked up and so this is people are like, Mola doesn't take criticism I use that as a citation then they're like, no you accept small errors, sure you don't accept that you make videos that are way too long, they're bloated, and they counter the main points you're actually making. And I'm like, you have to prove those things beyond that that's how you feel about my videos. And that's what this video is supposed to be. And this is partially, you know, a reason for why we're responding. This, this is supposed to stand now as my response to an in-depth version of that claim. You know. uh, At but least they tried. I guess it turns out Jack and Eric are willing to go on the stream with you guys. He's not going because he said that Rack is being disrespectful. I give as I get. Was that? I'm comment sorry, that? but that was, it was in the uh, stream uh, in stream chat. Somebody mentioned that, but you don't get to say the things you say and then bitch out because the other person is being disrespectful. Yeah, you don't get to say that we're being disrespectful yeah, when you're literally that's... lying about. I'm us. sorry. Yeah, like I can't take that seriously after the what yeah. we've seen so far and what's to come you've kind of you've thrown that away you've you've lost that you you, you don't you, you can't be afforded that charity guys it, we've been like discussing eric for quite a while now don't forget that um jack does the same thing oh he's so coming back all, and he so as for, i said i felt like he did worse than eric in this video so yeah if, uh, just so all the jack and eric fans that happen to be watching this either live or uh, on the recorded one on the Mueller channel. Don't forget that both of these people are making these really disingenuous claims, and I want you to really pay attention to these people. And if you're a fan of them, I think you should really reevaluate re why you're a fan, and if you should even stay subscribed because this is this is ridiculous. I wanted to mention, by the way, that um, even you know Shinobi. Even he, when yes. he, was, he was going to address Wolf's uh, more offensive comments in his Force of, uh, Fallen Kingdom review, Shinobi actually put a disclaimer saying that between the time of editing his video and, and uh, releasing it, Wolf had released a video explaining that um, he feels slightly different on potential past things that he'd said in videos. And Shinobi put that in the video as if to say, like, Wolf has actually commented on this from here on. I want that to be known. Shinobi had more integrity than these two. And Shinobi went ballistic after that stream. But even then, at least he had apparently a more integrity than these two. So let's let's push on, Mr. Eric. It's just a endless string of observations that like you can just see. It's basically just watching the movie again, but slower and with a guy yammering in your ear about how much he hates it. I mean, Maz is displayed to them on some kind of 360 video call, which isn't explained in any way, but why bother at this point? Also, C-3PO no longer has a red arm. There is no reason for this. The act of watching all three of these uh, parts all the way through... Actually, sorry, I forgot as well. Um, I actually move on to why I think that's an issue. Because um, you could be like, why is a changing color an issue? And I said that it uh, it can represent merchandise. the merchandise issue, yeah. Uh, yeah. It'll give a tell for why they would have done it in the first place if there's absolutely no plot reason for it, which is in another, you know, like forced diversity, forced merchandising would be another thing. Yeah. And, you could and be as like, we know, if uh, a movie tries to sell merchandise, it's objectively bad. <laughs> All three of but Mauler, if, the, if you read all of the comics, then you'll know why it happens, which means it's good. 
That's true. Uh, for anybody who didn't know, for anybody who criticizes The Last Jedi unfairly, you can get the DLC in a Lego game, and you can get a C-3PO novel that explains the Red Arm. Okay? <laughs> so stop complaining. ...is a uniquely unpleasant experience. Uh, he speaks so much, and yet... Run says away, so Georgie. Little. We needed to away from so Pennywise. <laughs> he's, he said he speaks so much and says so little. I was like, oh man, let's, let's hang on to that point. And like, the tragic thing is that he does have points in amongst all of the observations. Like, he, he does have actual grievances with, with the film. It's just, like, it's so padded out that... that it I appreciate the fact that he managed to say that. He at least was able to say there are points made. Jeez. Like, Round that of applause. So Thank hard. you for at least saying that. That must have been so difficult to do. Well, just to, not that you were not that you were even right or correct, but that you just made points. Chat, I want to see you all type G for Georgie. We need G for Georgie. <laughs> we need to respect that this cat is a true survivor. He's like a Navy SEAL of felines. G <sighs> for Georgie, everyone with with the film it's just like it's so padded out that that it becomes meaningless i don't think so i think it's full of content well see that so if I, if this wasn't about me i and let's say i was eric's best friend and he asked me to look at the script i'd be like eric what do you mean by meaningless though like are you saying that you find it meaningless or that nobody should be finding meaning in it and like and he's like i just want to say this i find it meaningless i'm like okay there's not much the guy's gonna do with that though because, like, if you just say that it's meaningless, you know, I mean, there's nothing... He's just gonna be like, okay. Yeah, it's like, feel. You know, it's it's one of those words that can be very... Like, what do you mean it's... Me what do you mean it's meaningless? I feel that this is one of those videos that's great if you go into it not knowing the situation, or if you already agree with... It, yeah. Say, this, is, this is like the TRO video. It's so good for people who already hate us. <laughs> it's like, yes! Beat the yeah, shit yeah, out of them, yeah, do it. Yeah, he said, yeah. That, that it becomes meaningless. Georgie, run while you have the chance. What you doing? So... Georgie's the MVP of this video, by the way. I prefer Georgie's arguments, and I think Georgie's structure is much more, um... I literally efficient. prefer Georgie's arguments. <laughs> Basically, what's happened here is that Mahler uh, doesn't know how to edit his shit, and now he thinks he invented <laughs> it. Oh my god, you do not ever get to say that someone doesn't know how to edit. <laughs> yeah, after you, you make a close-up of the film. cat jumping down off the little table thing there, I just don't... Oh, I wasn't even talking about that. I was talking about his video on where it went into a fifth dimension with like <laughs> six different things playing oh, over yeah, top of it too. with like neon yeah, lights. Yeah, but Wolf, you're addressing like you... it objectively. You're not thinking about the theme that was applicable to that moment. The theme of having an epileptic seizure. Got it. <laughs> I'm glad I you mean, got that's it. that's interesting, yeah. Uh, but yeah, the... I don't know. The, the, I'm still learning as an editor. I don't think I'm a great editor. Uh, but my goal as an editor is to have a visual that's relevant to what I'm saying. I don't nail that at all times, but... Uh... Yeah, like, that's what I try to do with my Fallout video. And I hadn't really done... I mean, it's kind of the first of its kind for me, but I did try to do that. And it takes time. I, mean, I don't know if... That takes a lot of time and work. Maybe he's referring more so to the script. I don't know maybe. why I wouldn't have just said writer in that case, but... um, Yeah, uh, I tell people this. It, it doesn't matter, because the, the people who think this way are not going to listen to this this perspective anyway, but... Uh, no, I Mahler, read over, just sit in front of your webcam and talk. I read over my scripts and I'm like, am I repeating myself here when I say this? No, this is the reason I'm saying this. Am I repeating? I do it a lot and I'm just, I'm fine with the idea that I've done it. I think that I have done it. It's just that it's a fine line sometimes in the scripting process where I'm like, will this be necessary? Um, there's going to be a line uh, in part five, I think it is, where I re-explain the problems with uh, the stormtroopers in the First Order and I actually say... I've explained this in part one, but since that was more than 10 hours ago, I'm going to explain it again because it might be lost on you at this point, and that's fair, that's fine. Um, just just running over a few details. So if you're like, you repeat yourself there, I'll be like, I did just to make sure that uh, people are hearing it. But you know what? I'll throw in a skip option now, knowing how people feel about listening to a thing they've heard already. Absolutely. Yep, this is the pattern that underlies all of Mauler's content, an illusion of deep analysis until you really give it any critical thought. 
On near on every occasion, three quarters of the video are taken up by a bloated Wikipedia summary, interrupted very occasionally with a shallow observation about something Mauler does or does not like. I think, I found it, I think that's I, demonstrably untrue. I found it insulting that he used the words critical thought while saying that sentence. <laughs> <laughs> um, you've not said anything, Jack. You've just stated it as a fact, so... You gotta have some references. Yeah. What, 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 but I think if I think if we went to those videos of yours and we tallied up the time you spend just saying, "All right, here's what the scene is," and then compare that to here's what I think about it, here's where it's wrong, here's where they could have done instead, I think it would be incredibly well, bloated towards the latter. We once we hit fourteen twenty, which is soon, we're gonna have a little experiment as to exploring Jack's points about my videos, and we're gonna see how valid they are. It's gonna be exciting. But for now, I'm just gonna say. Mola doesn't say anything deep, but he's pretending to be deep. He just summarizes and then says something shallow that attains to how he doesn't like or dislike the thing. It's like, okay, Jack, prove it. Okay. This fucking annoying droid lives matter piece of shit is apparently in all of the episodes that feature the fucking Falcon. I didn't even think you could ruin a ship, but you found a way, Disney. You fucking found a way. <laughs> so, now I'm confused. Because I thought we were talking about the critique videos, but now we're jumping to the rage videos. And uh, is his claim that I've just said what I don't like after doing plot summary? And I'd be like, sure? <laughs> Someone said Georgie Lives Matter. Um, <laughs> so if you want me to explain it to you, uh, the, the ranting in the video is obviously scripted. It's for entertainment purposes, but it does represent how the movie can or may have made me feel. Um, so it could be amplified by that. I really like the Millennium Falcon, personally, and when I found out that L337 is the Millennium Falcon, that annoys me. Can't say that I was thrilled. So, that's what that little sequence is, it's supposed to make you laugh while also feeling a little bit like, yeah, that's kind of how I feel about it too. Entertainment is the primary focus of the Rage videos. Now, will I ever make an objective argument in a Rage video? Uh, I don't see why not, if, especially if it bolsters an argument. But yeah. will I make a more subjective, probably, claims in, in a Rage video compared to a critique? Probably. It's, it's supposed yeah, to be a passionate I rant. So. I thought the title would help. Yeah, it has the word rage in it. Unbridled rage. Like which unbridled? doesn't imply <laughs> like... deep studied criticism. I've got his take on this, uh, if you want. I had a, a discussion with him about this in the comments. I've, oh, I would love it. I've snapped, um, the rages. I've snapped his first comment from that. We're going to do comments at the end, but we'll... Uh, ah, right. We will get yeah. Jack. Jack will reconcile this contradiction um, in a comment. We're going to address it at the end, but so we're just presenting the counter argument to the video first. Also, Rarely with any I need real to use the loo, so discuss amongst Go yourselves. Go for it. Um, the loo. Um, so uh, the uh, the be what is the best kind of tree? Turley. Like? The best kind of tree. Oh, I get it. He's a dog. Um, Vavarith said it's for people who didn't watch your videos, so it's fine. That's his quotes are out of place. Um, the, the, the other aspect of this is that um, taking that one piece of my solo rage video, which is, I believe, over 40 minutes, over 45, I can't remember specifically, it's interesting. Because it's like, would you, like, someone who is a huge fan of this channel, do you believe that he's represented the video correctly if he's taken one seven second clip at most out of what is nearly an hour, potentially? Like, for me personally, again, if I was Jack's friend, I'd be like, I don't know, dude, like, I haven't seen that video. Is it really mainly that? Like, sure, you could at least get three examples in a row. Uh, I don't know, I might check out the video just to make sure. And then you watch it and you're like, oh, he talks about how Han Solo has uh, been fucked up in the film and is also contradictive while behaving strangely in terms of, like, goes through a similar arc to uh, the fourth one, A, a New Hope. Or Star Wars, depending on how you'd like to refer to it. Uh, the the climax is beyond confusing for what everybody's doing in that room and why they planned f for what they did uh, in terms of what their goals are. Like I break all of that down. Talking about how they've spent extreme amounts of money on the movie and it's all in um, the practical effects and sets and you could be like, what's wrong with that? And I'm like, oh, well, my theory is that uh, what people were complaining about with the prequels a lot was that the everything was CGI, quote-unquote, while the OT was everything was practical, quote-unquote. So you'd be like, hmm, let's have practical, practical, practical to the fucking 
crank that shit to 11, and you're like, oh, and they did, and it's it's shown in their bleeding budget along with the reshoots. Um, what else did I say? Like, I'm just trying to remember the more substantive points that go beyond me just ranting and making funny jokes sort of thing. That's, that's, that's kind of what I'm getting at here, and I just feel like it's a little bit unfair to say that that's what's going on in these videos, more so than anything else. Yes. <laughs> that's that's my contribution here. Yes. I think we need to get Jared's input personally. I think he'd say I did it okay the way I did it. <laughs> Why are people spamming tree emojis in the chat? I've seen like three now, I think. Uh, rags peeing on a tree. Tree milk. Tree Can milk. you milk any tree? It's called sap. Why would you um, ask why instead of knowing? You should know what can and cannot be milked. This is a plot hole. Yeah. Fucking ruined everything. Um. Jay, I need to ask you something. Sure. <laughs> is it about a film I have or haven't seen? Or about should I life? answer that question? I mean, ans answer it by going on with what it is you have to ask me. Well, there's there's some things that some people have seen that you may not have. I just wanted to know if perhaps you have or have not seen them. Sure, let's let's do this. Moon. I actually saw the first half of it, then realized I was <laughs> alone in a dark room where the lights didn't work and thought maybe not now because it seems kind of creepy. Uh, that it. doesn't count. Ex Machina. Yes. Her. I love it. Oh, wait, which one? Her. No. Robot and Frank. I'm sorry, what is that? Robot and Frank. No, I, I, I heard you. I just, I literally don't know what that is. Oh, that's a, that's another movie. Requiem for a Dream. Um, no. Ah, the Prestige. <laughs> no. Oh. I'm, Blast I'm... from the Past. Nope. <laughs> this is the end. Um. Is that a film, or are you just saying that to me like, this is the end no, of that, that, No, 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 that's, that's, a, that's an actual video, or movie. I have returned. I have not seen that. Is that the one with Seth Rogen? Oh, oh god. E.T.? Yes. Oh, oh, thank, go. thank god. Thank god, I felt like I was going to have a heart attack. The Thin Red Line. Et? No. The Wind That Shakes the Parley. Nope. Fracture. No. Catch Me If You Can. Nope. 21. <laughs> Jump Street. No, 21. Uh, no, I've seen 21 Jump Street, though. That's not the same. I, yes, it is. It has no, the it's word, totally no, the same. it's not. It Doomsday. is, in my opinion. It is the same, because it has the word 21 in it. A few good okay. men? No. Doomsday. Oh. I've seen John Wick, person in the chat, and I wanted to draw attention to that, because it's one I have seen. So. <laughs> okay, uh, Paradise Now. Nope. Susan of the Witch. No. Harold and Kumar Escape from Garden. I've not seen Season any fucking films. Witch. Like I've seen, I've seen a lot of films, just not these ones. Like that's Free how Willy? I feel. <laughs> Free no, Willy. Wait, yes, but I was really young and I don't really remember it. Okay, that still counts. Stand by me. No. Peter like Jackson's that. King Kong. Wait, you haven't seen Stand by Me? Are you shitting me? I love Stand by Me. How it's are you surprised by me not having seen <laughs> Come the film? Come on. How does this surprise you at this point? Uh, Peter Jackson's King Kong. Uh, I've seen Percy Jackson. That's oh the, no! The, oh like, oh no! That was not the answer you should have gotten. Oh, oh Tropic I, I hated it. If that makes you happy, You've, I've already told okay. you I'm not. Push. Oh um, man, I like push. I knew that the stream was going to become this at some point. Well, push. Uh, would you want answer to... the question. I said I already said I haven't seen that. Jumanji. Yes. Oh, Oof. I like that. Yeah. Hidalgo. I'm, I'm sorry. What? That's Hidalgo. Enough. I don't know what that is. I love yeah. Hidalgo. Vigo Mortensen? Yeah, yeah I saw I it because of him. Horse, <laughs> yeah, Dead Poet Society? Oh, yes. another Robin Williams. Oh, one. thank God. Smoke Signals? No. The Silence of the Lambs? No. I'm really? Top Gun. really big on horror, so any horror, just you know. Good Morning okay. Vietnam? Uh, I've not seen Top Gun. Good Morning what? Vietnam? Oh, the Thing? I've not seen that. I've, I really want to see The Thing, but I've not yet. Shutter oh, Island? Yeah. Yes. The Mummy and the Mummy Returns with Brendan Fraser. I've seen all three Mummy films. Okay. Oh, oh, okay, you at least got that one. Unbreakable. Uh, uh, no. Old School. No. Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. No. I love Get Hard. Me. Um, do I have to? I live it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Someone said not human. <laughs> not human. 
We're gonna we're gonna skip that one. Oh, yeah, we were soldiers. Uh, oh, no, God. Oh, I have seen. I have seen uh, vampire. No, not Abraham Lincoln vampire hunter, and that's I think all I need to see. No, I have seen Die Hard person in the chat. The Sixth Sense. Yes, I the didn't... island. Um. That's what actually, we wanted, actually, yeah. I don't mind if you haven't seen that one. Never mind. Patriot Games. Oh uh, no, the Patriot. And person in the chat, I have seen Thor: The Dark World, unfortunately. Oh my God, Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Yes. Gattaca. No. What? Huh? Do you want to? Do you want to put that on Christmas pause until vacation. we find another possible break? No, we have to go over everything. This is why the stream is going to be twelve hours. I was going to say, otherwise you just name every movie that ever existed. I, I'm literally going over every movie that I own. Beginning in 1829. Would you like me to just record a clip of me saying I haven't seen that, and then I can leave for the duration of this part, and you can mm -hmm. just play that on loop? <laughs> Look at all the. There's so many movie suggestions in <laughs> chat. Um, I've right. seen Spaceballs chat. I can't, I can't. I've not seen Twilight. Why would you ask me that? Have One... you seen Thumb Wars, The Phantom Cuticle? I've not seen Twilight New Moon. Stop asking me Twilight I, I, films. I, I, I just cannot fathom how you have not seen Stand By Me. I mean, it's even so it, that was like one of the kid, one of the movies I watched as a kid, like over and over and over. I love that movie. Sandlot. I'm, I'm have still you seen a the child. Sandlot? So... Oh god, he hasn't seen the Sandlot. Oh, Come oh, on. Bubble Boy no. said, "Is there a film that you think is objectively bad, but you really enjoy and think is subjectively good, or well, just you like subjectively?" Uh, Revenge of the Catwoman. Sith. The Room. Yeah, The Room. Yeah, Revenge the... of the Sith. Um. Yeah, my Batman and Robin. I always say. Annihilation. <laughs> <laughs> um, what I meant to say is that. Black Panther. Oof. Well, I mean, <laughs> that's fine. Um. <laughs> <laughs> the, the the this clip that um that uh, Jack used by the way I do go on to explain uh why it's an issue as well that and how it happened and what doing that to the Falcon is doing you know like things that this this uh introdu introduces this is the funny rage part and then I'm like by the way this is the actual fucking reasons why this sucks and I do it in the Predator video as well but it's like leave those bits out those pesky what what is it in that pesky context off <laughs> remember to turn off that pesky context <laughs> it was Matt a piece of shit is apparently in all of the episodes that feature the fucking falcon I didn't even think you could ruin a ship but you found a way Disney you fucking found I stand by that statement how the hell do you yeah. ruin a ship and it's like you did it all it no has way. to do is move people around and you fucked it up. <laughs> hey. Rarely with any real thrust to his arguments Rarely hey Jack what does it mean to have thrust to your argument also, what direction is the thrust going in? That's very important. <laughs> what, pos what position? Is exactly. it a downward Down thrust? It's a downward thrust, yeah. I like it. I like it. <laughs> is Total really Loke involved? Donald would approve of Jack's videos, I think. It's apparently I think in so, all yeah. of the episodes that feature the fucking Falcon. I didn't even think you could ruin a ship, but you found a way, Disney. You fucking found a way. Rarely with any real thrust to his arguments, rarely elaborated on as he sacrifices depth for breadth, and as you hurtle towards the conclusion after a two I to don't think he does. At yeah, all. he's saying I do. That's it. I. That's an interesting opinion you I think have there. People on the team, if you will, for this actually consider that criticism, where they just go, like for example, all Wolf's videos are a blue screens and noise. I've said it. So that's criticism now. And Wolf's just like, that's, not, that's just nothing in relation to my stuff. And it's like, yeah, but it's criticism, though. So, get fucked. <sighs> Five hour long rant. Rant. Do you know little more about the film than rant. what happens in it? Well, this is just a 53 minute rant. And I yeah, actually it argue there's a bit of a rant. ramble on Eric's part, because he does seem... I think he may have had a script, and then he's sort of going off script, selectively. Uh, yeah, just man, just sit in front of your webcam and just talk. With a few errors. And whether. Oh, wait, sorry, let's go back a bit. Really yep. elaborated on as he sacrifices depth for breadth. And as you hurtle towards the conclusion after a two to five hour long rant, you know little more about the film than what <laughs> happens in it with a few errors. And whether some guy on the internet personally enjoyed it. How. What. What else is there that wouldn't come under those two things? Because a theme would happen in the film. So what... The errors would also happen in the he's film. He's like, the what happens in the, happen film, in the film, and what the guy thought of it. It's like, what 
statement can you make about a movie in a review that wouldn't come under those two, one of those two things? Yeah, name a movie reviewer who doesn't do that. I... Mola and his family. Because if, if he's talking about, like, what I drew from The Last Jedi was that in my life, you know, I failed several times and I realized that those failures are precisely what brought me to my success. And so I, I really am, you know, I really connect with The Last Jedi's uh, lesson. And I'd be like, okay, and that's, that's fine. And that's in the movie. So he's still talking about what is in the movie and then what he got from it. You know, so like, I don't understand, like, because he, he's, they're always arguing for depth, meaning stuff like talking about themes, which I do, so I don't even know why they're saying that, but whatever. Fans, of course, objecting to this assessment, as they believe he digs into something it's more. A, it might be a problem for someone else, right? But it's a problem in their subjective lens. It doesn't make it objective. That Not talking about people. On that, it right? is a problem, factually. Some defenders of Mauler's style of analysis. See, so, what was um, wrong with that? Yeah, so Jax accused me of, um, he's going to uh, at one point in this video, but I think he may have done it already, where I'll just state a thing, but I don't actually explore why it's bad, and he's just done it there for me. Yeah, that's... So it, keep that in mind, I folks. I had to ask, yeah. Oh, how did I know that he was going to bring Sargon up? I just knew it. Objective that Not talking about people, on that, it right? is a problem... Factually. Some defenders of Mauler's style of analysis assert that Mauler- That's not- by the way, that quote, that's not to say that any objective flaw is a factual flaw, it's the specific one we were discussing in that conversation, which, again, context, that pesky fucker is getting in the way, but, sorry, it's, it's a bit more than just, just don't that Don't include quote. it. ...uses multiple lenses of critical analysis to see the work from analysis. as many sides as possible, and that's what justifies this um, format. So... Uh, Sargon did make a video in defense of me, and I actually quite liked a lot of it. There's one point where Sargon says that Mauler is trying to reach an objective take by exploring all takes and figuring out what each of the individual ones are lacking, and then sort of combine them into a cohesive whole. Um, as much as I appreciate, uh, you know, trying to make sense of it instead of just fucking strawmanning me like a lot of people like to do, I don't, I don't do that, um, I'm just trying, my criteria is just what's there, what's provable. And they even say this in the video at one point, that that's kind of what I'm going for. Um, and when you come to provable, there are things that I will miss. There's always gonna be things I'll miss, because I'm human. And then people will be like, aha, so it's subjective. And I'll be like, no, that means I made a mistake, <laughs> for fuck's sake. Like, so, you know, you could call that a worldview thing or whatever. But yeah, I don't uh, I don't come at The Last Jedi from the mind of um, every race, every sexuality, every political position, every uh, walk of life, even different species. You know, I, I don't even know that it's possible to do that. Um, and I don't claim to try to do that. Uh, I've, so Sargon may have the wrong impression. It'd be interesting to maybe see what he, uh, what he thinks about my sort of response to that. Regardless... Someone's Someone said, bring V on, then kick V. <laughs> <laughs> uh, regardless, unfortunately for Jack, he's going to take this uh, argument and argue against it, but it's never something I've said. So... Yeah, but it's so easy to just... Yeah, like, if... Just find someone... It. Like, if I just find... If I pay a guy to say, Rags always loves murdering people on a Tuesday, and then he'd be Love like, it. Rags, this is Tomorrow's why you Tomorrow's the day, guys. <laughs> Tomorrow's the day. Buckle up. It's gonna be some killing. ...style of analysis assert that Mauler uses multiple lenses of critical analysis to see the work from as many sides as possible, and that's what just justifies this format. Nope. You could maybe argue Mauler briefly okay. touches on the feminist aspect of a work. I don't touch on the feminist aspects of a work, I don't think. I don't know why he's... That's... I think... I th I'm, uh, I, I, I'm not saying I've blaring. never mentioned it. I'm saying... To say that I touch on the feminist aspect is pretty generous to me. You know? I mean, you mentioned that some pe people have a feminist aspect of it. Um, I'm more the one that mentions that. Yeah. Uh, so, I know for a fact that I say that um, in DS2, you can't choose your gender from the get-go. You spawn as a man, and then you can choose your gender in about, I don't know, five minutes from there. And so I find it interesting that when H Bomber guy is summing summing up all the the game, I'm surprised he doesn't have any issue with that as a feminist. That's all I said. Like, I I didn't declare that I'm in favor or against feminism. I literally just pointed out that it's interesting as a feminist that you wouldn't have an issue with a game that's previously allowed you to choose what gender you spawn in with, that it's forcing you to be male. 
immediately. And you could be like, well, that's just a nitpick. And I'd be like, no, sure, that's fine, that's fine. I, I found it interesting that it's not something that would bother him at all. So if someone so said... You think... you... Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say that if someone said, like, see, you, you do explore it from the feminist, I'd be like, that's, I think, a bit of an over-exaggeration. But I mean, I wouldn't even consider it a criticism. I'd just be like, okay, if that's how you think I do it, fine. I mean, if you're really... somebody who liked the idea of an apolitical review, I mean, you're, you're pretty much that. I try to be. I mean, he's not really criticizing you at this point. He's criticizing what Sargon said about you. He's saying that Sargon is wrong, not you. Well, and a lot of people are mentioning in the chat that, of course, they talk about Sargon because he's on the other side politically than them. Um, sin sorry, Sins. Uh, Jay, don't you think it's a little bit cheap to take a point that I don't hold and counter it? Oh, yeah, it? it's cheap, but this isn't yeah i'm just saying this is not an issue with this is not your fault none of this is like something anything you've done wrong the fact that someone has said your work has this merit uh, or this this quality and it's not something that you even tried to put in your work really is is like you know that's not a problem that you have that's something yeah, it's almost that like why did you incredibly. even why is this even in the video you know yeah like how many people are really saying that i approach media criticism from every lens possible like is there a lot of people saying that about my work I don't know. I've never heard that before myself. Hey. Mostly just to accuse female characters of being Mary Sue's, but characters. Okay, so we, let's let's do, let's do that again. To see the work from as many sides as possible, and that's what justifies this format. Nope. You could maybe argue Mauler briefly touches on the feminist aspect of a work, mostly just to accuse female characters of being Mary Sue's. So the implication there is that. I believe that I need I need to use feminism to excuse pointing out a character as a Mary Sue. I'm not entirely sure of what, what he is thinks. Mary, Mary Sue. I mean, there are male equivalents to that. Well, I was about to like, say. So a Mary Sue has nothing intrinsically to do with feminism. It can be the result yeah. of a feminist creating content, but um, it could happen. The origin of a Mary Sue is just someone writing a, a fan fiction. They insert themselves. Could so, be a, could be the result of a diversity hire. Yeah, like. Just First leveling person. with you, Jack. Mary Sue and feminists are not intrinsically connected, and I don't yeah. think I've ever said they are. That's a strange point. I mean, you, I mean, it's very easy to argue the flip side and say that a Mary Sue would make a feminist upset because it's a a very poorly constructed character that makes females look bad on screen. To see um, the one and yeah, a lot of people are obviously saying Gary Sue, but um, people even refer to some male characters as Mary Sues, as if to say a Mary Sue isn't tied specifically to a female, but, but there's this discussion to be had about that. Either way, uh, certain people believe Mary Sue can be applied to a man, and if not, it would be called a Gary Stu anyway. I would recommend the Trope Talks video on Mary Sue's. I think it covers the topic really well. There you go. I can't remember Someone said it. Ryan Gosling. The, uh, the channel is Overly Sarcastic Productions. If you want an overview of what a Mary Sue is, I would recommend that video. By the way, it's ironic that we're spending so much time with context and explaining all the how these points are uh, bullshit, and the biggest response we'll get to this is too long. It's too long. Well, if I make a video about words are bad and you use words to counter me, then ha. Long man bad. I was right. Yeah, I was right. <laughs> long man. <laughs> Work from as many sides as possible, and that's what justifies this format. Nope. You could maybe argue Mola oh, briefly touches elaborate. on the feminist aspect of a work, He's gonna accuse me mostly of that. just to accuse female characters of being Mary Sue's. But for much else, psychoanalysis, post-colonialism... Why the fuck do I... <laughs> no, I don't look at The Last Jedi through post-colonialism, you're right. What about queer theory? Queer theory. That's the important one. Marxism. Marvel and Mola spending queer three... Theory? Just call it query and save time. That's true. <laughs> I'm, I'm a fan of that. This is why we have Jay here. <laughs> he's you should you, you should tell that to just right. See if he's like, wow. The problem oh. is we spend more time discussing the way that he saves us time than time was actually saved. But but I don't <laughs> think we I, th I think we really need to like focus. Um, post colonialism. What? <laughs> if if you don't know what it is, Wolf, that's your fault. Okay. Yeah. I know what it is. I want to know how exactly he thinks that applies to anything that we do or well, say. Well, his point ever. is that I don't look at the movie through that lens. And? So I, I don't, therefore I don't say. look at it through all lenses, which is not a position I hold anyway, but... 
but instead of going through, like, there could be a discussion there about what Sargon said about looking at a movie through. How do we stay, you know, true to those particular lenses if we don't necessarily agree with them? How do we make sure our views on those issues aren't necessarily skewed? But G just says nope, and that's kind of it. I mean, he, he lists examples of the lenses, but he doesn't really give us any information on how we could, how that might change the way a scene is portrayed, or how it might make a scene better, or how the lens that maybe a director sees the world through could influence the final product. None of that stuff is discussed. Maybe he does later. I guess we'll see. Yeah, that's true. Psychoanalysis, post-colonialism, queer Marxism theory, shit, the Marxism. Way. Marvel at Moolah spending three minutes of his last Jedi analysis saying, I don't like to get political, but film thinks war profiteering bad and child slavery bad. And that is bad because... What? Disney... Yeah, that's nowhere near what you said. Oh, wow. So, like, we're going to go on an wow. adventure, folks. We're, Hooray! I we're going <coughs> to check out my part of the video that he's referencing, because he's just summed up my portion on Canto Bite as child slavery bad, uh, animal cruelty bad, and this is bad because Disney... Sorry, what was this whole thing? <laughs> makes money. Disney makes money. There you go. So, um, we're, we're going to rush over to my video, and I'm I apologize for this, but we're going to be watching five minutes of my video. Um, Somebody that sounds too long. It's, it is long. I know that that's too going going dramatically far. Uh, Six fifteen. God, can't you summarize this in under five minutes? Is a planet? You, you're right. That's a, I, that's a Sargon bad. quote. I would really prefer to view these five minutes through a post-colonial lens. <laughs> and uh. <laughs> We're gonna we're gonna keep in mind what what Jack has said, and we're also gonna keep in mind that Eric said I. This is part of the section of I speak so much, yet I say so little. So here comes the five minute section, I suppose. It filled with massive over the top security, likely because the place makes a massive amount of money. This means that all those animals that her and Finn have released will be captured and put back to work. This is obvious as what else would happen when that many sentries are all chasing the targets when they've been shown to have weaponry. They aren't shooting because they're trying to catch the animals, and it's only a matter of time before they do. Which is dumb in itself, by the way, as they cause more damage to the world and grief to the guests than I'm sure they're worth, but whatever. What Rose has said here is akin to a child's outlook on animals cruelty. Just free them all, let them return to their homes. It is very likely that they can't even survive in the wild, that they've been born and raised in captivity. None of this is handled with a lick of realism, and considering this series is being looked at as children's content, despite the incredibly deep themes and the violence, what is it that you think this teaches children exactly? Free animals no matter what? Stop mean things from happening? If anything, this will simply give children the wrong ideas. Moving on to Finn, he is mostly along for Rose's ride, but he does comment on the destruction of the casino as a sort of revenge against the people who run the planet, the rich war profiteers. Now this is actually childlike writing again, a glossed view of the world where the bad guy loses because we broke his toys. Finn accomplished the destruction of many areas of Canto Bight, scaring and injuring citizens or tourists while labeling them all as evil as he trampled through without any specific information on any of them, only to claim the revenge he apparently sought. What a great character. An easy comparison for this is He's the sad realization that by destroying the, the sorry that was that was one of my favorite parts of the series that you did. Oh, well, thank you. Death Star, Luke may have killed many <laughs> innocent stormtroopers conscripted for the sole reason that they were unlucky and didn't believe in the Empire at all. Who knows? This is inevitably going to happen in order to stop this planet killer from completing its goals. Here, though, he is just rampaging through a random city on a planet under the justification that he doesn't like the people who live here. What about the good people who are here? What about the slave labor that may be serving these people as you trample through? What about characters just like you and Rose who are here to find something? It is so interesting that a character who's established as unable to stomach human suffering is so blunderously carving through a complex filled with humans causing suffering. It is almost like there is no care taken with the characters in this film. But that's ridiculous, right? The carnage is apparently justified by some of these people having profited from war. Do you understand what that means? They didn't cause the war, they simply profited from it. They aren't even strictly evil on the scale. They're just opportunists. Besides that, as a disgruntled sanitation worker for the First Order, Finn should know well and good that when something is damaged in the Starkiller base, or the Supremacy, the mess is not cleaned up by Snoke, or Hux, or Kylo Ren. It would be sanitation, engineering 
plumbing, or a specific section of people that work. Perhaps a slave group. Real people like Finn clean up the messes that he is making right now, and he should know this. Not to mention that this may have no real effect on the rich, horrible people of the world because they have insurance. But what does that matter? We know they have slave labor, so they're just gonna use them. Thanks to Finn, there's gonna be months and months of whipping and ridicule, all so that he could feel better about these evil men who rule this world. People feel like this whole sequence was a moment for Finn to grow and learn in relation to the evils in the world, while in reality it was an embarrassing cavalcade of virtues being sprayed across a disconnected and clumsily constructed plotline. Finn's new and idiotic attitude is the similar kind of attitude that many misguided activists have in our world today day, freeing animals only to scare or hurt them, or ultimately return them to where they were found, or they will destroy property in the name of hurting the one who's at the top of the chain, when in reality they only hurt the workers who fix it all. This whole mess on Canto Bite is the foreground to the theme of war profiteers getting richer and richer while the young, defenseless children of the world are used as free labor for the planet the rich enjoy. This is so unbelievably on the nose, it's embarrassing. Why in Star Wars would they be using child labor instead of droids, when the droids would be cheaper, stronger, faster, and far more subservient. This isn't Tatooine, a distant desert planet filled with those who multiply out of poverty and engage in slavery from birth as a form of shelter and living. But at least Tatooine did have droids too. They were just low quality. This is a luxury casino planet filled with the galaxy's richest men and monsters. Why would they even bother with anything but the finest, most efficient technology? I know why. Ryan Johnson wanted you to know that these were very evil people. Oh my god, Mark's poor face. I know. Yeah. Look at him. He looks like he's about to strangle Ryan. Children, it's the heart coming the before moment. the mind. And what a surprise! Look who's scraping up the filth! Is it a human child? I wish! Overall. So. Oh wait, just nine more seconds. Bite screams of a child's view of the world and its injustices. The simplistic look at everything wrong with the world and why we should all change our behavior. So, that's my take on Canto Bite as a finisher, right? So that was, like I said, five minutes. I said, the animals are going to be captured and put back. Uh, choosing to not shoot the animals is also interesting because they're probably dealing more damage than they're worth. So that's another weird thing. Very likely they can't survive out of being captured. All of it was made worse when looking at it as a message for children, because it's so overt and contradictive. And that's a point of irony, because people will claim that it's just for kids, you know, the, the thing, but also claim that it has incredibly deep themes that typically kids wouldn't even understand. Um, Finn comments on the casino damage as, like, good, because, you know, these are the bad guys, despite having no idea if these people are even evil, and that's, like, intrinsic to the origin of his character. So, contradiction again. Following up with, um, even if selling weapons to a war was true and bad, it doesn't make them reprehensible because the film itself tells us that they sell to the good guys too, so how do you even justify that? And on top of it, um, Cantobite's fine because of insurance, they, they, you, you wouldn't even consider that. Droids are cheaper than child labor, uh, faster than child labor, they're more subservient than child labor, like I said, and, um, who knows what kind of punishment the slaves are gonna get because of this, because they helped them. All of it is a fucking mess, right? So they're all of my points, and that was over five minutes. So Eric says, like, I, I say nothing, despite saying a lot. And um, Jack summed this up with what you heard. I don't even, like, there is a comment in here somewhere. I think I comment on the irony of um, Disney telling us that the 1% are the problem when... They're a huge, massive, multi-million dollar <laughs> corporation with more money than God. It's It's actually insane, and, like... He's got a response to that here. I hope I can pause it to Mostly be like... Mostly just to accuse female characters of being uh, Sue's. But give me a sec. for much else... Jay? Psycho... Yes. What am I looking at? <laughs> Thrump. 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 <laughs> Hashtag Thrump, everyone. Analysis, post-colonialism, queer theory, Marxism. Marvel at Moolah spending three minutes of his last Jedi analysis saying, I don't like to get political, but film thinks war profiteering bad and child slavery bad, and that is bad because Disney makes- So can you see this picture? We should improve society, yet you participate in society. Curious, I am very intelligent. So he thinks that this is equivalent to me saying Disney are, are contradictive to claim that capitalism bad when they're the biggest profiteers from capitalism. 
The reason this is How not the same thing, Jack, this is a false equivalency, is because that is a peasant potentially working hard to survive and is thus involved in the society, just like all of us are. So criticizing society would be the same, but Disney are at the peak as a result of the system in the society. So for them to tell us that we should stop this system, it's just like, what the fuck? You guys don't donate the majority of your money to other people it's, who are struggling. Yeah, it's like a how do you do, fellow kids, but for a corporation. Also, like they're I, trying I, to I, fool I us into off, something that they're not. It reminds me of when uh, in YouTube Rewind 2018, they had that section to stop and talk about all of those like essentially hot political issues that YouTube, like YouTube's actual actions go against. Like they spoke about LGBT issues, I believe, when they systematically demonetize videos about LGBT issues. Uh, it's like, you know, actions speak not to mention, words. I would, I would say that is equivalent. Not to mention their aggressive advertising of what will happen if Article 13 goes through and they're like, all videos will be blank. And then it's like, you delete channels, YouTube. You're doing this already. And if it was justified, or at least they provided justification, it'd be okay, but they like arbitrarily fucking slash channels. No consistency because channels who commit the same sins stay up. It's the same with Patreon. I mean, what I mean is, I love YouTube. Um, please <laughs> don't. Uh, I worship the YouTube algorithm. Um, YouTube is great. Finally, I love YouTube too. It's great. It's amazing. I have no problems with it whatsoever. Over there, and it's a Google flawless platform. I love it. It's great. I hope nothing changes. I really like Susan. She's my favorite. Oh yeah, she's my favorite person who ever personed. Um. So yeah, the. The shit that's presented in the film flies in the face of Disney as a company and their choices as a company. Because let's, let's be honest, Disney are not known for giving away 70% of their fucking earnings. I'm pretty sure they're worth like $100 billion or something. So they're the ones that can make a serious impact if they actually consider this a societal issue. And yet, they're just telling us that they think it should be. So I consider that a contradiction versus the peasant who is attempting to survive and this little twat says... Yet you participate in society. Uh, not the same thing. Um, but I appreciate the joke, I guess. So yeah, it's just another standard straw man. It's like, Mola thinks that it's bad that they have these politics because Disney Am makes money. And it's just like, yeah, that's a great way to summarize the whole sequence, which I think you guys would agree, right? It's more, way more focused on the actual consistencies in the film. I don't actually comment on... I don't even... I, don't, I can't remember if I say it in the video, but my intention is not to confirm whether or not child slavery is a bad thing. Obviously, I personally think it's a bad thing, but I'm I, not interested if you, that's... Though, I don't believe you. <laughs> it's about how it's executed. Um, if you tell me child slavery is bad and the whole film is about how beneficial child slavery is, I'd be like, seems a bit at odds with yourself there, movie. How many child slaves do you have? 17, but that's I one that's down from last year, many? so... It depends on oh, okay, the day, because so I'm constantly buying and selling new ones, so the number of changes a little bit over time. It depends how you define child. It depends on how you define slave. <laughs> define, define. Define, uh, define, define. Anyway, the point is, this video is a joke so far. And it's demonstrably untrue. Oh, they've changed their requirements. Rags can be on, but he has to be muted the whole time. Oh, well, that's, that's, fair. that's a distinction without a difference, isn't it? I mean, I was going to say, like, um, I, I wish I could agree, but the idea is that if Rags has something important to say, then he should be allowed to say it. What is Because Rags could just be in the audience at that point. If he's not allowed to say anything, but he's allowed to be in the call, that just makes it so that he's able to hear the conversation a couple of seconds before everyone else. Like, what difference Why does are that you like such cowards? That's literally like saying, I'm going to kill you, and then someone, I don't want you to kill me. Okay, that's fine. You don't, I won't kill you, so long as you kill yourself. I think that <laughs> solves everything. That's, that makes it fair. So, I have a, I, so, if the video, if it's about who's the video, who the video is about, does that mean Sargon can be in the call? Hmm. I guess Dan Olsen and uh, Lindsay Allen should be here too. Let's just literally invite everyone who's ever done anything. I guess I won't be there then, but still. Um, just, I mean, I mean that, that's just pathetic to me. You two are pathetic. You're subhuman, honestly. They're going to love that comment. <laughs> so oh, yeah. That'll be I don't fucking care. sound clip. Quote, quote me on it. I think you're both subhuman. The that's going to be their entire takeaway from the stream, is they're going to take that quote and so. 
and uh, present that as your entire argument against what they've said. Congratulations, Sweet. Wolf. They're gonna they're gonna take you out of context. Well, they'll they'll misrepresent your position. That's what that'll be. Yeah. Oh well. There'll be I no reason care. for you to have said that. He but I mean, cares about the facts. He said it. I was, I was gonna say this whole stream is about how they don't do that anyway. So why would that be a surprise? Like, why would I care enough to even give them the benefit of the doubt for anything? Why would I care enough to be nice to them when they are so? I mean, they crossed that line like Defied almost immediately. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's um, like I really don't care what they have to say because we can see what they say is just. It's just like it's, like you're just terrible. I can't. I, I I haven't seen this level of just disingenuous bad faith arguments possibly ever. I mean, this, this is, is really like such a Quentin low bar. Money. I actually I I like want to hug Quentin and be like, "You're at least not as bad as these two. Yeah, at least you're not as bad as Eric Jackson." You're, in this yeah, line. you're like third worst. Uh, so something I think that's worth highlighting, by the way, is you know that whole sequence for like five minutes. I uh, you can argue, I am doing a plot summary of Canto Bite, or something like that. Uh, I, I'm saying you can, I'm saying it would be inaccurate. Yeah, yeah, is that, that within the part really they tough. call your plot summary? No, I'm, I'm, not suggesting, I'm not suggesting they've explicitly said that, but uh, Eric did say that the first, was it four and something hours, is essentially just excruciatingly explaining the plot, and what I just showed you is in that four hours. Yeah, that's what I was asking. So, if they do think that it's plot summary, and like, this sounds so condescending, but guys, if I'm still talking about Canto, if I'm talking about Canto Bite, and I explain one reason why I don't like Canto Bite, and then your reaction is, okay, move on, and then I go, here's the second reason, and then they're like, oh, he's still on Canto Bite, here's a third reason, until they hit five minutes and I've done the 15 reasons, or 10 or whatever, and then they're like, he just cannot move on from Canto Bite, this is insane. I would be like, guys, you know, that's not, that's not the, how the video's working. Um, just because... I'm still on the topic of Canto Bite does not mean I have not moved on from the previous point. I don't know how else to say that. But yeah, just if, they, if they're counting this as plot summary, that is incredibly reductive. In um, I, mean, I guess he he does say it's plot summary with a guy telling you why he doesn't like it. I guess that technically is what it is. There is, that's, but I didn't that's say the part of, when when I say that. that would uh, be the part. Finn's character's being contradicted. I could like that for all someone knows, you know? I could also dislike it. I didn't even tell you if I liked it or not. That's true. Uh, that's, but that comes into the subjective objective argument, which I, I still don't necessarily know exactly how they stand on that. Um, anyway. Makes money. Uh, let's go back a little bit. Marvel at Mola. So the screen, because it's darker than it was when we started. Spending three minutes of his last Jedi day, analysis though. saying, I don't like to get political, but film thinks war profiteering bad and child slavery bad, and that is bad because Disney makes money. As it goes, Mula is almost scared to bring up any wider context from which to view a film. You don't get to call anyone else scared when you can't even so, come to a call where there's three people in it. This is a point with evidence. His point is that I'm scared to bring up a wider context, and he's going to play a clip for it. This is interesting to me. Disney makes money. As it goes, Mula is almost scared to bring up any wider context from which to view a film. He gets rather flustered when she implies that the artifacts were discovered and corrects her. These things were not paid for by this woman's ancestors. They were stolen just like they stole everything else. <clears throat> the only lens Mula... So, um, he thinks that that's me saying I'm too scared to uh, present my perspective on whether or not uh, Killmonger is right, I suppose, in that he's saying that white people have stolen everything they have that's from artifacts and stuff. Um, precisely the point of my channel, it doesn't matter if I think he's right or wrong. I am saying with that clip, it is really awkward to shove that into your character, into your movie. Um, it's, it's almost like you're trying to make some kind of meta commentary. I'm not 100% sure of what the film wants to do with that. There's a lot of those lines. It's really awkward to listen to as someone who would find it... It's, to explain this to you, Jack, um, it's like watching someone review a film and they go on a Trump rant randomly. It's, you, <laughs> you, you just, you're like, okay, that just happened. So when I have a character being like, white people fucking stole everything that they got, I'm like, okay, moving right. on. Um, sure. 
So it's not but about more. me being scared to address these things. Whether or not he's accurate is irrelevant. It's really awkward to hear from the film because it's supposed to be a fucking movie. Like, are they through. trying to say that you're not getting political enough in your videos? Possibly. Well, I you know, the point if he was, was clear. political in the, if, if he was it, political it, in the opposite direction. direction. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's good to be political in my direction, but I'll be Stood political in, in the way I don't like. Yeah, there's, there's so many ways to go about this, but apparently I'm scared to go into a wider uh, lens or something like that. I think that's what he said, which, again, it's just like, sure, Jack, whatever you say, man. Plies of the absurd. Artifacts like, were right. discovered and corrects her. These things were not paid for by this woman's ancestors. They were stolen just like they stole everything else. <clears throat> the only lens Smaller really cares to... And that's a recurring joke, by the way, because there's a lot of lines. Uh, the col colonist... Colonizer? That's the one, right? That's another thing that happens in yeah. the movie that's just like, ooh, okay. It's just weird considering Wakanda was never colonized. <laughs> it doesn't even make sense in universe. Yeah. Women's ancestors, they were I mean, stolen they just like they... Saw the, you know, the rest of... What, what, there would have been colonized places near Wakanda, surely. I mean, oh, you're it, suggesting it that she would not. be able to draw the... Ross is American, and the original Americans would have colonized the Native Americans. But the original Wakandans, co what? What? I'm just excited for him to say Wakanda because I don't think he said. <laughs> We're nearly there. I think. <laughs> oh, it's Infinity War first, isn't? No, no, this is the. Oh fuck, Still I can't remember. Apparently, Jack is waiting for me to explain how my subhuman joke doesn't make me mad. Wait, you don't. You don't make me mad. mad. You don't seem mad. Well, I'm, I mean, I'm Is he asking for you irritated. to justify the claim, or...? I don't know. I don't know if... I mean, I'll give... I don't really want to give him benefit of the doubt. It doesn't even matter if you're mad or not. I mean, I mean honestly, I... We already, I he, has, <laughs> he has huge issues with any of the insults or, or whatever you use. Oh, grow um, up. Yeah, well, no, maybe, what, maybe what I was going to get at is, like, Jack, like, you got to understand fundamentally, Wolf thinks you've done something much, much worse, so it doesn't really matter to him. I don't care about him. insults, Jack, because I'm an adult. I stopped caring about insults back in the eighth grade. What's his Twitter handle? I haven't, I haven't got, um... Jack Saint, I think? Or Lacking Saint? At stupid cunt. <gasps> <laughs> you can't say that. That's an insult, and that makes people feel bad. Uh oh. I'll give as I get. You know, I don't care if you say insults because Mahler. I mean, the first time <laughs> that I ever spoke to Mahler, he insulted me, and that's how we became friends. I don't care about insults. Yeah, I care like, we don't you, care. I care when you lie about people, when you are very disingenuous about them, you misrepresent them misrepresent them and take them out of context that is much worse that is infinitely worse than yeah. calling someone stupid or subhuman or a retard yeah. grow up you would he would apply the exact same criticism back to you would say you need to grow up and stop using those insults oh come on it's a word well this is the thing this would be the it would get to a discussion about ethics and morals and they're not gonna win because they've done something much worse Nobody's gonna say that calling you stupid is worse than misrepresenting you to an audience. It's like, hey, chat, it's way more damaging. Chat, chat. What's worse, um, insulting someone or lying about someone? Yeah, I mean, I would think everyone over twelve would probably say that it's it's worse to lie about somebody because that's something, that's a substantive thing. That God, I want to put them in like one of those Call of Duty Modern Warfare Two lobbies where all like the eight year old British kids are like swearing at them. I want to. I want to see way. like. <laughs> I want to see how long it takes for them to like break down and start break crying. Solving. So I, I just want to say the fact that you have insulted them is just. It feels like they're using it as a way to like weasel out of responding to the arguments you've made. Like of course, because they don't actually have an argument. They're saying, yeah. they're saying mean things about us. Why should we listen to the things they're saying? You don't have. You don't have to listen to the insult. You can, however, you can listen to like the proof that we've demonstrated live that the things that you say are misrepresentations of positions you could respond to that in some way but i'm not gonna hold my breath on that so let's uh we'll cut back context in context from which to view a film he gets rather flustered when she implies that the artifacts were discovered and corrects her these things were not paid for by this woman's ancestors they were stolen just like they stole everything else <clears throat> The only lens Mauler really cares to explore is his own, what he calls the objective analysis. 
I would say it's two lenses, objective and then my own personal lens, and I'm not sure that you can consider an objective lens a lens, but whatever, I think lens in this scenario is kind of a way of seeing things or how you look at something, I guess. Yeah, um, and I've st stood by this for a while. Anyone is capable of being objective and it's not beholden to anyone. As in, someone claiming something is objective doesn't mean it's specifically absolutely objective. It depends on what they've said. But everyone is capable of making objective statements. And that, again, could be a difference in how we approach quote-unquote worldviews. But, uh... Yeah, but you can do it. Or the robot. It's kind of like structuralism, except Mauler just takes it on assumption that whatever he observes as so, bad um, is let me fact pause it here. When he mentions the robot, if nobody watched that stream, I don't think they'd really know what he'd be talking about here. Yeah, um, unfortunately, I regret using the robot as an example because uh, so many people who don't disagree with me have misused what I intended for it. Um, the purpose of the robot was to try and help Just Right understand the concept of being objective. So... As far as he's concerned, right, a human cannot make an objective claim or opinion, let's say. So what I tried to say to him was, you're saying it's by them being human intrinsically prevents it. So let's create a non-human entity that can respond to these questions so that when they come out with an answer and you say, okay, that is an objective opinion because that person is not human. Then I'm like, so what if I said that exact same thing as he did? That yes, was going to be like the conclusion. It's like thinking of hypothetical people to criticize your work in order to improve it. Yeah. You would use the hypothetical robot to make sure that a story was airtight or that and things were consistent. Instead of understanding that, people like Jack, Eric, and whoever else have taken it as Mola thinks that the robot represents a formula for judging film and that we all put the film through the robot and it's not Mola when Mola doesn't realize that the robot was him all along. And I'm like, that's not even close to what the purpose of that was, but nice try you're confused that's you my know, conclusion of this video I, really i just want to say that out of everyone that we have ever talked to or discussed or criticized these two are by far and away the worst like, i'm getting that vibe we're, we're not worse even than the way through <laughs> worse than movie bob worse than downward thrust worse than patrick worse than cinema sins worse than major lee worse than shinobi worse than joseph anderson worse than that guy on discord like <laughs> Oh, not him. I'd say they're better than me. <laughs> I was gonna say it's a, it's above J level. Come on. Well, you're you're an ally now. We don't need to <laughs> include you. Um, let's draw him back a little bit. Like, man, oh, this, woman, this makes me almost like want to apologize, to Patrick. Sisters, they were stolen. <laughs> we're so, Patrick, we're so sorry. We thought that you were that bad. You are, but we had no <laughs> idea the scale that we would be dealing with into the future. And just like they stole everything else <clears throat> the only lens Mauler really cares to explore is his own what he calls the objective analysis or the robot it's kind of like structuralism except Mauler just takes it on assumption that whatever he observes as bad is factually and objectively bad with no deeper consideration well like well let's see if he has an example we don't care about oh. how we feel about these things we're talking about what they are and what they do uh-huh and if not, that the viewer can. Oh, that's not a very. That doesn't help that you at all. Does wow. That doesn't. That doesn't what help what you did that have to do all. with what he said? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let's try that again. Let's, let's, let's give him another shot. Covered and corrects her. These things were not paid for by this woman's ancestors. They were stolen just like they stole everything else. Hmm. <clears throat> The only lens Mauler really cares to explore is his own, what he calls the objective analysis, or the robot. It's kind of like structuralism, except Mauler just takes it on assumption that whatever he- Let me look up structuralism. That's when you don't like structures. Damn. Be careful, uh, they're gonna tweet about how you don't know what that is off the top of your Therefore your entire argument yeah. is invalid. <laughs> Yeah, so structuralism, uh, a method of interpretation and analysis of aspects of human cognition, behavior, culture, and experience that focuses on relationships of contrast between elements in a conceptual system <gasps> that reflects patterns underlying a superficial diversity. The doctrine that structure is more important than function. Diversity? It's come full circle. Yeah. Um... I mean, he didn't elaborate on it, so I guess it's irrelevant anyway. Objective yeah, analysis, or the robot. It's kind of like structuralism, except Mauler just takes on assumption that whatever is, right? he observes as bad is yeah, factually... Yeah, you just told us.
I wonder how many people in his audience knew what he was referring to when he said structuralism. I would yeah, hedge a bet I've that it's like 10% at most. Yeah, it's like, if I don't know what the word is, I'll Google only... it and find out what the word is. I think even people who've heard of structuralism would still be like, I wonder exactly what he means by that. But he just skips over it. And you could be like, oh, Mola, typical Mola asking for the video to be longer. And I'm like... I think it would have benefited the video to be a bit longer in he that moment. He wants us to define words most people probably don't know. Ugh. But that would be... He's gonna he's gonna tweet about that. Dumb. The fact that you've just said that. Any sniper Guys, possible. I'm the, yeah. I'm the only one he hasn't sniped specifically yet on Twitter. I think that is a pretty clear conclusion that I'm the best. <laughs> You're the objective one. Um, yes. Now they're gonna I mean, snipe by, at you. By the is way, this... um, uh, Jack, right. The, I'm reading through your Twitter, right? And it's fine for you to disagree. Of course you're going to disagree with someone criticizing you. That's only natural. But it doesn't seem like you're really... Into like, doesn't seem like you're really getting the points that are trying to be put across, is my impression of what you're tweeting. Wow, Jack, you're just not kinda, understanding something? You're just, oh, kinda, just kind of sniping at random little bits without looking at you know the overall arguments being made. Um, it's... It's it's people are only gonna see this as an argument if they already agree with you. I uh, don't have anything to add to that, so let's. Yeah, I mean the 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 point I'm making about structuralism is that I it's fine to when you use words like that. It just generally helps your point if you Activate. let us know what it is. You know, I wouldn't assume that people knew what structuralism is. Yeah, it'd be nice in case before, in know. case you're sort of using it for a specific purpose. You could at least let us know okay. what it is. Like, if you ask Jack, what do you mean by structuralism? And then he explains a thing that lasts just about a paragraph. I'd be like, do you mind putting that in the script, that paragraph, instead of saying it's like structuralism? Or just have it, again, I don't know, he's not going to listen to me if I suggest he makes the video longer because that's like acid to him. He should be more, he should be more erudite. Someone said, um, Jay is like Jar Jar Binks. Everyone thinks it's the worst edition, but he's actually behind it all. <laughs> He does own yeah. the show. Analysis. No, please don't robot. say JJ Binks. Don't <laughs> JJ <laughs> J. J. Binks. Don't do that. JJ Binks. JJ Binks. JJ Binks. So sorry, JJ. Why did so, I try to discourage? Dude, that art is gonna come. If you've got your face <laughs> on screen, someone's making you into JJ Binks. <laughs> They're just gonna have your face, but with those weird eyes and the oh, ears. poking out the top. If someone does do that, oh, it is becoming oh. my avatar. Bayowin, oh, they... Bayowin, I know you're in the chat. Jay, they blur Jay out his is the eyes. key to all of this. And they move his eyes to the top of his head. This is literally more offensive to me than uh, any playground insult that could have been thrown at me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm just looking out for Bayowin. I know that he's gonna he's gonna Ooh, hop right on this. But it's kind of like structuralism, except Mula just takes it on assumption that whatever he observes as God, this this fan art. Is I don't gonna, actually. Yeah, like, I don't. I don't know enough about structuralism to be like, oh, so you have to know what it is. You have to have heard Activate. of it and you have to understand it and you have to contrast that with something else. It's like, I don't, most people probably not. Just, if, to I find it amusing. Song exists. He says it takes it on assumption that, um, that what I've, what I've, blah, 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 is, is objective. And I'd be like, okay, so the system is I look at the scene and I detect the things that are in the scene. I present them to an audience. The audience say, yeah, that was in the scene, and the conclusion is completely coherent. Or someone goes, but you missed the red arm thing in, in TFA. And then I look at that, I run the information again, and I'm like, fuck, I was wrong. Or, yep, that criticism stands the test of time, which the majority of the stuff in my TLJ stuff does. Um, the idea that I nitpick a movie when you're telling me that I missed the fucking fact that there's a red arm... As, as the biggest criticism, like, breakdown of my TLJ, because he doesn't talk about the TLJ critique again. It's only Eric, I think, that talks about it now. It blows Someone my said, mind how much self-awareness you do not have. Someone said, if somebody did explain structuralism to you, then you'd probably just ignore it as being silly and political. Um, no. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, I will say. Odd, but no. I don't I think say. it's silly. I just never heard of it. So Misa to... won a rhino milk. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I will say. Jack, your Twitter avatar is great. Um, just change, <laughs> change your content and keep that avatar. I, I would agree. be my advice. I like his Twitter avatar. 
of analysis or the robot. It's kind of like structuralism, except Mauler just takes it on assumption that whatever he observes as bad is factually and objectively bad with no deeper consideration. We don't care about how we feel about these things, we're talking about what they are and what they do. I mean, that, uh -huh. that example specifically and goes against not, his the, point. That's, he's yeah, saying, he, that's what we're saying, he's I think. <laughs> yeah, he's removing his feelings from the equation, he's trying to find the truth, essentially. Yeah, he, he says, because... oh, Mauler only cares about what he feels, and then plays a clip of, of Mauler saying, I don't actually care about how I feel. It's about... That is interesting, yeah. And, well, is he, that the best example he could find to prove I think, this? I think he thinks that that clip proves that I'm delusional. Well... Uh, okay. As, if, as if to say what I've just said isn't even possible, to talk about it without my feelings or whatever. Maybe. I'm giving you as much benefit of the doubt as I can at this point. Uh, the, other, the other interesting sort of aspect is that, uh, <laughs> I don't know, the, the idea that I can be wrong is something that I often and loudly proclaim, but like he's, there's no element of that here that uh, he's, he's letting in. and Because there's this thing that goes around that objective means 100% undeniably correct. Um, and so if you conflate that impression with what I'm saying, you'll get I hate everything's impression of me where he was like, fucking hell, it's really childish and pretentious and condescending to assume that you've got the best take on a thing. And then I'm like, I hate everything. Where did you even get this from? And he's like, well, I haven't seen any videos. And I was like, so where did you get it from? And he's like, eh, quitting. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, that makes sense. How does it feel knowing that there are people out there who actually exist whose entire impression of you is what Quentin has said about you? Well, it, is it not a testament Ducks. to why we have to respond to these Tizmi videos? Yeah. I mean, it is, but still. Oh, don't don't put Jar Jar Milk in the chat. Jar Jar Milk. You can't give them, you can't, like, tell them Ooh, don't do it. Squeeze the titties. I tried to I tried to save them from looking up xenomorphs on Google Images and they I did still that. didn't do that. I know. I did that and it, I, it, I did not find anything bad until like I found something slightly dodgy and I was incredibly disappointed by how right, I'm gonna go to xenomorph was. images. Um Did you spell I, xenomorph correctly? Probably -E not, but I know, of course I did, because if, if I didn't, Google would have picked up on it. Hmm. I mean, um, there's nothing really. There's Bite Man, Batman, Bite Man. Bite there's Batman, Batman. <laughs> fighting a uh, Xenomorph. Um, H.R. Geiger pictures. Um... Well, I don't think that's what I was being looked for. Consideration. We don't care about how we feel about these things. We're talking about what they are and what they do. Uh huh. And if not, that the viewer can immediately distinguish gotcha. between his opinions and his objective analysis. But between his opinions and his objective analysis, it's all opinions. Some of them are objective. Went over this in the TFA video. He even knows how um, how I define all these words, and he's like not n not approaching this honestly. He's not like, okay, so Mola refers to this as objective, this as that, and this is why he's wrong because of these contradictions, and then moves on, he's just immediately like, that Mola sees himself as, as making um, objective criticism versus opinions. To imply, you know, because it obviously leads into the idea that the audience would be like, this is fucking all his opinion. Be like, I don't know, would have been nice if you threw that in, because I know he's seen the video. Uh -huh. And if not, that the viewer can immediately distinguish between his opinions and his objective analysis. But why am I chattering on when there's cases to study? Let's have a look at Infinity War. So, we got- I like this part of the video. Length of video, 52 minutes. Time spent summarizing Infinity War, 36 minutes. Time spent summarizing previous Marvel films, 10 minutes. Time spent drawing actual conclusions about Infinity War, 6 minutes. Um, and then he's got comments that are basically saying, wow, this is just a plot summary. This is, this is all just a plot summary, plot summary, plot summary. Um, so this is probably a good time to sort of talk about the whole idea of plot summary, but let's let him talk a little bit, I guess. Reality is awesome. All right, everyone, uh, chat, go to Jay's channel and find Beowin some references of Jay's face so he knows what to draw. <laughs> and, po and post them in 
I guess this is in your Discord, Mauler. Uh, is it EFAP Podcast Talk? No, 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 no. Post it in, uh, to my Twitter. Just at me on Twitter with it. I post them in the um, the Discord after, usually. No, no, no. Beowen's trying to get a reference for him. Oh. Is the EFAP Podcast Talk in your Discord? Oh, yeah, I'm, yeah. Post I'm not in there. Yeah. yeah so, so everyone go to Jay's channel. Like, open up a new tab. I'll just and... change my avatar to a very real picture of me. A very real. <laughs> Very real. Is it actually be, real? Is it going to be very real, though? Yes. Are you sure? It's not going to be Thrump, is it? It's already Thrump. I wouldn't have to change it if it was well, Thrump. Thrump. There's so many different styles of Thrump, though. Thrump. Thrump. See, I was going to make a joke here, but I, I, I'm not sure what it's going to be yet. So Thrump. Just, just give me some time, and I will decide what it is I really am on the inside and make that Thrump. my avatar. Uh, people just go to Jay's channel and put the. If you're in Mauler's Discord, then put the J pictures in the EFAP chat, and then Beowen will make JJ Binks. There you go. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna let this play. Reality is often disappointing. I mean, it's Infinity War. All his fans had probably already seen it. It's... And no, those last... So, uh, Wait, so I'm... he can't make a video if his fans have already seen it? I'm actually in favor of people having watched the movie before watching my videos on them anyway. So Were you don't... saying a plot... I think you're saying a plot summary is unnecessary if your fans have already seen it. Yeah, is... which... Clearly, me and him have different ideas on what the purpose of a plot summary is. Yeah, and there's a lot of people who, like, are, might be interested in knowing about the movie, or who want to get caught up. Or maybe they just don't have the time, or they're not that interested in you know, going to the theater who and all remember that. Remember but... scenes the way that they are. Exactly the disappearing knife. Who noticed oh. that the first time? What percentage of people? Yeah, so like it's just it, well, we're we're gonna jump into that in a moment. I mean, it's Infinity War. All his fans have probably already seen it. It's... And no, those last six maybe. minutes really don't go anywhere. What? All That's not even an argument. The... What is that? Well, just so. Keep, keep it in, in the air. The last six minutes don't go anywhere. Sad bits made him sad. By the way, video the funny bits. The sad bits made him sad. The funny bits made, made him, him lol. lol. And concludes that the film is objectively good because it's good at elaborating on stuff from previous Marvel films. So interestingly, I never say objectively in the video. I do in my critiques because I'm more serious about the analysis on that. Uh, a praise, yeah. as commented on in the video, so I know you've seen it is um, an assessment that doesn't cover any flaws, just like how a rage is an assessment that doesn't cover any uh, positives, I suppose you could say. <gasps> um, <laughs> uh, Jay, someone described what you looked like in the chat. Oh, this would be flattering, right? Yes. Um, he look looks like than lacking saints, so don't worry. <laughs> well, he, he said um, he looks like Garth from Wayne's World, but born with cerebral palsy. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, That's a playground insult, which means I can't talk to you anymore. Nice. <laughs> Wolf, you fucked it up. Um, You're I've, changed, I've changed and... my avatar to a very real picture of me. This is what I... Don't insult am. my manager. This is, this, is what I, <laughs> this is what I feel like on the inside. Uh, what you feel like and what you are are two different things. Bounty Ball Studios said, Molly, you actually say that it was biased. So in everything. the video, I say this video is biased. So, um... Just FYI, for, uh, you know, it'll be relevant. All of this is going to be relevant. That's a mark of objective quality, by the way. Sucks if you wanted to enjoy it as its own movie. So, uh, the suggestion that Infinity War is keeping in, in consistency and developing the films that came before it is a mark of objective quality, and he said pity if you wanted to just see it on its, as its own movie. I don't know what, what he idiot. thinks that he's what saying. Absolute I mean, um, what what absolute idiot goes into Infinity War without watching the other movies and thinking it's what, going to make who sense? Who's this guy with the uh, magic? My, flat, my flatmate did that. I mean, come on, that is that's retarded. He watched an, a Marvel summary of all the other movies first. Um, I'm not sure why that's how he decided to do it. Enjoyed it. I mean, <laughs> that he liked it. I mean, go and watch uh, Captain America: Winter, and try and tell me it makes sense without watching. The first Captain America, or Iron Man two, or Thor three, or Civil War, or literally any sequel to anything ever. Are people in Come the chat on. saying I'm objectively gay. <laughs> Are you? Um, I'm biased. 
It's you not, are? It's not the There's same. three of us I now. Am. Are you serious? All three of you are bi? I'm the minority. Oh my gosh, so are you saying Probably that both... You're the diversity hire here. I'm the Wait, so <laughs> both Wolf and Jay and Mahler are gay. Wait, what? Yes. Wow, that's incredible. I can't believe I'm the only straight person in the room. This is mm. kind of awkward. That Normally, I don't, this doesn't normally happen, but I, I had no idea this whole Gay is implied. I had no idea this whole <laughs> was what I heard there. Mm. Uh, right, anyway, so yeah, let's just play this out because we're going to be jumping over to my Infinity War video and then comparing his statements. Films. That's a okay. mark of objective quality, by the way. Sucks if you wanted to enjoy it as its own movie. Now, as I said before, it's not the Objectivity length of Maul's content in and of itself. Wait, sorry, I think we've probably gone far enough, actually. So, yeah, he summarized it as... um. The sad bits make me sad, the funny bits make me lol, and the film is objectively good because it's good at elaborating on stuff from previous Marvel movies, and the majority of it is either summarizing plot or summarizing plot from previous films. That's his take. I'm not necessarily suggesting at this very moment that it's an inaccurate take, because it could be down to semantics, but we're gonna check out... Uh, six no. minutes of my video on Infinity War? Um, because he specified six minutes, and it's going from... The moment the plot summary Damn. ends. Um, well, sorry. It's confusing to what he's referring to, because the final section goes from 34 minutes onwards. And he said six minutes, so I don't exactly know what he's talking about. So I'm assuming it's the part... I don't know. Well, the, the section I'm showing you, it, it's going to be relevant in terms of um, what I assume he's trying to say. But yeah, this feels embarrassing sometimes, because I'm just like showing my video, but the point is to sort of explain why he's uh, got a bad take on it, not just to be like, guys, watch my video. Um, so here goes. Uh, according to my timestamp, it ends at 50-50, so this one's the longest take. It's horrific. The powerful, intelligent yeah. and heroic vision dies as a man. But perhaps the most impactful moment goes to a particularly powerful road being drawn to its close. Tony Stark has been through a lot in his series of films, finding that he must balance his urge to protect Earth while living the life of a man. Well, what if I didn't? If you didn't? Yeah. You mean when you finished? Leading him to protect his power, nuke his power, automate his power, submit his power, and finally, to keep it as insurance, to maintain a safety net if ever he or his loved ones were attacked, but never in pursuit. Once he knows that this coming attack is what he's been waiting for for six years, what sent him into anxiety attacks, what has consumed him since he saw his vision, he fights it to the point of leaving Earth's solar system and to the realization that Pepper, the person he loves the most, will never come between him and his will to prevent the suffering on a universal scale. This is very much the reflection of Thanos himself. With all that happening, it's tough to realize that Tony has also dealt with the fact that his dad didn't love him as much as his work, his mother, or himself. Hell, he loved Cap more. Tony then sees the tape in Iron Man 2 that tells him his dad considered him his greatest achievement and his work was all intended to be left to him. His dad absolutely loved him. Tony couldn't share any real moments of closure or love with his father despite his desperation because they were killed by Hydra in an attempt to steal his formula. This destroyed what made Tony so callous as a man in the first place. He needed to reevaluate the man he'd become. Moving on to Civil War, he treats Peter as his surrogate son, brings him in only to tell him to leave the second he is visibly hurt. Tony is looking to ignite that lost flame to get that relationship he's pined for his whole life, taking a positive step in that direction. In Homecoming, he keeps him in what is essentially a box. Despite Spider-Man's raw strength, he only wants him fighting low-life criminals because it's safe, and he's a child. Mr. Parker. Got a sec? Uh, uh, I'm actually at school. No, you're not. Nice work in DC. My dad never really gave me a lot of support, and I'm just trying to uh, break the cycle of shame. Uh, I'm kind of in the middle of something right Don't now. Don't cut me off when I'm complimenting you. Great things are about to happen. What is that? Uh, I'm at band practice. That's odd. Happy told me you quit band six weeks ago. When Peter succeeds, he congratulates him, shares with him that he always wanted this kind of relationship with his father, that he's proud of what he's doing. But then, to subvert Tony's security, he lies while trying to get involved in something Tony told him to stay away from. Peter wanted to go behind Tony's back and avoid what was essentially his protection, his care. I tell you to stay away from this. Instead, you hacked a multi-million dollar suit so you could sneak around behind my back doing the one thing I told you not to do. 
Those weapons were out there, and I tried to tell you about it, but you didn't listen. None of this would have happened if you had just listened to me. Do you know that I was the only one who believed in you? Everyone else said I was crazy to recruit a 14-year-old kid. He was furious, and he took the gear back. Peter didn't deserve to have it if he wanted to thrill-seek. But Peter saves the day and Iron Man's actual equipment from Vulture without a suit and reasserting that he only wants to do good. Lying was the way that he saw an opportunity for it, and that's why he did it. Peter is reinstated and their relationship is strong once again. In Infinity War, he decides to help because he can. Despite Iron Man's attempt to stop him, he even goes on what can be assumed as a one-way trip because he wants to help people. What if somebody had died tonight? Different story, right? Because that's on you. And if you died... I feel like that's on me. I don't need that on my conscience. Tony wants him gone because the last thing he can bear is watching the kid get hurt. And so, echoing the dream he has in the opening about a child with a woman he loves called Morgan taken away in a moment, Tony has to watch as Peter is slowly turned to ash in his arms, begging to stay with him. All in a handful of seconds, Tony loses one of his Avengers. He sees an innocent boy trying to save lives perish. But most importantly, he has that new and loving fatherly connection severed again, and there was nothing he could do to stop it. But it falls on him. Everything falls on Tony Stark's conscience as he was alive to stop it and he couldn't. Tony now loses the son he never had, the team he built to protect the world and the universe itself. Nothing he could build or prepare could prevent it. After six years of it festering in his head, his nightmare has broken through. Tony is frozen, unable to emote. He couldn't accept it before, and now it's real. Everything has fallen apart. This is it. Pair all of this with Tom Holland's heart-wrenching performance selling a Peter Parker that has begun to feel death coming after watching all the people he just saved turn to ash. I don't feel so good. You're alright. I don't, I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's happening. I don't want to go. I don't want to go. Sir, please. Please, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. He begs Tony not to let him go again and again while failing to stand, fading away in his arms. The scene was incredible. The film itself was a culmination of many running stories and characters dealing with very human grief and disturbing events, reaching conclusions simultaneously that could rival any kind of television series finale, covering strong patterns of family, love, sacrifice, and death. Characters giving in to the destruction of the universe to save the suffering of their brothers or sisters, families coming to save the day only to be torn to shreds, many characters having to sacrifice what they have come to love for the greater good and the death, the rampant, cold death of so many beloved characters. The credits of this film play like an obituary, the audience was dead silent, a respectful end to a defeating story that still has more to come. This began with Iron Man, but the original Avengers revealed the potential of this series. Those Avengers are a large portion of what remains for the heroes, each dealing with their own issues while being set up to save the day, to pass over the Marvel mantle to the new heroes that have been lost. This isn't just a celebration of one film and its achievement to bring together so many other properties with weight behind them. This is a celebration of what has been accomplished with 10 years of character writing. 10 years of trying to create something that people could become enamored with. This spans completely different personality types, completely different plots, completely different settings, completely different worlds. Directors having their style blasted through with writing having space and quality to shine. Incredible performances combined with special effects to support this comic book world's realism. All of this took talent, time, effort, and passion. Marvel should be fucking proud of themselves. Drama and comedy are a tough balance, but throughout Marvel's series they have shown they're going to shift it in one way or the other, with Infinity War being no exception. This is not an entirely morbid affair, and it does benefit from that. I'm Peter, by the way. That's a strange. Oh! using your made-up names, then I am Spider-Man. You said we are going to open Wakanda to the rest of the world. This is not what I imagined. What did you imagine? The Olympics? Maybe even a Starbucks? Cool. So cool. We have Rabbit, Tree, Squidward, Blanket of Death, Kick Names, and Take Ass. I am Steve Rogers, the baby of a pirate and an angel. What was she doing up there the whole time? I'm gonna blow that nutsack of a chin right off. And who could forget... Motherfucker! 
This film was an event, a triumph. Each of the crew and cast involved deserve a pat on the back for bringing a 10-year path to an incredible peak. I can't even tell you about all of the amazing details this film has, aside from what I've already discussed, nor will I share any flaws. I don't know if you noticed, but this assessment is extremely biased in one specific direction to complement my other recent work. In f and there we go. Man, apparently, uh, apparently Jack's uh, getting a little bent out of shape by the fact that we just watched all that. Yeah, he's, he's tweeted apparently that apparently not all of that was actual conclusions, apparently. Wow. Uh, so Apparently he meant six minutes to spread across the whole video. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Um, That's what he's tweeted. Whatever, Jack. Um, so the what do you think the overall point? Um, what? How, yeah. how, what, what do you think? What is your take on what you've just seen? My take is that I'd like you to narrate audio books, please. <laughs> My, I, th I think that what you're trying to get across here is that i think you almost said it I'm, i might just be re-quoting you because you kind of say it yourself this is a culmination of previously established events and if you don't bring those events you know to the forefront if you don't tell people this is what's happened this is what happened here it took us 10 years to get here and this is the result of all those things happening this is the payoff for all the setup for all the development so it is extremely important that all of that stuff that happened before is taken along with this. I don't know if anyone else wants to say anything. Because I was just going to say, like, uh, the idea, because that's just one of the sections. I do a character assessment for all of the strongest ones in the film from my perspective, which are Thanos, Thor, Iron Man, Vision. Um, and not necessarily because of Vision's relationship with Wanda, but Vision as a character himself, what he's gone through from Age of Ultron up to now. Um, and they were all basically, you could argue that I am recanting plot from previous films. You can do that, but I think it's dishonest, because there's a reason I'm presenting all of these specific events in a row, because they tell a very strong story that's been what you could call in the subtext, because of all of these events taking place, and these, these over because that conversation that Tony's having with Peter when he's on the barge, it's almost funny. But then when you actually listen to the words where he says, my relationship with my dad, like, he's going on about that, it's like, that's extremely important. But, um, and it informs so much of, of the arc that's happening. So it's, if you've missed it, I am presenting it again, and I'm explaining why it's important. That's the purpose of all of this. That's what the plot summary is doing. It's presenting this stuff to you, and then I explain to you why it's important. That's always been my goal. I'm not saying I nail it. That is the purpose. <laughs> um... <laughs> uh is this the twitter link this is uh this isn't the drawing it's like a preview though <laughs> oh my <laughs> god oh my jesus dear lord what an just, extremely... just just imagine when bea wins done it'll be even better what a palate cleanser that was from what we just watched <laughs> <laughs> um oof wow that is, um, that you are, your head is made out of, uh, ice cream. I'd say it's jelly. <laughs> <laughs> it's made out yeah, of I was, ice cream. I, I think you, uh, Bad bits. which is good because you're keeping cool. bones. Oh yeah, that's true. Ice cream doesn't have bones. Neither do ears or eyes. Hey, you can't say that ice cream doesn't have bones. That's the a generalization. <laughs> And just no, you okay, have fine, 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 I'll qualify that. No ice cream that I've ever eaten has had bones in it. And well, I, if, you're if just I not had eating ice cream, the right kind of ice cream. Well, clearly, if, if there was a bone, bone in my ice cream. ice cream, I would be surprised. I would have questions. Have you ever had? You ever been to Uganda? Uh, you like the bone in the ice cream. <laughs> I know the way to the bone ice cream. Yeah, if you do not like it, then you know the way to the TCBY down the street. <laughs> so, um. Again, by the way, he said that it, it doesn't really have any overall point. Like, that I thought was... the point was very clear. It was explicit. <laughs> yeah, you all, you pretty much say it verbatim. And to be honest, I haven't actually watched your unbridled praise video yet. That was the first time of me watching that. You're not a true fan. Oh, here's the thing. That was like, that made me, I, I'm, I'm sentimental deep down. And that made me get kind of misty eyed. Oh, Rex, Thanks, man. Yeah, that's, that's a compliment. Like, no, like that really, like thinking about the characters and that was really, really good. 
Um, so everyone yeah, type. Yeah. Everyone give Rags a hug in the chat. Everyone I don't know how press. You're doing. Everyone press F for my happiness. I'm gonna throw. My no, wait, wait. Out. Hashtag Happy Rags. <laughs> but no, I, I, have, I don't, I don't watch. Uh, there's a lot of videos I just don't watch. That's just one of them that I just haven't seen. But I am, a, I am a sensitive soul. Actually, I'm very sentimental. So am I. Um, I you, mean, you I, mean me, I, would, uh... I would argue I am too. But most people think that I don't have a subjective side to my fucking videos. Sorry. So this objective robot made me teary eyed. Yeah, and, I mean. Uh, you yeah, should you, see you... me when I watch the Lord of the Rings trilogy back to back, or when I, <laughs> <laughs> or when I play Ori in the Blind Forest. It's like, oh man, I feel like I need to punch somebody to feel like a man again. Oh man, that's toxic masculinity. Oh feelings. <laughs> Was I like being that. ironic? Was I not? You decide. <laughs> 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 you decide. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we'll we'll kick on. I think I've gone drawn it back enough so we can hear his points again now, having seen. Uh, that context. He observes as bad is factually and objectively bad with no deeper consideration. We don't care about how we feel oh, yeah, about these things, we're talking about guess. what they are. It's made him sad, the funny Ooh. bins have probably already seen it. It's... And no, those last six minutes really don't go anywhere. He said last six minutes, so he's clearly not talking about a collective six minutes. <coughs> That's true, actually. You yeah. can't claim Sorry, Jack. Then... You can't Sorry. change the past. <laughs> you can't the change video the story. Mula Mate. says the sad bits made him sad, the, the funny you bits made him lol, and Someone said he looks like a skinny TJ Kirk. <laughs> oh, that's oh, insulting. I mean, I kind of see it, yeah. Oh, yeah, I can see yeah, if you make I can, him, I can like, see that. Yeah, I can see, I can see yeah. that. I can just, see that. Yeah. yeah. Get him blonde hair. <laughs> that's hair insulting thing. to TJ. I don't know, because yeah. it's like over the side of his glasses, and then he's got the bun thingy up in the back. Going on? It's yeah, it's a, it's a strange hairdo. It is a strange it is, hairdo. Yeah, it's, it is unusual. Yeah. Don't sully I'm, TJ's name. They I'm said my hair was say, unusual. I don't like his hair, okay? I think it's a lot better than his argument. I think it's interesting <laughs> I think his hair is. I think his hair is actually better than his arguments. Not that that's a high bar, but... My I lack of hair is better than his argument. Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> Sorry, I didn't... Really, <laughs> so, dude, I, did I a would... creamy, creamy sheave? <laughs> He just said, uh, <laughs> "Hey, Baller and Wolf, I loved your Fallout 76 video." <laughs> <laughs> hey, Wolf, I like, I like this one. Hey, Baller and Wolf, I loved your Fallout 76 video. Here's money because you both deserve it for all the hard work. Love your boy, Creamy Sheep. <laughs> Employed. What a I'm great guy. Is, is he in on the meme at that point? Because that was in the Colonial Marine I'm stream. I'm sure he's it? a great guy, and. <laughs> You guys really deserve it. <laughs> so, back to bald people. Uh, Which I wait, am. Matthew just said he made a list of times he interpreted your content. That's what the six minutes is referring to, I think, at least. He said he just said the last six minutes. Like, we'll, we'll play it again. It's Infinity War. All his fans have probably already seen it. It's... And no, those last six minutes really don't go anywhere. Mueller said- And look what the visuals are. That's the, the shit I showed you guys, right? They don't go anywhere while you're talking about how the characters are affected across ten different movies. Yeah. This is what I mean. I was proud of my Infinity War video because it's a lot of passion because I, I am a MCU fanboy. Uh, despite the fact that I will absolutely tear the shit into the ones I don't like. I literally despise Iron Man 3. Like, but, um... I, I, I get totally invested in the Civil War is the peak for me. I, I, I was so invested in the, in that final fight and I'll, I'll try and make a video eventually to explain why I think it's so well put together. But um, this was something I took seriously, the Infinity War video. I was like, I want to really sure. make sure I explain why I think these are so amazing in terms of uh, arcs that go over so much time. Um, but yeah, this is his take on, on that. Probably already seen it. It's... And no, those last six minutes really don't go anywhere. Mula says wow. the sad bits made him sad, the funny bits made him lol, and concludes that the film is objectively good because it's good at elaborating on stuff from previous Marvel films. Wow. That's a mark of objective so, quality. I am so, so sorry, Jack, that that's what you took away from this. I am, I am legit, I legitimately pity you. I'm so sorry that that's, that's how you, what you took away from that. I'm only sorry that he has such a 
dense fucking brain. I mean, holy shit. How do you come away from that last six minutes thinking that there was nothing there? Jeez. I mean, I, I feel like I would have to, like, shoot myself in the head to be on par with Jack at this point. Not a rooster's right. I'm sick of Jack and Eric. Let's just watch Mahler's videos. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, we could have sucks a meme if you break. wanted to enjoy a meme break. Meme break. Wait, is its own movie. <laughs> now, Bring in Jared. Said that. Wait, sorry. Yep. Him lol, and concludes that the film is objectively good because it's good at elaborating on stuff from previous Marvel films. That's a mark of objective quality, by the way. Sucks if you wanted to enjoy it as its own movie. Now, as I said before, it's you not can. the length. Yeah, you can. You can. I don't That's know what you're talking about, Jack. Things. Like, yeah, you can. <laughs> Consistency I mean, how many people saw for a character War? is objectively good craftsmanship for storytelling. If you're not following this, like, whatever. Yeah, you can enjoy it regardless. Even if you, even if we never agreed on what the objective quality of alluding to previous things was, that has no impact on whether or not you can enjoy it. Do you think that every person who went to see Infinity War who liked it had seen all of those movies beforehand? Plus, that's even if he's right, that's not a counter to anything you've said. Exactly, they're two different things. Oh yeah, well I liked it. ...of Mauler's content in and of itself that's the problem. In fact, maybe it isn't a problem if Mauler just wants to use this format, it's up to him. It might be incredibly tedious for- It's generous of him to give you that. Yeah, at least yeah, Jack gave you the green light to use your own format. <laughs> thanks, Jack. I sure said thanks, Dad. Wanted thanks, to enjoy Jack. it as its own movie. Now, as I said before, it's not the length of Mauler's content in and of itself that's the problem. In fact, maybe it isn't a problem. Jack said the farmer of straw men. <laughs> 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 it's like a whole field of straw men. <laughs> With these, I shall build my enemies. <laughs> Problem. If Mauler just wants to use this format, it's up to him. It Thanks, might be Dad. incredibly tedious for me, but certainly many people may like it. Well, it's many people not my... may like it. <laughs> it know, seems like he agrees with the possible. whole subjective objective thing, doesn't he? Well, yeah, yeah, some people may almost. like it. Um, some people like it. You he know, says... some people is in like about 70,000 more subs than you have. Well, here's the thing. He can't say it or else he'll lose all, all of his friends. He'll, he'll turn can't, into enemies now. You can't, talk, you can't make this about numbers, especially since he has more subs than me. Um, I, like, I like what, Eric? How, wait, how big? Who is... Well, what, how big is his channel? I never heard of him before. 42k. Oh, how? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen his other videos uh, or Eric's, like I said. Uh, yeah, I don't maybe, know the quality of their the channels. I'm just not impressed with what I've seen. Yeah, literally maybe the other 42K. ones aren't shit, so who knows. I literally just hit 42k in the process of this stream. Remember, this is this people guy, who subscribed. I just Yay. want to remind everyone, this guy made a half-hour video about why he doesn't like the NPC meme. Aww. Oh. Oh, okay. I like um, the NPC meme, I find it funny. Th thanks for kind of helping the point of a meme <laughs> by making yeah. a video devoted well, on why you don't like it. It's kind of the same thing as when H Bomber guy was like, you know, the soy boy meme is not even accurate. It's like, oh, that's, you don't, you don't need, I mean, I'll admit his point about uh, Paul Joseph Watson was really funny, but. Don't you mean did, Paul Joseph Watson? There were people what making that sign. Or Joe Paul Watson. Joe, Joe, yeah. Joe Paul <laughs> Joe, Joe, yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's kind of a meme that the left doesn't get memes, but... Yeah, yeah. Prove a meme wrong, factually, and then the meme dies, and it's like, that's not what happens. No. <laughs> never Literally what happens. every political <laughs> orientation says other political orientations don't get memes. I'm not... No, I actually, I think that the left it is meme From what I've understood, it's more said that the left don't, but it's not like the right never fucking have a moment where they misunderstand a meme. Like, obviously that's gonna happen too. The, uh, yeah, the left the can't NPC, meme as a But like, the NPC well, meme, the as I understood but... it, is applied to anybody who barks like a political, or a response that, that's usually in a political conversation. It could apply to someone on the right or the left. But right, the left got super yeah. offended by it. And it's like, oh, so it's implying that they, they're like, this is already about us. That's all, how I always understood it. I was like, it, but it's on the right as well. Like, it's, they, they can do it. You know, the, the right say SJW, SJW. That would be the NPC yeah. vision. 
Tim Pool's done some good videos on memes and how they spread on the internet and the left, and it's it's interesting. But I think there's a lot of truth to the generalization. Imagine making an entire video about why you don't like a fucking meme. <laughs> well, maybe it's a good video. We haven't seen it. You don't know. Yeah, well, really oh good. my god! If, it, if, if this video is indicative of everything <laughs> we've made, I don't maybe, think I want to. It'd be a good video. In Memes fact, implied, maybe it isn't a problem if Mola just wants to use this format. It's up to him. It might be incredibly tedious for me, but also don't fret. Uh, this video is going to get much faster because. Um... Eric's, uh, once Eric comes back on, a lot of the stuff that he says is very agreeable or quickly, uh, quick to approach. Do you have the sensors ready? <laughs> Don't spoil anything. I gotta Certainly make sure you remember, we gotta protect like our- it. It's not mine to write off as an artistic choice. As the format from which to hang the argument for your case, the interesting part of arguing about art, not so much. At least not the way this time is utilized. Thanks for qualifying that. Oh. Lost, That's just fantastic. I believe this is the qualification. Yeah, but this is not... Okay, I'll have to explain why this isn't a qualification. Let me play it in full so it's not said that we didn't. From which to hang the argument for your case, the interesting part of arguing about art. Not so much. At least not the way this time is utilized. Get lost, That's Funny. just fantastic. Dude, me from the wizards. That's just That's a funny. fantastic comedic line. Uh, he's from space. He came here to steal a necklace from a wizard. Uh, brilliant. It's so, funny. So, uh, you say good three uh, times. That means your video is bad. Um, you may or may not know. In my rage videos, I usually have a portion where I say that's just silly at least four times around that in a row. I go, yeah. I state a thing and I say that's just silly. And um, someone could be like, but Mola, you're not qualifying why they're silly. You're just saying they're silly. And I'd be like, oh yeah, I think that they're so silly that I don't need to qualify and it's a part of the entertainment uh, factor. So I understand that you have a valid perspective on that. But again, these um, these are unbridled rages. They're supposed to be. Entertainment first, running through a several several sort of perspectives. So me asking questions in a funny manner is actually a part oh, of the entertainment value. He was now, the one who made the sky high as fascist video. I haven't seen that. Oh, um, okay, I've heard of it. So in the praise really video, retarded. when I was constructing the praise video, I was like, how can I make it an inverse of rage in more ways than one? And I was like, well, you know the parts where I say that's just silly. What can I say instead? And I was like, what about that's just fantastic. You know, just just declaring that the thing is good without explaining it. And now, unfortunately for Jack, he, he's probably not aware of that being a structural element, so he's assumed that that's me trying to explain my point. You know, and I'm declaring something's fantastic. The irony being that he's already done this to my videos in this video. He's shown a yeah. clip and just said, that's bad, moving on. And it's just like, okay. Nope. But um, the, the more important part that um, it's a joke... I'm saying that's fantastic, as if to imply I'm I'm just laughing at that. That's funny, as Rags uh, pointed out. But the important parts, so characters going on long arcs and experiencing thematically relevant journeys, I explain all of that explicitly. I don't explain the joke to you. That's true. I don't explain why a joke is funny. I, that could be tough sometimes. It's, it's just yeah, it's a little uh, explaining why you find things funny. But this it's is like another problem. Why you think, find things like sexually attractive? It if, just, if either yeah, you hate my works. channel or you haven't seen my channel and you watch this, you're like, guys, do you you watch that Mola guy? And they go, yeah, he's great. And you go, <laughs> he literally like says, oh, this thing is bad, and then moves on. And when it comes to films he likes, he just says this is good and moves on. And then the person you're talking to will be like, no, he doesn't though. And they'll be like, you need to see Jack Saint's video. And then they go, you need to see Jack Saint's video being responded to. And that's the process. I like, I like that someone put in Jack Saint in the chat with a bunch of NPC style. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, the, this is again the reoccurring theme of this video is that he's mixed up rages and critiques, and uh, well, we'll get to his response got, to that at the end. Like I said, doesn't doesn't the fact it's got themes make it good? I agree with you. Actually, this video has themes, therefore it's irrecrit. Ir Irrecritable. That's a word now. It means you can't criticize it. Everything that I make into the future, by the way, will have a theme, <laughs> even if I don't mention it, or if it seems. Um, what if I just say like it's the theme it of inaccuracy. Because... No, the best way to convey a theme is to literally just say the theme in the movie. I've always liked that because I don't like to think. 
It annoys me. Someone's gonna get that the out of context. Of the last Jedi is fuck kids. <laughs> kids are annoying. Damn them. Uh, fuck them. yeah, let's keep going. Infinity War is admittedly a kind of unfair example. Mula really does phone this one in. It's just mm -hmm. running through the film scene by oh. scene. Oh, and... damn! So, wow. like, the, this is a genuine response to this, Jack. Kindly fuck you. Simple as wow. that. Uh, I worked really hard on that video. And it's something that Jeez. I consider a little closer to me for media than a lot of uh, standard pieces of media. I don't know, I really care about Tony Stark's uh, journey. And so the, the portion I showed you was like what I consider to be the crown jewel of, of, of the part of the film that I really enjoyed, and then I move into talking about it as a whole. And he's just like, he phoned it in, it's like, thanks man. So, you can phone in and make better content than he can? Trying? I, I would never I claim guess. that. Is that what the theme of that statement was? I guess. <laughs> what else can we draw? Let's go to the worst fucking benefit of the doubt possible and uh, do back to him what he likes to do with our work, right? Why, why not? And saying the bits he liked. I guess maybe he thought the more of his video was taken up by summary, the more objective the critique was? Nope, the purpose is so that people follow along when they're watching, whether or not they've seen the film, whether or not they remember and, the film. And I really like it when people do that. I like to know we're moving to this scene, and then this scene happens, and then we're here now, because when I watch a movie, I can't remember every scene in chronological order, and every event that takes place. Well, him and him and Eric have basically said that you're, you don't exist, Rags, because they're like, uh, I'm watching this video, I've seen the movie, Mola. Like, what are you doing? It's like, I saw it too. But I want, to, I want to be reminded of everything that happened so that I don't forget about something. And by the way, I'm not saying that every single portion of my plot summary was absolutely intrinsic to the video. There's probably some things I could have cut and the video would have survived. I'm simply suggesting the reasoning for why it's there. I'm very aware of why uh, you might find it clunky and unnecessary, but you are not everyone. That's basically the lesson you should learn here. I mean, watch if you want a perfect example of why his notion of objective critique is so flawed in the first place, as he largely skips over what he has elsewhere acknowledged as clear and fundamental holes in the filmmaking. So his point here <laughs> is that I've accepted publicly that Infinity War has flaws and it's not in the Infinity War video. A video well, in which I say I am not going to talk about the flaws. Praise. The, it's worse than that, dude. Biased, it's worse than praise. that. I say it explicitly after the section he was referring to as being without point. Well, at least it's like when Cinema wins, he talks about film. I mean, you know what he's going for from the outset. Like, he explicitly states, these, these are great things about this movie. I'm just, I'm going to focus on the great things about it. <laughs> First, fine. That comment in chat, Jack, like, come on now. <laughs> like, Jack, Jack, come, come on. on. Yeah, this is uh, Cowboy Bebop music. So he's about to play a clip that proves that I think Infinity War is flawed, and that that's proof that I never mentioned it in the video, and he thinks that proves something, but look how smug he gets Give about this. Give the impression this. that Mauler was denoting some things as important and... Oh wait, have we gone past it? Um, so apparently, Jack's wife is, uh, getting salty on Twitter too. <laughs> Jack's wife? <laughs> His wife? You married that? Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. <laughs> All right. Infinity War is admittedly a kind of unfair example. Yeah, don't send Jack Saint any hate whatsoever, people. Leave yes, him alone. Or, All yeah. it's going to do is give him ammo to say that we're the worst channel ever, we're racist bigots, and we go out, we bully smaller channels. Leave him alone. He's, he's worse than Shinobi with this shit. He's inventing even more and more. He changes the past and invents context that doesn't exist just to go after do people. Think, Leave him alone. Do you think that Shinobi is his son? Is <laughs> he trapped in a basement with his toys? An Asian this man. all makes sense now. What's his wife's foot handle? What's... Do not harass I, Jack I Saint. Know. Yeah, just, like, he's really not worth your time. What about Jack's wife's son? <laughs> 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 This is a music beep. Um, Cuckold dream memes offend me. Mauler really does phone this one in. It's just running through the film scene by scene and yeah, saying yeah, yeah. the bits he liked. I guess maybe he thought the more of his video was taken up by summary, the more objective the critique Wouldn't was. that be true, though? I mean, <laughs> I mean if I don't it know was if he just a plot summary, would, would that be, make it more objective, though? 
Yes, but I don't. I, mean, I don't know what his take is on that. He just declares it. <laughs> like, okay. He uses what? he uses little quote fingers, but that's like no. But unironically, yeah, it kind of would be pretty much. This happens, and then this person well, does this. He declares it as a bad thing, moves on. And it's like, isn't that the thing you All accused right. me of doing that was bad? Yeah. Okay. All if right. you want a perfect example of why his notion of objective critique is so flawed in the first place, as he largely skips over what he has elsewhere acknowledged as clear and fundamental holes in the filmmaking. Something like that would almost give the impression that Mauler was denoting some things as important and some as not important based on his own biases and so he literally it, described it, my video as biased. Yeah, like if it, only, it, yeah. If only you'd mentioned something about this in the video. If like only. That, very clear. Unfortunately, this is what I mean. This is why this stream, when I was preparing these citations, I was just like, this is going to be easy. Jack has made this so fucking easy. He's he's literally using words that I have in my videos. Like, what do you want me to do, Jack? Just in the discussion I had with him in the comment, uh, the way he justified uh, conflating this is like, it's I, you know I, I say clearly the intentions are different. You can tell it's made very obvious. And he says, but the content in them is the same. And like that that is his response. Is his justification for conflating the praises, the rages, and the critiques is that. The content is apparently the same. I mean, he's literally criticizing this one specific video for being biased while ignoring other videos. He's not saying that about other videos. So on, on that note, so, let me read the description of Mahler's Unbridled Praise video. This is the description of the video that's open instantly. Right? I have no idea what this so thing I figured says right since now. <laughs> I make a, yeah, so I figured since I make a lot of content that is negative about film, I had an idea to try and create a sister series to my Unbridled Rages. The idea is to try and praise the film for the things I thought were great while leaving the flaws out of the analysis. Basically the complete inverse of what you often see on the channel. I'll pick this back up with other films if you guys enjoy it. I really tried to nail the editing and the script, though I wanted to get it out quick to cover the topic. Marvel really did pull something amazing off here. A flawed series, but an unprecedented one nonetheless. Let me know how you feel about the video. Wait, so what you're saying is you're just a ripoff of Cinema Wins? Is it, that's, that's quite amusing, isn't it? That's Because the Rage and Praises are technically Cinema Sins and Cinema Wins in what they try to do? Question mark? I mean, it's not as if those channels came up with those concepts of ignoring sure. um, one thing to talk about another thing. But, no, but yeah, no, I think that it, it's a fair comparison. Critique. I just think that I'm more consistent than Cinema Sins and Cinema Wins from what I've seen. But that's, you know, not not too declarative. I'm just, uh, I've only made one praise after all. It's so flawed they both have first. incredibly different approaches to you, is what I would say. True. Since I've seen most of your content, most of their content as well. Actually, I've never seen a CinemaSins video. I don't know. <laughs> um, I mean, watch if you want a perfect example of why his notion of objective critique is so flawed in the first place, as he largely skips over what he has elsewhere acknowledged as clear and fundamental holes in the filmmaking. Something like that would almost give the impression that Mauler was denoting some things as important and some it's, as not important. It's just right in the description, based on man. The description in the video and technically in the title because of what praise means, but An sure, Jack. Praise. I mean, it's right fucking there. You didn't even have to watch the video. The description is available from the first second that the video plays. I don't his know, own bias is, and so his critique is unstructured in two different ways. His critique. See, he thinks it's a critique. It's not how I describe it at all. But okay. Well, let's see if Black Panther clears things up. There are several highly advanced. He's about to pronounce Wakanda. That's true. We're nearly there. But let's see these these all in a row. So long. Well, let's see if Black Panther clears things up. There are several highly advanced pieces of technology and architecture everywhere, but actually they have thatch-style huts embedded into the structures. What is with the location and everyone's outfits and the weird war paint stuffs? I mean, guys, seriously, why the fuck do you use spears? By taking the flower power back and burying yourself in large amounts of sand, you are able to speak to your father through dreamland, I guess. How exactly did Tony and his father not find out about the properties of vibranium? People getting stabbed and slit to shit, but absolutely no blood. Can't even go with the red lines on the bodies? Come on, guys. This film doesn't even explain why he's called the Black Panther. So, first glaring point, um, the concept of cherry-picking. But let's assume that all those points are awful, for the sake of the argument. 
Uh, it's not really fair considering the representation of the whole video. And he does account for that in a moment. He says something like, um, he agrees with me that the opening isn't very well written. And I'm like, I'm just sitting here like, really, Jack? Like, uh, what about the villain making no sense at all in terms of his origin and his plan being based on luck? And uh, T'Challa not doing much of anything in the movie, making lots of confusing decisions. There's a lot of um, fundamental criticisms I have, right? In and amongst ones like uh, less significant ones. However, I don't actually think that the criticisms I raised are actually insignificant. And some of them, he's going to assume, are objective plot holes. Like that selection, you'll just, anything that I bring up, he will label as a plot hole, and it's like, it's embarrassing for me as as someone who gets accused of being so amateur. It's like, you realize there's more to flaws in film than plot holes. Yeah, like, whether or not we learn his name is Black Panther or not, that doesn't mean it's a plot hole. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about how every single superhero is tied, like, they have a real name, and then they get given their superhero name, and you're like, okay. I'm curious as to how that would occur, because everyone gets a natural name. And then each of the movies will give us context for it, while Black Panther, it's just the way it is. And you're like, okay. Again, right. not a plot hole. It's just like, okay then. <laughs> you, do you want to say, and you're like, so what's the problem, Mola? Why are you asking the question? It's like, I was curious about it, and I don't know why, why they didn't I ask, Why can't I it. ask? The, what's wrong with just asking? I'm, just, I'm asking. And then he's like, I will say you do kind of, like, pronounce, like, the way you say it does kind of sound like you consider it to be a flaw. Do I? That's, that's, it's a good question. Least, Do I consider it to be a I flaw? Um, but the thing is, like, as I've been over in the video that he's also seen, the the car in the background, Lord of the Rings, that is a flaw, okay? But it's, like, its relevance is so low, but I still mentioned it in that video. You get it? Like, it, it is a thing. And, and you could be like, uh, the car is a flaw because... <laughs> if, if you really want it to be explained, you'd be like, cars don't exist in Lord of the Rings universe. Therefore, it can't be there. Like, that would be the, the argument, I suppose. It's a continuity issue, I guess? Is that how you categorize that? Consistency um, with the world. Yeah, I'm not even sure of how I would categorize that, but, um... Just the, a slip-up that they didn't error, catch. Yeah. The it's black... Like not not, not even really an editing <laughs> error. It's just that um, they didn't notice it until the movie was already yeah, finished. Yeah, it's like... It's a it's an in universe mistake and an out of universe mistake. And, and in fairness, universe, I yeah. the only reason I know noticed it is because someone else pointed it out to me because it's such a blink and you miss it thing. Yeah, it's it's the same for me. Yeah, and I, I never saw it originally. I guess the point I'm making is I throw those in the video too. But if you collect any and all nitpicks I've ever made and then say that this is all I do, like Quentin did and like Jack's doing, yeah, you can definitely make that argument. It's just that context will kill the argument, which is the crux of this stream, basically. Um, but hey, you know, let's see his take on it. Stabbed and slit to shit, but absolutely no blood? Can't even go with the red lines on the bodies? Come on, guys. This film doesn't even explain why he's called the Black Panther. You know Cinema Sins? Yeah, this no. is not just Cinema Sins. What do you mean, Jay? Why would you say that? I've never heard of them. <laughs> I don't know who they are. This is someone just running through a movie point by point, occasionally calling out things they consider bad plot holes. Occasionally? occasionally. It's the whole video. Yeah, it's the whole video. This, 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 the, the construction of the video is supposed to be that I provide, I'm talking about all the flaws and I give you enough plot summary to be able to understand the context of the flaw. And he's just described it as bad plot holes. This is what I mean about how Jack seems to think that anything and everything I talk about equals bla a bad plot hole. It's like, it could be anything. There's loads, inconsistencies and conveniences are like extremely different to start, but they could both be categorized as plot holes by Jack, I suppose. Editing errors are not plot holes. Um, the film is complicated. I, I feel so condescending explaining this. It's like, there's just yeah, so many ways like of film. Like a, like a child, you know? It's not just plot holes. That's the, I guess what I'm trying to say. Without really commenting on how it fits within the narrative, or making an- So you said, uh, I don't comment with how it fits within the narrative. Jay, you didn't like my Black Panther video that much, but d d do you remember me mentioning how any of the criticisms are relevant because of how it fits in with the MCU? I'll be real, I've, I've blacked most of that out of my memory at this point. Okay. 
That was <laughs> what, um, the 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 one I use is that um, the weaponry and armor and their abilities and the metal and all that stuff. By the end of Black Panther, they're they're telling us that they're introducing it into the world, and so I'm like, what prevents them now from if they're going to share this kind of shit? Like, isn't it going to spread? And and the arguments of um, I would have the same argument for Tony's nano uh, machine technology and the same. Uh, for, for a couple of different things. It's, it's just like, this is undeniably incredible technology and the world is facing a threat. Start mass producing those Black Panther suits, if you know what I mean. Nope. Only for Black Panther. So that is a highlight of an issue. When the world is at stake, isolationism isn't really going to be a reason for why you won't let people have weaponry, if you know what I mean. Um, and they're not even isolationist at the end of the movie, so what I'm what suggesting is... <laughs> what I'm suggesting is that it'll be an issue... <laughs> Or um, uh, the, the 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 world, and he's just said like I never explain how it'll be relevant to anything else. I'm like I'm pretty sure I do that in the Black Panther video. Yeah, this is all just cinema sins. This is someone just running through a movie point by point, occasionally calling out things they consider bad plot holes, without really commenting on how it fits within the narrative or making an argument for why these things actually matter to. So uh, the argument I make for why it matters, it, like I just need to pick one and he's wrong. So like, um, why it matters that they kept a secret for Killmonger instead of just taking the child back with them to Wakanda or instead of um, letting the people in Wakanda know that this was a thing that even happened. They don't tell us why they don't. There's no reason for it. They do keep referring to it as the secret they had to keep. And I actually think considering, I think it was Wolf that told me there's supposed to be some kind of three hour cut for Black Panther. It might be. Uh, I, I think it was. I think it was much longer than three hours. I think it's in there, probably because you just need a couple lines to actually connect the dots for why they would be motivated to keep it a secret. But they never actually have a moment in the film to do it, and I think it was just missed. But it creates massive problems for understanding um, the motivations of the king and the Wakanda itself. I'm sure you'd all love to watch Black Panther, but for three hours, right? Yeah, that sounds like something you would all enjoy. Definitely. So yeah, both of those claims can be counted with context. Just, just recurring theme, folks. But why these things actually matter to the text, matter to them, or should matter to you. Just as Infinity War was a point-by-point -point summary, occasionally pointing out good plot things. Across his video, Mauler makes constant references to things like it being counterintuitive that only one person in Wakanda a... gets access to. Yeah, that guy's. Yeah. Wakanda. Wakanda. <laughs> Wakanda. Wakanda. I've been building up to this for ages, and oh, I was it everything you ever hoped and dreamed it would be? <laughs> it was more than that. <laughs> oh, it's a payoff. It surpassed my expectations. It's like a mini Infinity War in your heart. Yes. The only one person in Wakanda gets access to a special plant that makes you superhuman, usually the king. Or how, even though Wakanda is technologically advanced, they fall back to fairly archaic things like rustic-looking market towns trial by combat. Having strict traditions. Don't mention that. People using I do spears. believe he comes to that Why later. Most yeah, he's presenting my arguments here, so we've got nothing to respond to yet. He's going to counter them in a moment, but he's snarkily presenting them as if they're just wrong inherently, but he is going to provide a counter-argument. Logically advanced society use fucking spears? Sincerely, why does anyone use anything? If So that's a weird question to ask. Why does anyone use anything? Um, I think what he wants to present here is that I could ask questions like, why? Would Winter Soldier use a machine gun instead of a gun that could be better in that scenario? You know? And depending on the context, these questions are actually relevant. And he's about to provide an example yes. from Infinity War as if to show that I don't have any criticisms of Infinity War, which we've already been over as a mistake on his part that he thinks it should have been in my video when it was never intended to be in the video. But he assumes that I don't share this criticism, so hear it out. Guardians, why on earth would they make Mjolnir a small hammer and not a mini? Because it's or based on mythology, you dunce. I mean, well, that's not a plot reason, though. Uh, it is an adaption, right? So we can still argue that they've adapted it with it. If you want to tear the Asgardian culture down, I think you could do it in terms of um, assessing how a lot of it's inconsistent. Into the, the Odin and Thor are clearly very, very powerful, and Hela or Hell, I never remember who it is in the fucking movie. Hella. Um, compared to all the other Asgardians who seem to be kind of shit, uh, other than Heimdall, who seems like decent, and then a lot of the okay. citizens are just terrible to the point where they're literally like defenseless. And you're like, okay, so how does the power dynamic work here? 
Do you, cause like, you know how Thor can take getting stabbed and beaten and thrown and exploded and stuff? Like, those citizens look like they could die from, you know, just a bullet wound. While Thor can't be shot by bullets? Question mark? Normal human ones, right? Or am I... I can't remember if that happens in the movie. Um... Either way... God, don't make me have to defend Thor. It's confusing. He, he survived being punched by the Hulk, and, like, those massive Chitauri he's, ships can't survive that, He's so. a super weapon on legs, essentially. And so, like, I don't really know exactly what the power levels of Asgardians are, or how, how that works. And then there's, like, their armor, which almost seems useless against, um, Ella in, in the movie, and maybe that's because she's Hela, but it's just like, wouldn't... Wouldn't the dwarves make, like, amazing armor? It's like, no, let's just assume they don't do that, and you're like, oh, okay. Uh... Then, the, then there's the weaponry, which, you know, the the why why not? I don't know. There's there's a couple of th things like how how does any of this really function? Why wouldn't the greatest weapon of all time, the um Stormbreaker thing, not be the weapon that Odin has, or maybe Thor already? Is I don't I don't I don't get how any of it really works. And um, Jack's assuming I don't have any of these criticisms for Asgard like I do for Wakanda. But I've not made a video on Thor, uh, criticizing Thor specifically. But oh man, could you? Yeah, um, there's a yeah, lot more to yeah, Thor absolutely. that I have a problem with outside of the world building. Just like Black Panther. Their the own special Mjolnir gun to help protect Asgard with. Plot hole. Not a plot hole. Not a plot hole, Jack. Not a plot hole. <laughs> you don't know what a plot hole is. You need to watch. Um... Videos on plot holes. Protect. Well, no, he, the, the videos he's probably watching are Patrick Williams. Williams. Oof. Willems. Yeah, then I guess he doesn't know shit about plot holes then. Asgard with. Plot hole. How come the US military has had the research notes on Cap Super Serum for so many decades, yet most soldiers are just regular dudes and not thousands of Cap. So this is, a, this is a trap because it's obviously blatantly explained in the movie that Erskine is the only one that can make the formula and then the Winter Soldier ones are made uh, in Winter... Well, we, we've shown that the Winter Soldier ones are made and that it makes them uncontrollable, so Captain America's formula is lost is to time and he died with Erskine. Um, but he's going to argue that it's explained in Captain America just like it is in uh, Black Panther, but it's not. It's explained in the Black Panther comics. I know that from the amount of people who told me it, but it's not explained in the movie. Research notes on Cap Super Serum for so many decades, yet... Most soldiers are just regular dudes and not thousands of Captain Americas. Oh wait, they actually address that in the fiction? Mm -hmm. Kind of like how they address why only one person gets the Black Panther's ability in the fiction of Black Panther. No, they Panther. don't. They don't, and they, the important, they literally don't. importantly why, uh, which is the, my argument in the video that he's just not going to bring up here or counter, is that um, your goal is to protect the king, and the king is the, the Black Panther, blah blah blah, he gets the power in the suit, because he's he's top of the pyramid. Okay. So, why does he have bodyguards? It's like, to protect him, obviously. And you're like, oh, From what? Why don't... Well, that's another good question. But why don't... Why do the bodyguards not have this stuff, too, to make them literally the best at their job that they could possibly be? And you're like, because they just don't. Okay, why don't the bodyguards have the Black Panther suit, since that technology alone would make you pretty much immune to damage? It's It's bulletproof. And again, you'd be like, they just don't. You're like, okay. Um, someone made the argument that their fabric is made of vibranium. And I was like, they, their whole heads are fucking available to a, a bullet. Like, that would be the important part that maybe they want to cover. So Black Panther suits for all. And then we find out that they're literal necklaces that can form around you. And Shuri could obviously mass produce them with the amount of vibranium she has mined frequently each day. So I'm just like, this is really awkward for, to, for you to show me. And then I argue that um, the entire population of Wakanda could be given these flower things and it'll improve their biology as in they will be faster more agile heal better be more immune be stronger like you could give this to your whole population and you'd be like a super race but instead you're like no just for black panther and the reasoning that he's going to present i believe is that it's like a cultural thing like they only let the one guy have it but this is not in the movie there's just they just presented that they have flower power and then they just they give it and you're like oh okay do they ever explain how they even mine vibranium? I mean, we don't need an explanation for, like, that, surely. We don't need to... Well, I guess the logic would be, how do you mine steel as a caveman? It's like, well, you have to do the thing in Terraria, right? You use a lower material to mine a stronger one, then use that use mined material pickaxe. to mine a stronger one, and a then mine a stronger pickaxe. one. That's what I'm saying. But it's like, it's one of those things where... Pickaxe. 
you can it's about how deep you want to go with it if the whole thing about wakanda is that they're super amazing because they have vibranium it's like well but if how did how did they turn just vibranium chunks in the earth into some kind of usable material that gives them yeah because it's implied that the vibranium propelled them past yeah, the stone age yeah and i want to know how how does we like we found this chunky thing in the ground and it's really really we can't break it we can't i don't even know how we got it out of the ground honestly but it's just like we've got it so how does that make them super super smart and super combat effective because if we had that's a, like the thing. if we had adamantium well, as in just the strongest metal that isn't our strongest metal currently it doesn't push us into like they just argue that titan the vibranium can just do everything it's like the best technology thing vibranium can be used as fuel you can like burn it and get energy I pretty much it. say it can just be used as everything can be used as little golf balls that you can put in wounds and then they won't die. And uh, I'd like to have a golf you ball could be like, that's internal logic, so it's okay. And I'd be like, it is internal logic, but it's also the most convenient fucking material that's ever it been in a fucking storyline. It is a MacGuffin. My god, I just realized seeing this Infinity War scene and thinking of like, the little balls. Like, what if T'Challa just pulled out like a bag from his <laughs> pocket and he started like shoving balls but, all across do you his remember, dad's face. I made the argument that if the dad still had the flower power, which they would have to remove from him instead of just letting him keep, then uh, he would have survived this. And do you remember Jay's counter was that you don't know that that could make him survive and Black Panther my, survived it? My counter also, th this is the one I stand by more, I'm not really sure, like, how I'd, I... I've, again, blocked a lot of that out. Um... I, I haven't really gone back to it very much, but my counter that I was more pleased with was essentially you imply heavily that they like have to get him to give up the power. Um, and my assumption would be that based on... I'm sure he volunteers. Kid, we know him as a character, yeah, that he would volunteer. Did yeah, no, every, I'm sure he would too. I'm volunteer. saying it's dumb, though. Yeah, it doesn't. And the... I mean, and plus, what about all the kings who came before? And he's he's literally their the representative. Like, isn't it important to keep him in a good state when you're isolationist and you're trying to protect yourself from the world? He knows exactly how to talk about Wakanda. Keep him alive. He's very useful. I don't know, man. Like, it, it, a lot of it doesn't make any sense, but we'll re respond mode. Um, We've hit the five-hour mark, by the way. We have. That's too long. We have to go quicker. How much longer do you plan on going? Let's have a look. Um, could you do an hour? Yeah. Could you do more than an hour? <laughs> I don't know if I could do more than an hour. I don't know. Um, we'll try and speed it up. But um, I really would like to get through the whole thing because the, the, there's the small addressing of rags at the end. Um, oh. Hopefully, like I said, when we get to, we're nearly to Eric, I think, and Eric's one is mostly smooth, so we'll just, let's, let's go. Oh wait, they actually address that in the fiction? Kind of like how they address why only one person gets the Black Panther's ability in the fiction of Black Panther. You might not like the explanation, but beyond telling us this is a thing that exists, you haven't given an argument for why it really matters here. For everything you simply call out in Black Panther, and then from your intonation we assume as flaw- So he's doing this throughout his whole video, by the way. He like, through his intonation, after throwing clips on screen, we're supposed to assume that they're bad intrinsically. There's a couple of them. Some of them get commentary, but in the same way that I do that in my videos. Some of the things I just I just snarkily say, and then some of the things I actually explain, but I usually do that with the things that are much more significant. That's usually how I roll in the Rage videos, but again, the Rage videos are more for entertainment. So, um, he's guilty of the thing he's accusing me of, and the thing he's accusing me of is actually by design. They're the two defenders. Yeah, I think, um, I think it's pretty evident the tone's different, but, um, I guess some people didn't pick up on that, even though it was written out in the Pause. description. Not girlfriend kills a guy. <sighs> with a shoe. I could look back to your Infinity War video and find- See, there's no context for why that's a bad criticism. Yeah, I mean, it seems odd. But he, he's just declared that it's bad by showing it, so there you go, Jackie, right. guilty of it too. Similar, if not almost the exact same quote-unquote- Also, sorry, we should probably say- I don't feel I should- I feel it's condescending to explain why someone killing someone with a shoe is embarrassing. Um, and I wouldn't put it in my movie unless it was a parody, like fucking Austin Powers. Kills a guy with a shoe. I could look back to your Infinity War video. She should have just punched the guy. Why the hell would you hit him with a fucking 
Ugh. Yeah, don't don't do anything to me while I'm getting my shoe off. Even uh, the World's End had a better fight scene than that, I agree. and that was a comedy. And find similar, if not almost the exact same, quote unquote problems. Why are there literally two people from Doctor Strange's sect protecting the Time Stone? Weren't all of the Doctor Strange sect people wiped out by Kaecilius? Outside of Morbo or whatever his name is, Morden. I hadn't seen Black Panther. I couldn't say. But um, if that's a, if I check Doctor Strange and that comes out true, that's a fair criticism. Wait, didn't Jack. they um, didn't he reverse time at the end to prevent that from happening, and that he was sucked in with? He didn't manage to complete it though, so I don't know if he managed to save anybody from the last area. If you know what I mean. The thing is that this doesn't counter any of your points. It, it's like. You didn't mention the criticisms of Infinity War that exist when you weren't criticizing Infinity War. Yeah, this Infinity just War. comes back to how explicit I was about not mentioning the flaws. It's literally spelled out for you, but I guess that wasn't enough to spell the it out for you. Single most important thing to these people? Look at how much- Bringing in his Eric Tax and editing here too. What do you mean, these people? The fight. Are we Again, seriously he, ignoring he, that they could portal in like- He defended this to me when I- Called him out in the comments by saying, "Oh yeah, but the the content in the critiques is is pretty much the same as what's in the rages and the praises." <laughs> no. Like, well, then why don't you use the critiques as an example, since that was, you know what you're fucking talking about? I agree. But, <laughs> like a dozen more of these guys, and likely stomp the two people Thanos sends down to grab it. Just the two, eh? So even though Thanos has been roving around the galaxy for decades, picking up recruits. He only had, like, five people on hand for Infinity War. And Four. wait a second. And they were his trusted soldiers. He did hire a couple more people and they betrayed him. So Yeah, and they had, the like, a, like, an army of those, like, yeah, six little monsters. <laughs> oh, the yeah, Chitauri army. Have an army. Bit of a weird comment, Jack, but okay. They have, they have an if army in Infinity War. Thanos the... already knows he's planning on using the stones to snap away half of all life. Why does he rove around for so long, halving populations right up to the start of the film? Isn't he one. at that point just cutting all life by... Hang on a second. Um, but we don't know when he discovered the Infinity Gauntlet thing was a possibility. Has it, has yeah, it been... We do know he's cutting populations in half after he discovers it, because he does that to Thor and his people. That is, is true, and um, it would... For me, it's not a contradiction. I don't know if you'd agree with that. It's more of a, I'd love to see what he'd have to say about that. I imagine he just doesn't, like, it's just, it's tiny numbers in a grand scheme or something like that. It's yeah, not it's a contradiction, but I would say it makes less, I, I would I would say it would make sense for I him wish, to not be doing it at that point. It would be interesting if it was in the movie that when he's attacking them to get the stone and he kills half of them, he's essentially saying, like, it's beyond me. I'm killing you, sure, but it's beyond me because it's the, this is the rule, it has to be ha half of you. And you'd be like, well, you're going to half them anyway, so isn't this just... The, and, and there's a sort of reveal that he kind of enjoys it anyway. Um, but that's not in the movie. Either that or, yeah, I mean, you could say that he's doing it manually because he doesn't... He's not certain he can get all the infinities. Yeah, it would be cool to have a line of dialogue. I don't, I don't disagree that that could get well, a bit of extra Jack. explanation. Free quarter. I made a video on Infinity War, and people commented saying that, you know, previously they thought it was okay, but after seeing this, they were like, wow, you know, it's actually blah, blah, blah. I, I was trying to be as objective as possible in explaining how the characters move from X to Y to Z and why that film is of quality. And the robots analysis of Infinity War, for example, would probably be that it's like a 6 or a 5 out of 10. I think this film okay. is in So he thinks that's a contradiction? How? Uh, by presenting these clips, he thinks that it's a contradiction, but like, it's the crux of my argument that um, I'm presenting only the positives, and that if you were to be objective about Infinity War, it would probably reach some form of a par because of the Which amount of you, inconsistencies. But that shows that you know that there are flaws with it. it this is the thing. It's the again that you literally spell out that there are flaws, but you're not going to talk about them because that's not the point of the video. He's un he's seemingly blissfully unaware of these several attempts at telling him it's a biased assessment. It's Man. amazing how, like, you literally in that in that in that debate with Just Right said um, that it was sub subjectively you love the movie, but objectively not. Objectively, it's not as uh, great mm -hmm. as uh, you know you feel it is, and he still manages to miss that. Tended for traditional reviewers, and they will be throwing out logic as much as possible, since traditional reviewers are the only people who appreciate a lack of logic. So this is in regards what? to, um, 
TLJ, and it's just a little snarky comment that I think that uh, it's dumb that Patrick Willems only appreciates the traditional reviewers, but they also all happen to love The Lost Jedi, and so my, my conclusion is the traditional reviewers just love a complete lack of logic, and so Jack is applying this criticism to me, saying, well, you like, you, you consider uh, Infinity War a lack of logic and you love it, and it's like, no, Jack, uh, TLJ is basically without logic. It's like a 1 out of 10 fucking objective scale, if you want me to really go there. While um, Infinity War, it's got logic throughout all of the most important elements being the characters, their journeys, what they did, how they grew, what they learned, the themes. Those things right. are consistent. It's the will building and the, the story itself. There's, there's issues, there's holes. Uh, while with The Last Jedi, there's holes in every fucking respect. So... False equivalency is the conclusion there. Uh oh. I don't think so. I don't personally care about these things because I accept, for instance, that the first fight in New York would feel completely different if both sides had hundreds of unnamed fighters causing chaos all around the city. And with the context of the film's escalation of tension, potentially throw things off. See, that's my argument for why I like that early on the fights in Infinity War are only between you a few like people. It. I don't know what he means by C. This doesn't contradict anything I've said. Yeah, it's like, that's fine. You can like it for whatever reasons you want. That's different. Because yeah. it makes the massive Wakanda fight feel more as if it's been led up to- It's Wakanada, the actual name. Wakanda. Rather than Canada. Wakanda. Wakanda. Just another exhausting massive clash. Maula jabbing at Black Panther because it's too dark to see him well in the opening fight scene is ultimately meaningless. He's because just saying he, he doesn't Maul argue just saying he why. couldn't see. So um, we could jump That's to an another video. Mistake. We could How jump. Could you... We could jump to the other to the video. I was gonna do it to show context, but trust me, just go to two thirty my Black Panther video if you want to see me say it. I say that um, I'm describing the events in this part of the plot to set up my criticisms of it, and I say at least that's what I think happens, because despite being the center of my cinema with a full screen, I couldn't see a fucking thing. Now that's a statement that is inherently subjective, because I just told you I couldn't see a fucking thing. You, it's, it's, it's the fact that I can't see, and now he's trying to address it in a way that I'm saying the film is too dark. Like, like, as if the, I'm wrong for saying it's too dark, when all I've said is I couldn't fucking see. So, like, it's a bit of extrapolation on his part, and how he counters this argument is hilarious. Black Panther because it's too dark to see him well in the opening fight scene is ultimately meaningless, because he doesn't argue why this is a problem for the film. In Alien, the oh. xenomorph is in darkness most of the okay. film, yet you'd probably- So, um, <laughs> does anyone want to have a crack at- this this uh, counter. Well, well, you see, when it's too dark to tell what's happening, that's an editing mistake. That's a lighting mistake. If you can't tell what's happening, how are you supposed to be enjoying the scene? But this dark and alien. You could do that intentionally. But alien didn't have reason, that lighting. Exactly. You could do it intentionally for a reason, like in a horror film. But, and even then, I don't think Alien had bad lighting. You could tell what's happening. I was going yeah. to say, if you want to it's interesting. That something is is like difficult to see. Then yeah, show it in a way that's you can't yeah. tell what's happening. But that yeah, has difficult to, be... to see for the characters that are experiencing it in the film and the audience. Those are two different things. Yeah, to compare an action scene with a horror scene is incredibly ridiculous because an action scene you inherently need to understand the progression of events, while a horror scene. He could very well, and this is the thing, I used this example in the TFA video, which he admits he's seen at one point, so it's interesting to me that he's trying to provide the same counter that I did to the point in The Force Awakens flickering lights thing, and I talk about how flickering lights in Alien makes it harder for the viewer to discern exactly what the creature is. We can see it, but we're still like, what? what is that? What the hell is that? And that's by design, because they want you to remain as unaware of exactly what it is for as long as they can. It's fucking horror, it's trying to create suspense. While in Black Panther, you need to argue from a position of action. If I can't fucking understand who he's even hurting or what's happening, I'm just sitting there waiting for the scene to conclude, and they go, yeah, he won, by the way. I'll be like, thanks. I was so on the edge of my seat. And so, yeah, the if I made the criticism, it would be that it's badly, as Wolf put it, lit or edited. But all I said was I couldn't see it. So he's taking well, a subjective argument and arguing it against it objectively. Who have you heard say that about us? <laughs> Regularly. 
Those yeah, are, well, fuck you for not being able to see. I mean, that was a fuck trick you. question because it's like everyone accuses that of us. It's just funny when they do it to us. Um, it, it happens all the time. It happens all the time. People are constantly guilty of the things that they say that we do all the time. Yeah, let's let's hear him explain why it's fine to have a dark action scene because horror do it. Argue why this is a problem for the film. In Alien, the xenomorph is in darkness most of the film, yet you'd probably huff if you heard me blithely criticize the film because I couldn't see it most of the time. Because you understand it matches with the film's desire to create tension and a sense of the unknown. Black Panther, with the fact that it switches much of the perspective to the guards who are scared of him, also appears to be riding on this idea. It also, again, plays into the notion of escalating tension, as we're building the audience's excitement at later seeing him show off his full capabilities in a daylight setting. You can counter this by saying we already saw him You can tell there's an audio change here, and an editing change, because he hasn't got visuals of him doing it. He realized that his own argument has a flaw, being that he mm -hmm. said that, um... They show him in darkness first because it's a great build-up to seeing him fight in light, and it's like we already saw him fight in light in Civil War. So, but uh, this is his counter for that assumed argument. Full capabilities in a daylight setting. You can counter this by saying we already saw him fight in Civil War. I can counter by asking to what extent filmmakers are beholden to the assumption audiences saw the previous work in a series. And look, it's a whole conversation about how we each interpret and judge art. So he's on the team of you can only interpret it as a sequel if you interpret it as a sequel. Wow, okay. Alright. Um, <laughs> it's like my favorite. <laughs> a New Hope is... I mean, you could think that uh, The Empire Strikes Back. You could interpret that as a sequel to A New Hope. It could be. Maybe. If you feel that way. Not set in stone, though. There's no... Jesus Christ, these people. That's like a... That's like something... That's like a meme answer that people would make up. But they believe it unironically. Yep. You know, gonna, someone gonna... just someone just posted something in the chat that like reflects exactly how I feel, and they said my brain is sore. <laughs> so... that's, that's exactly Same. how my head feels. I like feel like I want to smash my face into a wall. I want to sleep for like six years. And Cox, interestingly, uh, Lone Wolf in the chat says Predator did this. They hide the threat while showing the action clearly. Yeah, we can follow the events just fine, even though we barely see the Predator. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt, um, and say that it is possible to have a sequel where you still build to revealing a thing that the audience has seen before. My example would be like, Rogue One, they clearly build up to you seeing Darth Vader, because they know that's something you want. Uh, oh, so I wouldn't, I, I don't think his point doubt, it would be inaccurate, um, it's just that it doesn't defend the idea of poor lighting, and it doesn't contradict what I said in the video. There's so many layers to why this is a piss-poor counter. Yeah. See him in the dark at the start? I got nothing. It's the same- I know you got nothing, Jack. I know, that's your whole video. See him in the dark at the start? I got nothing. It's the same kind of vague, contextless criticism as pointing out Wakanda is an advanced society with old-fashioned design. Elements which are true not only of many First World nations today- That's a nice counter, my friend, but you don't see half a building of steel and half a building of thatched housing. It's not a thing. It's a really bad attempt at trying to combine two potentially conflicting ideas within a culture. I'm not saying it's yeah. impossible, I'm saying the way they did it was hilarious. Day, but almost all sci-fi settings. What don't society disagree. based on the progress of technology and medicine and protection in general would allow the strongest person to rule rather than the smartest <gasps> or generally speaking <gasps> the best? Um. You okay? <laughs> Those were sirens. What the fuck? I'm guessing they were just finished? He's turning gay. <laughs> oh wow. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Wow, that is, that is, that is hideous. Uh, it's gotta be your football picture now. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm already on it. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, One day someone's gonna find this, like someone who has no idea about like any of this context is gonna find this image and ask me about it. Oh lord, my eyes. Oh. Baelin, you're the best. I love you. <laughs> oh, Jesus. How do I delete somebody else's post? <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
I, I'm curious, though, how he defends the trial by combat thing. I'm interested to see that. Let's check it out. Why not? I remember it being one of the weaker parts of the video. Well, GJ. <laughs> like... Yeah? Did, oh, did you? I did. Yeah, okay. Right. Maybe Wakandans don't look at intelligence the same way we do. Wow, that's I... so fucking racist. <laughs> <laughs> How's that for subverting your expectations? Oh, that subverted my expectations. It's the same way we do, because IQ is a pretty contentious topic, even in oh. societies it's established in, and being smart doesn't objectively make you a better leader. Wait. Maybe being oh. smart doesn't make you an objectively better leader. What a strange statement. Well, couldn't you just flip that and say being strong doesn't objectively make you a better leader? Which then highlights the issue, which is we're raising, is that it's a system that does not account for what is best. And he's like, yeah, well, that's the way they do it. It's like, well, I, that's my problem. Obviously, <laughs> when you're going to choose the dictator of your pacifist society, you want to use trial by combat. You find out who is the strongest warrior, who's going to be the dictator of your pacifist society. Especially the, the, the fact that he's bringing up, oh, being smart doesn't necessarily mean you'll be a better leader, implies that the alternative to trial by combat is like trial by a trivia quiz. <laughs> Try, trial by leader. <laughs> we use democracy. Like, yeah, like this is the only metric that they use. Who get, kills Getting who? more votes doesn't mean you're smarter. I mean, look at history. Ha ha! That's racist. Smart I believe that human being and leader. fish can Maybe coexist. Wakanda, separate from its technological development, is an extremely patriotic nation that heavily discourages anything to suggest a change from the established traditions of the state. If yeah, only I'm criticizing them for that. Jesus. Yeah. Something in the text to... Also, that clip has no relevance to what you're talking about. That is literally T'Challa saying, you fucked up when you kept the secret of Killmonger. Jack, watch the movie. I remember it better than you, and I haven't seen it in... Wow, I can't even remember. I'd rather not. I watch the movie every day. Love, you are wrong! <laughs> See, look, no, we watched I it can... in preparation for talking to Jay that first time. Oh shit, yeah, that's probably... I want to say two, three months ago? Great movie. Jay, when did can't we meet? I can't even remember seeing it. It's About been three months ago. ago. There you go, I, think... I watched it three months ago, and it was a nightmare. <laughs> I still remember um, how how excited you said because we watched it together, and I remember how excited you were when you were like, oh, "Where is my favorite building?" You know, when it was panning <laughs> over the city, <laughs> the, the thatch steel building. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to establish this. More of you are wrong. See, look, looks like it's I rain tonight. To so too bad for the Johnsons on the West Wing. <laughs> Johnson's? <laughs> How do you mean Sorry. the Shaquikans? Shaquikans on the... Fully discourages <laughs> anything to suggest a change from the established traditions of the state. Um, if only there was something in the text to establish this. All of you are wrong! I, I like that I'm just going to imagine T'Challa's talking to him. <laughs> See, look, I can... I don't know, yeah, I actually don't know what he's trying to say here. Well, uh, he's he's saying that I'm I'm misunderstanding that it's a part of their culture when he's misunderstanding that I'm criticizing their culture. Yeah, did he think that you were being like, yeah, this is a great thing for society to do? Well, I think the problem is that he thinks that I think the excuse they're doing it, therefore they're doing it, is something I missed. I'm like, yeah, no, Jack, I, I know they're doing it. That's that's the premise of my argument. Yeah, yeah, we think it's dumb. Elements Mola has dinged past as objective flaws. And do you like that he refers to them as me dinging past them? Do you, do, you, do you know? I hate to use this term. I hate it. I'm so sorry to use this term. But he's actually dog whistling to people who think that I'm like Cinema Sins. Cinema Sins. I'm not like Cinema that Sins. That term is basically like um, he's saying something without saying it to get the audience that would agree with him to go not like they nod. They go, ah, oh, all right. No, yeah. And through interpretation, dog whistling sibling you used for political stuff. I am trying to just use it in its actual definition. I'm not trying to make a political statement when I say dog whistling there. This is actually Black Panther. This is literally the most political thing that's ever happened. And if you don't know that, you're wrong. Should've he looks JJ like the, um, somebody in chat said he looks like uh, Steve the pirate uh, from Dodgeball. Oh yeah, I still th I, I, it's a combination of things. He's a very unique man. Um, he can have that if that is considered a compliment. 
to just ways it contributes to the film's storytelling, how it immediately establishes Wakanda's strict traditionalism as a contrast to its technological progress. My point That's here is dumb? pretty shallow. It's part of my video, so yeah. good job. Yeah, that, we think that's bad? We, uh, you're, but, yeah. but I'm at least actually making one as opposed to rolling through an entire film. Even the parts where I- Sorry, but every time you've accused me of that, you've been wrong, so I'm just not gonna take your word for it anymore. I don't actually have anything to comment on. Stopping for a few seconds occasionally to eye-roll at something so that the viewers can just intuit it's a bad thing. What's this video? I was about to say, listen, listen to what he just said again, but in the context that he's referring to it. himself about my work, and listen to what he says. An entire film. Even the parts where I don't actually have anything to comment on, stopping for a few seconds occasionally to eye-roll at something so that the viewers can just intuit it's a bad thing. He fuck what he does with my videos. That is, that's a him to a T. Oh, I just, uh, the self-awareness explosion. He <laughs> farms rhinos. Why in the goddamn hell is he farming rhinos? It's ah, Jesus idea. Christ, the balancing on that ding. Um, also, yeah, uh... Uh, do, do we need to say anything about farming rhinos, or is that covered technically already? I think we should go into it. <laughs> um, the birth of a meme. It's, yeah, I just, I just like, it's delivered to be entertaining. I could have just said, it is strange that they farm rhinos, next point. But instead I was like, nah, I'm gonna make my character, the delivery in the unbridled rage, get flustered at the idea that they're doing that. And then these people are like, this guy's actually getting like, really fucking angry just because there's a rhino on screen. I'm just like... Oh, right. You're the... Okay. <laughs> I have to explain this to you. In a shocking twist, we get the exact same criticism brought up again regarding why Wakanda only wants there to be one Black Panther. And it's just... Man, how are you showing clips of Iron Man and Captain America while making this criticism and not seeing a contradiction? Why don't the Tibetan monks teach everyone the mystic arts? They're very, very selective about that. It's in the movie. It takes a bring while for Doctor up. Strange to get a chance at learning it. You just bring back up at this point the part where he acts all on his high horse about saying, oh, oh yeah, this was explained in the text of the film. Yes. So, Jack, you might want to rewatch Doctor Strange. Um, they're protective as fuck about all of their information because they think it's considered power that people shouldn't hold, or at least people Especially who are in trade shouldn't hold. The film he was talking about there was Black Panther. I would say Doctor Strange has a better explanation of why a few, only a few people have the gift than Black Panther does. Yeah, they and, try and to explain it for starters. And Doctor Strange is irrespective of the person's origins in any way, shape, or form. While Black Panther, you can, the best you can say is they don't like people outside of Black Panther doing tisms. And you're like, okay. But Doctor Strange is just. It's, it, it, we'll move on to the next one. Why doesn't Spider Man tell Oscorp or whatever about the spider things? Why doesn't Spider Man tell Oscorp about the radioactive spider things? This is a legitimate question he's asking, guys. Is there anything you'd like to say? Wow, um... Wait, who runs Oscorp again? <laughs> the, the bad guys. Okay. Maybe he's trying to say that at the beginning, when Peter Parker didn't... Wait, which, which universe is this in? I guess we're gonna have well, to use the MCU, the MCU one. So we don't have any of the answers. Oh yeah, the, with the MCU, I'm, I'm not as familiar with. I was well, thinking well, about well, the same How do you... What, what is he gonna do? I was bitten by a spider in a building, um... Everyone should go do that, because what it did for me is amazing. Wait, plus a radioactive spider. Aren't they specifically studying their effects on humans? So surely they will find that out if... Yeah, isn't, isn't we, that... it's, it, we're not given the origin in the MCU, so we're gonna have to assume, from the fact that they haven't given us that origin, that what we're getting is a result of what well, was possible. So, multiple people in chat ha are asking if Oscorp exists in the MCU? That's a good question, actually. I don't even know. I don't know if it's been mentioned I imagine, yet. I don't think it's been mentioned. I will imagine... I imagine they'll bring it up eventually. Yeah. Radio. Oh, that's actually, it's actually, it's actually a question that autofills on Google. And what's the result? Um, let me... How Oscorp could possibly work in the MCU? Who bought Avengers Tower and Spider-Man Homecoming? Um, oh yeah, I've heard it implied before that Oscorp... Uh, are gonna like take the Avengers Tower? Mm. That's a theory. Yeah, there's a lot of there. There's a lot of videos here talking about how to introduce Norman Osborn and Oscorp into the MCU. 
And yeah, so to conclude here, uh, I don't think that we have an issue right now in the narrative, um, but even if there were, that doesn't mean that I don't agree with Jack on this. He just assumes that I wouldn't. Yeah, and, and the thing him. is, we, I don't think that Oscorp exists in the MCU anyway, to tell. Currently? I, I, I'd yeah, have to currently, control F Oscorp in all MCU scripts, I guess. It was just yeah. one of those instances we have no information on it, so asking the question is kind of pointless, because it could literally be anything. Yeah. Yeah. We don't have so anything. there can be more Spider-Men to protect the Earth. Maybe there's a fear there that if they don't consolidate this strength and use it sparingly, the Wakandans risk a lot more. So his argument's going to counter why the Wakandans don't ex expand outside of Wakanda, when my main argument was the people of Wakanda, and then specifically the bodyguards of Wakanda. That was my biggest argument. He's ignoring both of those, and he's ad instead addressing why Wakanda wouldn't give it to the world. Not necessarily even the bigger part of my argument, and I, I haven't even yeah, rewatched my video powerful people with bad intentions and no easy mechanism to stop them. You know how Iron Man has to specifically pick Peter out to give any kind of super suit and even then it's with heavy, heavy restrictions mm -hmm. and only allowed to be used in a very specific context? Yeah. Maybe it could be a similar kind of... Oh, whatever. See, and he gives up because there's no actual citation. Uh, you've got loads yeah. of references for Iron Man and why he won't give away his suits. That's in the stories. Wakanda yeah, doesn't really have shit all going. for explaining why they don't give their bodyguards highest tech and flower power. Yeah, he stops there, and I'm wondering, oh. yeah, go on. Oh, he's stopping. Oh. Well, he thinks the point's obvious, and he's accused me of <sighs> not extrapolating what I mean by my points as a bad thing. So it's like, Jack, you're doing it too, buddy. And at this point as well, I've seen this one so much. I, I imagine you guys will agree that it is say, oh, this thing isn't a problem because it could also be a problem in these other movies. What? Oh, it was the what about thing. thing, yeah. Which uh, that's what I see annoying. in The Last Jedi a lot. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, this well, in this other movie, movie, yeah, well, we're not talking about another movie. Yeah, and it's like, whether or not it's bad in the other movie is not relevant right now. Yeah. My god, we're not even a quarter of the way through the film yet. Now, oh. does Mula stumble upon like some... Oh, we're about to get the first Jack compliment. This is like seems partially legitimate. Like I said, Eric is much nicer to me than Jack is, but check this out. Hooray. Now, does Mula stumble upon some points I found strong in this 45 minute rant? Absolutely. I also found the writing in that first scene between the Actually, dad and the uncle handle. contrived. This is followed up by a lengthy diatribe about how Shuri being a prodigal genius inventor is because... No, don't worry, mate. Well, did you notice that the other prodigal mm -hmm. genius inventors are... Guys, Jay was the one who actually highlighted this to me because I missed it on my first watch through. What do you think he's saying when he says this? Fury being a prodigal genius inventor type is apparently a problem for her and not the other prodigal genius inventors because... No, don't worry, mate. I won't go there. Because she's a woman? I... No. I think it's because she's black. Oh, really? Um, oh, I think poor oh, Jack I was going is so sucked into the insanity of his po politics. He just automatically assumes my issues with Shuria because she's black. Really? I was gonna get. You see, I don't. I don't All even know. I, I assumed it was possibly. identity. Yeah, I assumed it was an identity politics related piece of garbage. But like literally, if she was forty, I would not have cared at all. Same. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Um, if you, the th when he says uh, when he makes his argument saying. Why is it a problem for Shuri to be a, uh, a prodigy and a, uh, an inventor, uh, but not these people? He adds just the words, not these people. Like, you never say that. You never, and didn't he you show never two... say that. You never specify, it's a problem for this person, not for these people. I mean, it works both ways, because he showed two white males. As this a, is black as female, yeah. So it could um, be either black or female. Either way, is... Jack, and this is clear in the video, I just, I'm sorry, you've let your politics get way too far into the into the assessment. Um, I think it's bad because she's so young and there's no senior members, even though Wakanda has had a peace for, like, ever since the, the Stone Age, right? Like, there's been a consistent, the clan has always, uh, T'Challa's clan has always been king. I, I can't remember if that's in the movie or not, but I'm implying that there's been no problems for the science division and the medical division, and yet this 16-year-old girl, who is apparently the smartest person in Wakanda, is the lead person for that area to the point where she's helping the king on his missions. It's a little Especially, bit ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, look at what uh, Spider-Man did. He made a terrible suit in a thing that shoots webs. And, and he fails it. all the time. <laughs> Spider-Man Homecoming is full well, of fails. 
if if uh, the lead scientist in Wakanda was like old but a white dude, you would probably have questions. <laughs> like that yes, would be I a would. problem. Like, why the fuck is the leading scientist in this isolationist nation in Africa fucking white? That wouldn't make sense. That would be an issue. You know, when we watched uh, Infinity War last, I even pointed out there's like this one shot where there's some random white um, Wakandan. And I was like, what is he doing here? It was well, they so opened weird. up their borders, Wolf. It makes complete sense. It could. Um, but why it would could... he be dressed like them and armed like them? It could Maybe be just, just some the genetic of tanning. Of... No, it. <laughs> You can. It could be a genetic like defect. <laughs> the genetic defect. I, mean, I know well, what no, you mean. I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he could be albino. If his parents are both black, he could have like albinism. He was clearly him. just a white guy, though. No, <laughs> no. He he was um he was like um he the, was a white guy. No, he just spent a lot of time indoors. He was a Starcraft pro. That makes who, complete sense um, to me. Yeah, because what else are you gonna do in a super? pacifist society where nothing happens then Michael Jackson yourself. make what are those memes that's that's yeah. what i would do yeah exactly he's michael oh, jackson by the way, he had a terrible accident involving a, a commercial like if jack is not aware <laughs> of this um what he just did was walk down a corridor point to a room and say this room does not exist and carries on walking and so i'm like oh that that's an existing room it's like he's he's highlighting the issue while saying it's not an issue that he's going to discuss and it's like or you would have just cut that out if that's what your goal was, but you clearly kept it in because you wanted it said. You see, what arguably another dog whistle too, but uh, I don't know. You know, you get into the point where it's just like, do you expect anything better? Not really. Nope, not really. Happening here, in Mula's own words. Just another bloody stupid detail. As we reach the thirty-minute mark, Mula is yeah. still just summarizing the film, making occasional digs. As we've already established, he doesn't understand what's happening when I summarize, so um, not yeah, really going to take that with a grain. Of, we'll take that with a yeah. giant silo of salt. I think is what I meant. Whatever he says regarding um, summaries, I can't. You can't trust him. He's shown himself to be an unreliable source of information. That maybe half the time aren't easily shrugged off, and it begins to feel a whole you whole lot easy. like this is just a guy dinging things off the top of his head. With no real thrust beyond the fact that there it is again, thrust, thrust. again. That thrust. Uh, downward made thrust that made him feel bad. Without this elaboration, it's hard no. To here's really the great thing: we didn't feel bad. The only feeling here is coming from you and your. We go by facts. I know yeah, that's a little bit of a difficult thing for you to grasp, since you don't live in the real world. You live in a little fantasy land where you but, think but we're racist. But don't, but don't let him twist that into a... Uh, see, Wolf admits he doesn't have any subjectivity involved in his videos, and so when you find an example, you've proven him wrong. It's like, no, I no. Clear, and I clearly do, but... God. Matter here, but not in Infinity War. No real delineation... Oh God, yes, they do. What's a criticism of <laughs> You the literally played the, the clip characters. of when Mahler said verbatim... He just said... Infinity War is only like a six from the robot. Of the film. just miss it. He said uh, there's no real delineation of what's a criticism of the film versus the characters. Let's hear that again. Here, but not in Infinity War. No real delineation between what's a criticism of the film or the characters. What? Is it hard for you to understand a character criticism, or do you need me to explain when I'm making a character criticism? So when I say I mean, Finn is inconsistent in TFA, do you need me to say this is a character criticism? <sighs> Surely you can, yeah, tell the difference by listening to the I mean, words. That's what used. I was assuming. Yeah. Like, if it's about that was, the character... That was a comeback, by the way, just in case you <laughs> yeah. needed me to explain that to you. That was like, a comeback. <laughs> it's like I have to kneel down like I'm talking to a child, try to get on their level so I don't feel like I'm too imposing, and say, if I'm talking, if my criticism is about the character, sweetie, also, it's a character criticism. As Bum Lux just highlighted, the characters are a part of the film. That's a meaningless distinction. That's true. If you criticize well, a character and someone asks you, did the film have any issues, you could say, yeah, this character, da 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 Yeah. Mauler thinks of as objective flaws versus just things he personally didn't like. The challenges. Wait, what was he criticizing there? He didn't explain. Shocking! That's a good point, Jack. Jay. Fact that the film Jack, made please don't, don't procreate, Jack. ...that made him feel... 
bad. I mean, he won't. Without this elaboration, he it's won't. hard to really get why these contrivances matter here, but yeah, not his in Infinity War. his wife's boyfriend will. No real do you delineation. master an Infinity War? There's nothing wrong with... No one's country. ever said they don't. Shut up. Stop hey, it. man. He can go bad faith. We do it. Okay? That was a long simile from That's Rex. I actually didn't catch that. Listen, oh, do you listen, want to go back? listen, let me tell you. As someone who has been dissected on EFAP, learn from it, right? You won't. You don't have to agree with literally everything they say, but you listen to the with things they're I saying say, uh, with an open mind. Kick, kick, kick. Jay, you have to. You can't just Block. tell people that you don't agree with us on things. Yeah, Jay, can you stop I with these opinion things? They're you broke me. character, Jay. You're the worst you're, you're boss the ever. Ah, you're not my real dad. I don't even believe that you are JJ Binks anymore. I'm younger than you. That fucking picture, though. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> My That's God! The film made choices that made Bale him is feel too good at what he does. Bad. <laughs> Without this, I hope collaboration, that Bale have... is a he because I'm gonna feel really bad if I like have been calling him a. He. It's not. You know, he's one letter he's away from Eowyn, so. Mm. I don't know. Just, just switch with every passing sentence between. And a and couple and letters and away from Theoden, so. And a couple letters have... away from talented. <gasps> Why do I have eyebrows on my nose in this picture? Huh? I have two distinct eyebrows like above my nose. I don't get it. <laughs> I think it's supposed to be a break for where the glasses connect, and it may not. You my glasses borrowed, connect uh, with eyebrows. You borrowed some of Quentin's monobrow. <laughs> <laughs> I hominem. apologize in advance, Beowin, if I've accidentally been misgendering you. You really see, this is this goes to show we don't give a shit what your gender is. You could be talented either way. Ch Chase Face said, uh, apparently Jack's done with watching this because he wants to go watch Yu Yu Haku show. Dude must have felt really embarrassed by how lazy his video turned out to be. A little bit. Yeah. I, I would be embarrassed. If I made this, I would be pretty embarrassed. I'd be pretty ashamed of myself. Why these contrivances matter here, but not in Infinity War. The Infinity War video is not presenting errors. Jack, how many times? No real delineation. It is literally spelled out. Literally like, spelled so out. When people are like, they've clearly made a mistake. Like, this is why we get confused because we're just like, surely that's bad faith because I make it explicit in the clip he's referring to in that section. So, how could he have missed that? And what you could say is that if he actually mentioned it in this video, he goes, he says he's not going to talk about errors, but that's hypocritical because, and then makes an argument for why I should. That would be different, but he's not even referenced it. It's. Bad criticism. He's like, just say things, have people who want to hate you, piece it in on their own. Maybe between fill what's in the, the gaps. criticism of the film or the characters, what Mauler thinks of as objective flaws versus just things he personally didn't like. The Charlie just agrees to it. Like the way they frame this scene is that he has the opportunity to deny this shit, and yet he gambles himself, a powerless, suitless, techless Wakandan warrior, against a professionally trained CIA kill count record breaking psychopath with a vengeance obsession directed at your bloodline. What a dumbass move. You're about to hand your whole land and people to this monster because he has the correct right. I think this guy makes a good point. <laughs> to challenge I like you. this guy. Now, the fact is, Mula doesn't seem to understand How get tradition as being a very overt Can you please theme just, in like, this. Edit the black bars off. I, I know it's it's a pet peeve. No, <laughs> get rid of them. Die of choice. Why would you think they're ugly? Get them away. Are you saying black isn't beautiful, Jay? <laughs> the African American no. bars, Jay. No, <laughs> Come on, no, Jay. You're twisting my words. This no, is these, these bars have this never is, been to Africa. This is completely unfair. Why would you insinuate that I'm a racist when that's clearly not my intention? Anyone who does that is clearly just... <laughs> that's your opinion. It's pretty easy to understand Disney's superhero film. Or it's just irrelevant to him, because he doesn't frame his criticisms around notions of theme. What the film may be trying to communicate, how an objective aspect of the film, such as the fact that T'Challa lets Killmonger fight even if it might mean him gaining the throne, does not an objective flaw make... Uh, it does. I'm highlighting that the mother says in the scene, don't. As in, don't accept the challenge. As in, you actually have the ability to do said thing. And T'Challa's like, no, nah, I'm gonna do it. And so I'm sitting there like, T'Challa, if you win, great. If you lose, your entire society and the world is going to get destroyed. Why risk that when you can choose no? You rem. And this guy's response is, you don't understand that it's a part of the theme. It is the theme being fucking stupid. It's like a meme. It's like it's, like it's not a criticism if it's related to the theme. 
It's my argument about the theme clashing with the narrative. They address this later and they just do not understand the argument. Simply because you personally wouldn't make that choice. It's not about if I would make it, it's about T'Challa not making it. Humans are not logical. <laughs> you can't expect characters to behave logically or else a film just couldn't exist. You know what, you guys are there right. There would be no conflict if there everyone be behaved no logically. Just as with the Infinity War video, Muller exposes how his video's bloated length is a consequence only of the fact that he constantly repeats himself, discusses things that have- So you showed one example of me mentioning the spear more than once, and that means I constantly repeat myself. Well done, Jack. You did it. ...nothing okay. to do with his analysis of the work, thoughtlessly calls out as criticisms parts of said work which are perfectly in line with the narrative and logic of that work. Just explain how that one isn't and how every fucking thing you said in this video is like not applicable to that statement, but okay. ...or straight up makes up plot holes. And... So he's referring to me not getting Black Panther's name, and I don't ever call that a plot hole, I simply ask... Uh, I simply state that we never find out this why he's called Black Panther. From, yeah, this is like a break from tradition, essentially. But he's like, you think that's a plot hole? It's like, no. No. Doesn't affect the plot at all, actually. Aw, oh, Chase Face on Twitter, someone added him and said, anyone defending this Mola person is embarrassing themselves for the whole world to see. You guys are amazing. We are amazing. Wait, who's, who's saying that? Um, I don't know that it's... Because I can only see it in, in Discord. It's from Perry Ronaldo Singletary Jr. <laughs> so, take that um, as you will. I, I agree. Uh, we are awesome. We are Chris. We are so we're Thank pretty you, Perry. excellent. Thank you. I Not accept the compliment it's happily. Mm. And you're correct. The we charms. are pretty fucking... Uh, we are the tits. I agree with that statement, too. Yeah, I like these statements. I'm not defending Mauler, I'm just here to promote my own channel at the end. <laughs> <laughs> and not because it's offering him the chance of a deeper analysis. Once again, we get a what is deep, Jack? shallow reading in which a man on the internet angrily like explains shallow. Oh, okay, I get it. ...things in yeah. a film that may or not be bad, may or may not come with an argument as to why they're bad, but certainly if you listen to the tone of his voice, we know how he feels. It's, all of that can be applied to this video. And it's yeah. so much worse because Mr. at least I'm attacking a movie and that I'm using references that are provable from the movie while you, you take another person's work out of context to prove something about them that's not true. This is why Wolf was doing the whole subhuman thing, probably. It's not cool to do this to another person. It's, it's actually mean. It is indicative of one's character and their principle. It's not just mean, it's like, I don't respect you as a person if you do that. I can't. F fuck. What the fuck? You dumbass movie. It's just... Oh, here's a long, boring summary of what happens in movie, and I pick so. out things in this right. that make it bad. If, uh, right. It's really important they ride rhinos in Wakanda. Movie loses points for that. I don't think I ever said movie loses points for that. I just point out... I don't do a conclusion other than ranting that I think the movie is fucking terrible. I'm pretty sure, but, uh... Fuck it, we don't need to get into the rhino criticism. The I mean, I would say when you criticize something, that is something that you considered the movie... Well, he's implying the cinema movie. sins thing again. Oh, Arbitrary numbers adding up to something. And for me, I'm more just pointing out all the things that I think are wrong, or bad, or inconsistent, or whatever. H hang on, did, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Did you just say that I'm not cinema sins, I'm just pointing out all the things I think are wrong? When the video series is literally called "Everything Wrong With." Well, I don't. I don't do. I said they don't count. Mola, Mola. I don't do numbers. Okay. I don't you're, do numbers. Long man bad. Oh, no, <laughs> please. Long so, man bad. Step. So someone said, um, "Subhuman doesn't seem accurate because no animal or mentally handicapped person would do something like this." That, li that uh. literally <laughs> implies that <laughs> it's elm, like yeah. mentally handicapped people are subhuman. <laughs> couldn't, couldn't, it, couldn't it be argued medically that they'd be subhuman, as in they, they are... I, I don't want to go down this route. <laughs> I think, I think, uh, I think midgets are subhuman because they're lower, and I think they're subhuman because they live in the ground. They so. live in the ground? <laughs> um, they live in their hobbit holes. Uh, yeah, well, so. well do, do we, can we like make an exception for Peter Dinklage? Peter Dinklage, Peter Dinklage, Peter Dinklage. Just get yeah, on the he, was very, he was very big in Infinity that's I true. Know. That is very true. He is, he's he big is. if you like lay down right in front of him. And, like, <laughs> Mola, don't go there, dude. You'll lose your channel for sure. Yeah. Uh, 
It's it's literally about how you define sub or below or uh, less than the standard, you know, healthy. But subhuman is typically used as an insult to be like you're below the respect of a human. So I understand. I yeah, take someone it back. pointed out, Rags, you're a doggo. Listen, you're obviously, li listen. I choose to be down here actually, so I can be uh, more aware of my surroundings. Mm -hmm. Secondly. Bad. Um, I was joking about the dwarves. I have many, many good friends who are dwarves, and they're wonderful, <laughs> wonderful people. My best friend is a dwarf. <laughs> yeah, I, shout out to all my, um, all my dwarf friends. I love dwarves. I love dwarves. Because I, I used to take a train that had a dwarf on it sometimes. So. I don't now, know wait a minute, Baller. No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, dwarves take up less space on the train. There's that's good to have dwarves around. I say, I say more dwarves. Look, Plus, I know dwarves. Dwarves are my favorite. No one loves dwarves more than me. Um, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna say Hideaway has pointed this out. Uh, so far the video is mostly about Mola's rant videos. Why? When people having problems with Mola's critique series, the actual long videos? Yeah, because the rage ones and the praise ones are both lower than an hour. Yeah, he doesn't go after what what the example should be if he's trying to make his point as coherently as possible. Um, he's going after the well, things Eric, that, Eric and, and, is yeah. targeting the critique series. That's the interesting part. We're, we're coming back to Eric in a second, and <laughs> he has the... more relevant things to say. Someone said, uh, "Rags, name the dwarf." As well, name the dwarf. Name the dwarf. Oh, listen. Uh, no, <clears throat> I feel like I I don't want to do that to him. He's a nice guy. He likes to lay low, so I, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to really put him out there like that. That's, that's a low, that's a low blow, Rags. That's a low joke. <laughs> I, I hate to be so short with this kind of stuff. <laughs> I just feel like it needs to be said. Important they ride rhinos in Wakanda. Movie loses points for that. In this movie, doesn't matter if the villain's motivations are entirely inconsistent. There are Think not. Can you can you justify that? I yeah, mean, justify yeah. that claim. Justify. Go for it. Yeah, please justify that claim. I'm curious. Good thing bad. I really like people who are definitive. How can he criticize you for saying thing bad at this point? Oh man, that's <laughs> tough. That's tough. Also, so this is going to be a quote where um I I'm talking to Wolf about how I like it when there's references mm. for things and you fully explain yourself. To me, that's gold. And obviously, the contradiction would be you don't do that in your rage and praise videos, and I'd be like, you're right, I don't. Yeah, that's why they're Rage and Praise videos. Good. They have their own names, Think their bad. own thing. Yep. Bad. I really like people who are definitive and they have strong evidence. That shit's gold. It's like, yes, you put in the work. Instead of just going, well, if you look at this over here, from this angle, in this way, and then look at this part in the film as well, then it's pretty good, right? It's like, hmm. We can insult Mahler's content all we like. You can try. You can but try, yeah. I don't really see that much value in just dunking on someone, like, there has to be a, at least a bit of insight. So with that in mind, I'd like to bring your attention to a certain timestamp. Uh, it's 52 minutes and 20 seconds into okay. part three of Mahler's- I'd like to remind you guys, I, I, I'm already feeling better with Eric on screen, and I know that sounds ridiculous, it's just because his take is just so much less retarded than Jack's. Is that Eric's baby photo on his, uh, what does it say? Buyer's Market? It says buyer's Mark? Buyer's Mark? Mark? Market? Buyer's Mark. I, I, don't I got nothing. I got nothing. The buyer. <laughs> Someone said, you sloth is back. Everyone's referencing, you will try. Uh... <laughs> of Mahler's critique of The Last Jedi. I mention this part because that's when he's done explaining the entire film in excruciating detail. But, you might be wondering, how does he continue talking for an hour after that, when, he, when he's done explaining the movie? Well, as it turns out, like, that's the good part. Like, the, the first four hours was just a massive lumbering preamble. This portion, oh. starting at 52... It's alright, we're gonna, we're gonna let that one... We've addressed him talking about that. I'm gonna let that one pass, Eric, because you're trying to compliment me here, and I appreciate it. Two minutes and 20 seconds into part three of Mahler's The Last Jedi Critique is truly a masterwork. It's... I think he's being facetious there, but I actually do think that he thinks that it's actually good stuff in that part. So we can take that, folks. Thumbs up. Yay. Yay. It's, it's such a condensed fires sequence of spicy takes that it makes the first bit seem like it, it's just you a, seem a confused as to what to do with your hands. A little bit, yeah. Um, 
So, like, he doesn't see the value in having the bits at the beginning when I'm going to do the summary anyway. And I understand how you reach that point. But as me and I think Jay were talking about at the beginning of the stream or near it, uh, the purpose of the stuff before the summary is, is evidence. And there's explanations in there, too. Yeah, it's, it's definitely not just a summary. There's, calling it just a summary would be, I would say, incredibly bad faith. Because, I mean, even if you disagree with the points you're making during that time, there are clearly points being made. Like, he's weeding out all the casuals. Now that I've told you that, you can just skip. No, I think your videos the... are very approachable. Weeding out the casuals, okay. The useless garbage, and get to the stuff that matters. And I recommend you do, because it provides a lot of insight into how Mahler views his craft. But also, we don't have all day, so I'll give you the short version. If there's one thing that can be taken away from this, it's that Mahler sees airtight storytelling as the, the the absolute most important thing to strive for when you're when you're making a movie. If, say, you ever had to make a choice between logical consistency or bolstering some other aspect of the of the work. Uh, see, I just need you to be more specific with that claim. I'd be like, when are those two things opposed to each other instead of working together? I would be conf I just need, you know, but like, yeah, I'll let him go for that one. Yeah. I, I would say that you're not saying, it, you're not saying, don't do this, hey. do that. You're saying, do both. Yes, 100%. You ever had to make a choice between logical consistency or bolstering some other aspect of the, of the work, you always, always, always choose logical consistency. For an example of this, uh, if you Let say Georgie go. <laughs> it is The Last Jedi by saying that it has a strong theme of failure and progression. That would be Mahler a motif. Be saying, go back to build Georgie, get away from Pennywise. A theme Don't can be defined story. as a motif. Um, oh. it gets in, that gets into semantics, though, and I don't know if we want to go there. <laughs> I'll just, You're I'll just get down off my high horse. Well, the problem is people will tell you, you don't know what a theme means, and then you check the definition, and then they go, that's not what a theme means, and you're like, oh my god, help my brain. What do you mean by theme? Argumentative then... misfire, because, oh, geez, in, in his chat. words, the themes <laughs> go against the logical consistency. Like, like, some logical consistency had to be sacrificed in order to include it. I wouldn't put it that way. Logical consistency was sacrificed for the theme. I would say that um, the way in which they execute their story, they didn't realize that they were sending conflicting messages. Um, the theme is made very clear by Yoda, so we know what it is. We have the statement, failure, the best teacher is, or whatever it is. Um, and then you're like, well, look at the events in the film, and you have characters that are not failing, and we're being told that they are, and then they learn lessons that put them in worse positions, and so it's just confusing. Um, it's apparently applicable that Rey failed to convert Kylo to the light side. And it's like, what do you mean? She, she just went there. She for some reason thought that, that, that he was a good guy, and then it turns out he was a neutral guy. Which is better than bad, but then her refusing to hang out with him makes him evil again. It's so like, what are you trying to say, film? What do I say to this? Well, most, if not all, plot lines and character developments we just went over for the last four hours don't make sense. They weren't supported by the previous films, nor were they well executed. They simply happened. The best example being Pose. He didn't fail throughout the movie when you actually consider his actions. Finn only failed because the writer decided that a BB unit saw his team. Nazi! Things like this forced me to come to the conclusion that yes... Why did he just throw me in there randomly? I said forced. Force diversity, uh, get it? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Wolf's video was yeah. good, and yours was shit, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> That's I, don't know, I don't know why. I don't know why you want to remind people about that, but all right, you're. And that yes, Ryan Johnson wanted this theme, and he shoehorned events to make it happen. But this makes the writing even worse. He put a theme over the characters, over the plot, to force the characters around the theme, to make you think about it on your own personal level. I guess I did kind of say that. Is I just need to qualify what I what I say there in case anybody's not getting it. It's it's just that um, the, the idea of theme comes above everything else and makes the movie perfect, even if nothing makes sense yeah, in relation to the theme. So when themes are especially the nature it, of themes can be so broad and poorly defined. And they can pretty much be 
kind of just summoned into existence by the way you want to interpret things. Like anything could be the theme or mm-hmm. anything might not be because it's just so ethereal in a way. Um, I don't particularly hold themes myself to be like up there in terms of a movie's importance because of that. Um, I just think it's a really low sort of bar. Uh, I like talking about themes once once all the, the things that are great about the movie have sort of been made clear, and then the theme is like the icing on the cake in terms of, look at how all this connects when you really step back. Look at the lesson that the film is trying to tell us through all of these events. While other people would be like, as long as there's a good theme, the movie was good. It's icing, not cake. It's the thing, you can have a good theme and a, like a logically coherent plot. Those that two things are mutually the exclusive. Theme instead exactly. of fights the theme. <laughs> to appear more intellectual. Although... He seems to think that a theme is just noticing that a thing happens a lot, which is an odd way of looking at it. Like, like there's a part in the video where he just completely shoots down the entire idea of interpreting themes by, by picking a word from a. Ha- so it's the my point is to shoot down the entire idea. It's that um, the theme is so arbitrary in the Last Jedi, in terms of yeah, how you apply it, you can it. apply anything to it. And that's not the case for every movie, it's not the case for every story, but The Last Jedi, people are desperate to apply themes to it in order to defend it, and I try to prove that. And I would say, if that's not what he thinks themes are, tell us what themes are. Yeah, it would be nice to know what he considers to be themes if he's... Yeah, see, you, know. you gotta keep them yeah. ethereal and floaty and out there, but I mean, if like if I was doing a video response to somebody now, and they said, you are this, or you are not that, this is not that, and I would be like, okay, well... You're gonna have to tell me what you mean then. Or just at least because explain where I've where guessing. I've misstepped. Maybe I'm on point, but I've missed a certain detail. Uh, of interpreting themes by by picking a word from a hat. Uh, for for his example, it was resurrection, and then pointing out all the times that th- some th- someone or something resurrects during the film. Like aha, this is equally arbitrary. Therefore, themes are bullshit. Yeah, oof. nearly there. See you so close. Equally oh, so arbitrary, so therefore, is bullshit in this movie. But themes in general? I love themes. And they can be measured mechanically and emotionally for what it does for you personally. Um, you, you get An example would just be like uh, some, some guy who's like heavy into how capitalism is destroying the world or whatever. There's a movie where, where a guy is wearing two boots and, he's, and, and, and they're very worn and he goes, uh, so that's tying into the theme because it's worn workman shoes is to try and imply that the working man is kind of beaten down by the 1% having benefited off it while he can't even afford new shoes. And then you find out that that character is actually not working and that those shoes are ones that he just casually put on, they belong to his dad or something. And you're like, well, that doesn't really, doesn't really apply. What you just said is more interpretation, more subjective. It's got no mechanical reference. And that's how I look at themes. And I consider it both important. You tell me that you've drawn something out of a text that I don't even think is there mechanically. It doesn't matter if it's a subjective argument, if you're talking about what it means to you. Because so I can't take that away from you, and I wouldn't want to. That is my take. <laughs> <laughs> Kylo allows the dark side in him to falter and resurrect part of the light. Poe resurrects the part of him that wants to maintain the cause rather than trying to be a hero. Leia is resurrected by the Force. I don't know. I, I like the, the the whole failure thing wasn't just people pointing out that characters fail. Like I, I thought a, a pretty big part of it was that Kylo Ren doesn't learn from his mistakes, like like the mistakes that he made in The Force Awakens, and just- and I think you have to try really hard to staple that into the theme because Kylo is so confusing when you try and look at him consistently in terms of his choices. Yeah, he's not on a he's not on a path. He's zigzagging all around. Who mm. knows what he'll be in the film again? Our our thing. You're not allowed to vote for Kylo in our thing, because he's going to be the most inconsistent, pretty much as a guarantee. <laughs> so we have to boot him out. Just continues to fail while everyone else just moves on. I don't know. It's, it's worth talking about, though. So, um, I talk about it in the video. A lot. And yeah. And he said, it's worth talking about, though. I agree with you, Eric, and I feel like I did. So... Yeah, I'm not really sure how you came to that conclusion, but okay. 
Anyways, uh, the same argument is used to, to discredit people who say that the visual splendor of The Last Jedi is a selling point. Uh, the term style over substance is used. Yeah. Next up would be the phrase style over substance. This is of course in reference to the idea that you put your eye candy before your writing. Films like Speed Racer, Enter the Void, Transformers, 300, and Avatar are also used as examples in this sort of genre if you can call it that. Some of those examples are far worse than others, but you get the point. The Last Jedi has a strong pattern of style over substance. Let's go through a few so you know what I'm talking about. Phasma disappears and then reappears in smoke, making no sense, but it looks imposing. The hyperspace jump makes no sense in universe, but it looks incredible. The destruction of the bridge on the Radis makes no sense, but it looks impactful. The bomber ships make no sense, but they reference World War II bombers, which looks... Reference, people. Um, this is in my summary, so you, if you had disagreed with any of my takes on these, all of my evidence and, and breakdown is in the plot summary part for all of these. Yep. That is the purpose probably, of it. Yeah. Each of those things is talked about individually, yeah. Striking. Phasma falling into a sudden pit of fiery death makes no sense, but it looks intense. And furthermore, he... I, I don't understand how he can watch that and come to the conclusion that you're saying the visuals don't matter. Like you spoiled it, Jay. <laughs> but no, you're right. Uh, so yeah, point being, writing is sacrificed in favor of creating uh, engaging visuals or I don't know, well composed, impactful imagery. The, I Again, guess those are words are applicable. You can have good writing and striking imagery. Don't sacrifice either of those things to add to the other. Yeah, like, you can just you can just strive for both. Is that uh. And along with all this, uh, he claims that stuff like visual splendor doesn't even matter. It doesn't what? matter compared to the when talking about writing, right? And I think he's about to show a clip of this. Just listen to what I say. Because it's just going to age, and it takes money to generate. Imagine what the end result of this film would have been without the money behind it to fund the actors, the set pieces, and the CGI. These things don't matter in the grand scheme, not even the assets poached from Star Wars as a franchise. They do not matter to the writing. The effects will age. The shots will age. Every choice will age. Writing and storytelling is timeless. I agree. He says it doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. It doesn't matter compared to the writing. So yeah, the if uh, I, I don't disagree that there's room to interpret that I'm saying that our visuals don't matter, I think that's just a poor take when I've said that, and that the more likely take would be that I'm saying that these things don't matter to writing quality, which is intrinsic in that writing is writing and those things are visuals. But visuals do matter in films. I would never have said that visuals do not matter. I think that's a pretty stupid thing to say. This is honestly just a bewildering way of looking at film. Like, like I, I know there's a lot of online media critics who really value logical consistency, perhaps a little too much, but too much. I haven't seen anyone else say that it is like straight up the only thing that can ever make a film good and everything else is just- Because I haven't said it either. Yeah, because <laughs> You've still not heard anyone say it. It's a distraction. You know you can just read a book, right? Like, how can visuals be neutral in a visual medium? I are agree. they neutral or do they are they neutral or do they not matter? What about books with pictures in them, Eric? Also, I was, hey, I was just about to say that words are medium when you read them. I um, I kind I, I mostly agree with his counter argument to the straw man he created. Down straw <laughs> man, you go. You were a bad argument. <laughs> And it's an especially strange critique to level at Star Wars, of all things, which, no, as, as, as far as I can tell, is a series that is mostly known for its imagery. That's why I like them. No, no, no. What? Imagery and visuals aren't necessarily the same thing at all. Um, I would say it's more known for its characters. Um, more known everywhere. Complicated question, but I would say that Star Wars is, is fucking amazing because of great characters and an incredible use of special effects for its time. It's, I'd say it's iconic just for like everything in it, isn't it? Pretty it's much, kind of. Very yeah. few parts of the mu the soundtrack of Star Wars is incredibly iconic. the The world building is like renowned as amazing world building. The characters are visually and other considered, you know, incredibly iconic characters. I know I phrased that really well. You know, I, I, I agree with you, but um, first and foremost of what I think makes the, the, the makes it strong would be the characters, but I mean, what is it best known for? It's a complicated question. Darth Vader, you could immediately recognize from just a silhouette. 
yes. and like a single line of his dialogue. He is iconic for basically everything. Or just his breathing. You don't need to have him talk oh, yeah. at all. He's iconic like with the things he says, the sounds he makes, and the way he looks. He neutral. He's essentially a trifecta. Someone said what about comics? Um so every medium has different standards. It's every craft, right? Comic book writing would be different compared to script writing. Even though I think they would share a lot of similar things, considering I mean, they even have... then, I mean, I've read some really great comics with really great writing. Um, yeah. Berserk. I mean, I know... It's a, whatever. Manga. Like, it's still a comic. His counter is Berserk's like... Really good. Death Note's great. His counter is like, I'm looking at movies as if they're just books or something. And I'm just like, no, there, there would be different standards. But he's... This is the thing. I can see how he got here. And it sucks that he got here, because I think that he was like seconds away from understanding what I was actually saying. ...in a visual medium. And it's an especially strange critique to level at Star Wars, of all things, which, as, as, as far as I can tell, is a series that is mostly known for its imagery. Nah. That's why I like... Yeah, I yeah, can't say it's mostly known for its imagery. I would be like, it's mostly known for Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker, probably at the peak. I'd say the most iconic thing from Star Wars, as far as I'm... As far as, like, you know, my the understanding would be, I am your father. That is... I don't know. What do you guys think of... That alone. True. Oh, yeah. That's, like, one of the most recognizable musical compositions ever. So, yeah. Yeah, it's complicated, but, I mean, we'll let him go for that. Them. Like, I saw them without any nostalgia goggles, and I thought they were great. Like, I... I... I had a really good time with, with the imagery. I thought it looked and felt really nice. It had an ambience to it, and it also had huge-ass emotional set pieces, and, and I loved it all. Mm -hmm. And that's also why I didn't really like The Force Awakens, because it but you felt like a the little... Last Jedi? Uh, in themes. Well, the, cool the Last Jedi does have striking if... imagery and huge emotional set pieces. You can't say it doesn't have those. Yeah, we've. I think I've spoken to someone else about this. I was like, to say it has an emotional set piece, I'd be like, sure. If, if that is your standard, then I can understand why you would feel that way about the film. Yeah. Whether um, or not it's a strong emotional set piece or yeah. a weak one, that's another conversation. I mean, they. I guess they tried. Mm. The things and, again, oh. that you have to. For some people, the fact that there are writing errors won't detract from the emotion they feel when they're watching the scene. I don't personally empathize with that, but clearly there are people. Clearly there are people? Clearly yeah. there are people. Okay, I clearly there are people. people. <laughs> like the Force Awakens. Wait, did I cut out there, is that? Yeah, but I, we know what you said, though. It felt I agree, a some people will clap at anything. Mm -hmm. Comparison, it, it felt very standard. It didn't, it didn't have the ambiance. And in turn, that's why I liked The Last Jedi, because there are some shots in that movie that are going to be remembered alongside... Like, genuine question, does this feel a little bit more like he's actually trying to share how he feels as opposed to manipulate something? Yes. And I'm like, kind for a moment, that's why I'm like more pulled into this, because I'm like, you're not trying to fuck with me, thank you. You're just actually just talking for a bit. And it's not to say that Eric hasn't there. fucked up previously, because he absolutely has, it's just that this is so refreshing in this video, this portion, because it's like, oh, thank Christ. Does, um, what, at... is, um, what does Jack think about The Last Jedi? Does he like it? Probably, dude. Probably. Because, yeah, the fact that you said probably, I'm thinking, is there a way that Eric could have come out and said that he thought it was terrible and awful? I don't know. out into the the double sunset in a new hope like there there's just so much emotional content in some of the events that sure. happen in that movie some of the the images that are shown on screen and that that, that might there explain why I, I didn't mind so much that the bombers were designed impractically but here's the skinny Mahler has heard all of this in a critique of the last jedi part three uh, Mahler implies that that argument and arguments like it are an attempt to shield the film from criticism. Like, he makes up a hypothetical episode 9, where, like... Just, would you say the way he made it there was attempting to shield the film from criticism? No, he was making subjective he, arguments. Yeah, yeah he, he said, he acknowledged that this could be considered a flaw, and then goes on to say, but I liked it because I don't prioritize things like that. Yeah. Personally, I don't know and if he I knows that the, that's fine with me. Yeah, but, 
but we yeah. we have encountered people and we constantly do who make nonsensical so, arguments in order to defend the film like there are people who will say that same thing and then go see the film isn't fucking bad and you're like well no you just stitched that on the end like you can still objectively qualify loads of things in the movie that are flawed you can't just say but i don't care about those and then say the movie is good because of that a hypothetical episode nine where like everything is like completely off the wall like all all the threads are dropped it's hilarious honestly all right it's time once and for all to destroy this argument what if the ninth episode of the series opens with luke saying lol i'm sleepy i guess and he jumps wearing only a nappy into space he chops every last death star star destroyer etc in half and kicks the supremacy in he then stands on the sun and says, Kylo, you must return to the Jedi because they are actually okay and really cool. And so Kylo does. Would that be something you consider bad? Because if you did, if you said to me that this is terrible writing, do you know what I'd say back to you? You don't search for logic in a Star Wars movie. A movie full of laser weapons, noisy explosions in space, and little Muppets running around. You need to remember that this is a movie first with visual- It's practically an argument from principle. It's like- Pretty much, yeah. Well, it's 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 trying to find people's limits. Yeah, what's and the once line they for admit, you? Yeah, once there's that line that's established, well, now they like, have to qualify right, the line, uh -huh, and they can't. Yeah. It's not based on principle; it's based they on feeling. Can't. Exactly, that's the point. A metaphor, and not a documentary about real things happening in space. And really, this just <laughs> speaks to Mahler's utter narrow-minded. Are you going to answer the question? Art, You're not even going right? to answer the question, are you? Eric, he called you're me narrow-minded. Even... That counts, Rags. You're not even going to answer the question, are you, Eric? And really, Here's a clip this of just the cat. speaks to Mahler's utter narrow-mindedness when it comes to art. Like the only way a film can be good or bad is based on how airtight the script is. And if you what? imply that there are other ways to to judge a film, then he says you just don't have standards at all. Ooh, that's a good straw man. <laughs> Like, oh, come on, man. Eric. Wow. Oof. You're Why didn't he just that? answer the question, Eric? If it was my video, I would have answered Mahler's question. <laughs> so, like, I... yours, everyone has a standard that they use called the subjective one, where you go, this movie is something I like, and I base that on how much I liked it. That is that is a standard. Um. So for me to say you don't have any standards, if you tell me, I just, I don't know, I just kind of like the movie. And I base that on how much I enjoyed it. I'd be like, yeah, that's fine. But if you say... I don't know, I think the movie is uh, very well crafted in terms of a film, because I liked it. I'd be like, that's a non sequitur. Someone said Georgie's trying to kill himself to escape this <laughs> living hell. Yeah. But it's okay to think that a movie is well crafted because you like it, but that's an argument. You can assume that because you liked something it was probably well made. Like, that's a reasonable assumption. Uh, you can but assume it, <laughs> but if you state it, it's different. Against it. But you can... Yeah, you, you shouldn't state, state that definitively based on that evidence, but... If you, can you can't it as, show it, I think you don't it was know probably. It. Like, like Hi, Mahler. If I were I'm... to say... Oh, he's addressing if us. Say, if I were to mention, like, a movie in passing, and say, uh... Just, just oh, uh... I think it was probably quite good, objectively, because... I, well, I really liked it, so I assume that means it's good, and then I wasn't trying to make any real points about it, I would say that would be fine. I will agree with Arco that Georgie has the best arguments in this video. <laughs> Consistently the best arguments. Wolf and Rags too. Oh, that jumped ahead a little bit. Oh, oh there are and other Rags. ways to, to judge a film. Wait for then it, wait for he it. says you just don't have standards at all. Hi, Mahler. And probably Wolf and Rags too. If you're watching- He didn't say hi to Jay. <laughs> <laughs> this, then I have a couple of uh, film recommendations that I'd like to give you because uh, oh god, oh, boy. while I'd like to have a discussion about these things, I do not want to do it exclusively in reference to the Last Jedi. I hope you understand. Yeah, you can't win that For one, mate. <laughs> I mean, he said he he's not exclusively implying that he would be willing to. So first on the docket is a film called Funny Games. Uh, Any of you guys seen this? No, no. Never what do you it. think? I've seen Never it. And uh, I thought it was alright, but if he wants me to see it again, to have like a coherent thing to say about it, I, I guess I could watch it again. But um, um, I've got nothing to say about it definitively right now. I just, what I remember is that it's 
like neighbors when two people are moving in, I think. Turn out to like capture them and put the like arrest them into their house and then weird things happen. Um but I that's my memory cut completely. I'd have to watch the film again. Be sure to, to get the American version. Like usually remakes are worse, but this is a director remaking his own work and actually improving on it in a lot of ways. Second is a film called Sorry to Bother You. It came out um I have not seen that. I've never heard of it. Never heard of it. Last year now. And the last film I'd like you to check out is called Under the Skin. Have you guys seen that? I've never heard of it. Nope. I've seen it and I really like it. Um, but I can guess why he's chosen it. It could be argued as an art house film or an artsy film. Uh, That's all you need. But I, oh, I got a couple artsy films for Eric. Well, I was going to say that does artsy mean cannot be quantified objectively? In which I would disagree vehemently. Uh, I have some. I have objective, objective arguments for why Under the Skin is good. Those last few film recommendations, so. Yeah, no, these are just recommendations. We don't know why he's doing this, but I, my assumption is that he's going to enjoy trying to listen to me break these films down objectively, perhaps. I'm not sure. But Under the Skin is more than possible. And I quite liked that movie. It's, a, it's, it's creepy and strange, but it made sense. Yes, I am, in fact, giving you homework. But um, if you want to, you can you can give us some film recommendations too, if, if you Haven't like. Haven't we already been doing homework for the past seven hours? <laughs> um, I would like to give you loads of film recommendations: Teeth, Black Panther, um, Catwoman two thousand four, uh, the Emoji <laughs> movie. Uh, fuck, um, Teeth is genuinely the best movie ever made. Birdemic and Birdemic two. Um, watch them out of order because it makes more sense that way. Uh, <laughs> right, um, what are some more amazing movies for them to watch uh, I actually got three unironic examples okay. um, Pan's Labyrinth The Grey and The Road three I of my not... favorite movies ever I liked The Grey and I liked The Road I was going to say I like all three of them but uh, um, it, I mean legitimately if he wants movie recommendations from me the problem is like I I need to know the criteria. Am I just recommending a film I like, or am I recommending a film that's supposed to assist in some form of an argument? Thor the Dark World. Yeah, Thor the Dark World. <laughs> well, <why not? laughs> I think are underrated that we haven't seen that would help your points. Underrated that I think they may not have seen that would help my points. The Last Jedi is all I need to prove my points. The person saying Spirited Away in the chat is objectively correct. Um, because the, the points, it's a theoretical statement, right? So if my points work with The Last Jedi, the idea is that they work within how movies function, all the, all the standards, so there, there is no movie it can't apply to. And you might be like, well, I, I, I just don't see how that could apply to, and then names a movie. And I'd be like, so you need me to watch that movie and then have a conversation with you of how it would be broken down, I guess. And it's like, I don't know that... It's a, do you know what I mean? Like, it's just like, why... Would it be fair for me to do that for someone just on the, the assumption that they just want to understand how the system works when I'm trying to imply that you should be able to grasp it from just how it broken down The Last Jedi so I don't know that it would ever be something you would grasp? You know what I mean? It's kind of like a, isn't that a useless endeavor for me? Um, I'm happy to talk about movies with... It's not your responsibility with, to do something like that. It, I'm happy to discuss movies with with Eric, but um, the criteria there that I need to pick one that'll prove my points, whatever. I'm like every movie works, so I, I'll just pick. I'll watch yours, I suppose. But th this is this is assuming they even want to talk to us, which is a questionable thing, considering. I don't understand. Sorry. Uh, just I was gonna say, considering um how this video has gone, like how dreadful this is, and how we felt about it. So I don't know what's gonna happen. Oh, Jay, I need to ask Arrival. you something. Um, no. No. Yes, no. they should watch... Do you, not, do you not agree with me that they should watch... A... They should watch what? Well, no, Arrival. the problem is that they think it would be good because they have terrible opinions on everything. <gasps> um, Jay, I need to ask you something. How in the hell have you seen Spirited Away but you haven't seen literally anything else? <laughs> um, because it's one of my uh, friends favorite childhood films and she recommended it to me adamantly uh, you've, okay. you've seen spirited away but you haven't seen stand by me the shawshank redemption the green he needs to see um gladiator uh, the last samurai do you know what i think Terminator. what this podcast is missing is more lists of films i haven't seen 
I yeah. think that um Yeah, should I should I pull up the the rest of the movies that I have I, so that I, I can ask you more? Eric, switch. okay, the point is Eric, you should watch God's Not Dead. That's the one. That it that is yeah. the one. That's the one. It's the only movie you need, honestly. It'll it'll do stuff for your magic spirit. All totally. Right. Um so yeah. If I come onto ESA so and it south. turns out oh, 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 Birth oh, of a sorry. Nation. Let's let's make sure we get the full quote here. Okay. If I come onto EFAP and it turns out you haven't seen any of these, uh, I, I'm just gonna step right the fuck back. All right, out. then you Sorry. have to watch uh-huh. The Gray, The Road, and Pans. And Arrival. I'm also gonna step out if Rags is there. Oh, shit. <laughs> I'm also gonna step out if Rags is there. That's what he said. Oh, um, well. As you're aware, that they've Sorry. now agreed that you could be here if you're silent, and we're not uh, taking that either. Yeah, that's fucking retarded. Um, treat Rags like a human being, please. And you could be like, you don't do that for us. Like, pfft. Why would I we want live to? as I get? Yeah, we we absolutely after, after this it. video. Why would we have any inclination to? Yeah, so the the standards will be uh you, me, and Wolf will be the primary people talking, and Rags will cut in when he feels he wishes to. But it's not like if you want it to be that it's you're addressing me and Wolf specifically, then Rags can be here and Rags can cut in if he feels like he has something relevant to say. Like that that would be our. Would you guys be okay with that? I mean, I'll be here and speak when I have something to say, but that's... I know this sounds ridiculous, but I... Rags will speak when he wants to speak. If that's if that's unacceptable, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, man. Um, then you... you need to grow up is what you need to do. Why would you treat Rags as a human being when he literally self That's true. And the reason I self-identify as that is because um, I am one deep um, down on every level, including physical. Please, please don't humanize Rags. Have to level. <laughs> don't humanize me <laughs> how fucking dare you how dare you um, I, will make, but yeah, I will make the barking meme noises I, I swear still, to god I will like I said <laughs> I still kind of liked his section so much I mean, more than better. Jack's because it's just I mean, so it was better than saying, that's not what we said and we still did that because it's he's, he's scary, got another but... section coming uh, just for um, clarification speaking oh, of yeah. that that section yeah. it, it's it's coming up on an hour and a half since we said an hour ago we gonna keep going or I'm gonna. Um, I, I want to nail this in one stream, but I don't expect you guys to to stay. Um, obviously, that would be applicable to Jay as well. Because I got up and I hopped on the stream, so I need to eat and such. I'll, yeah. I'll tell well, you. I, I honestly have a headache after all of this. It's all good. Uh, what I will do is put out some feelers to see who can uh, act as replacement. Because I think we'll have at least another hour to go on this. Bring in yeah. Fring Daddy G. If I um, oh, I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll just mute myself because when I'm done, I can hop back in. I just I can't. I need to eat. I gotta get something in me. Yeah, may- maybe I'll do that too. I really just need to eat and like stand up, head. walk around because I I pretty much woke up and it's a nice toasty three degrees outside. I can maybe right. stick my bald head in the snow and maybe that'll. It cool looks me off. like it will be Das Bullshit and Smud Boy potentially, which are the two that came on together before. <laughs> Oh, Chase Face is offering as well, so that's three potential <laughs> fill-ins. Um, well, I will, I'll hop, I'll leave the call, I'll still be in the room though, so you could always message me here. Okie dokie, and do you want to do the same? I'll off? just mute myself. Oh, I'll well I was going to say, the thing is, if we have oh. a potential two or three people join, it's going to stack mm. up the visual. Stack. Gotcha. Okay. So, um, are you yeah, saying no. that visuals are more important than um, the actual content? The- yeah, the content of our character. Yeah, that's are not. Some um, kind of I don't consider racist. you people. Are you a people, structuralist? Okay. Are, is that are what you, you are? Oh my God, Mahler! And it is Martin Luther King Jr. Day. How dare you? No, it's not. Not for me. It's it, gone now. Well, it is in <laughs> America, the only country. So. It's only. Let me see what the time is. I I can't believe it is fucking eight fifty two p.m. That's incorrect, factually. It's nine fifty two for me. Oh hmm. boy. Two fifty two. Shut up. Counted. Uh, yeah, Jay, what's your plans? Um, well, I literally had to, um, and this may sound confusing, uh, set an alarm to get up early for the stream, despite the fact in my time zone it started at 8pm. I can understand that, uh, but what, what is your longevity uh, um, expected to be? I can essentially go as long as I need to, since All right, then. Um, <laughs> I literally... Don't need to sleep for a good ten hours. Which means it'd be me, Jay. Sh- I, I can't. I don't want it to be five people. So it's Chase, Smud, or Das bullshit. Um, how do I choose? <laughs> Pull names out of a hat. 
Chat, chat. Oh, if you want to, uh, no chase fight. Smud boy. Wait, say, so chase is one. Uh, Smud boy is two, and that's bullshit is three. Chat can vote, and we'll go by what Jay thinks is there the the most. By what <laughs> Jay thinks is there the most. I've, I've <laughs> seen a lot of Jareds. <laughs> That's, that's just a lot of numbers, man. That is hard to figure out, isn't it? <laughs> Type J for Jared. I you saw a lot of twos. A... You can make a straw I'm just doing control F to see what is there is the, the most. You know what, can I do a straw poll? Yeah, it'll take just a second to set one up. That's the most threes. I feel so inhumane doing this, but I mean, I can't think of any fairer way to choose. Alright, we've got a negative The chat five. has spoken, J for Jared. Jay, Jay, it's a bunch of Jays. Okay. Wait, Jay's already here. <laughs> Georgie. All right. Um, my offer is they can come on EFAP, but only if Georgie is there. Only <laughs> if Georgie is there. <laughs> Georgie uh, can be their third one. Uh, fine. Okay. So this is gonna work, right? Yeah. Okay. All the right, poll is go going. Excellent. Well, vote on the poll, Wolf. God. Yeah, why do I have to vote? Put straw poll in description, not chat. That's a clever idea, person who said that. Yeah, because it's scrolling too fast for me to go there. It is well, now can, in description. You can, once you scroll up, once you scroll up, it doesn't scroll anymore. Yeah, you'll be fine. Once uh, you do that, and it'll only be for a moment. So everybody, uh, vote on who you want in. You can. It's multiple choice. Oh, I'm going to vote four. for all three, and then look at the results. Okay, uh, but Jay, before I leave, Sorry? before I leave, um, Swiss Army Man? <laughs> no. Blades of Glory? No. <laughs> Hancock? Yes. I, Robot? Yes. Napoleon Dynamite? No, uh, have, have you not, got, have, are there any Will Smith films you haven't seen? Wanted to stop. There are a lot of Will Smith films. What about Nightcrawler? Oh, no. Damn. I mean, I haven't. I definitely haven't seen After Earth. That's that's okay. Don't. <laughs> that's, that's, okay. Racist. that's racist. That's uh, racist. Galaxy Quest. Yes. The way way back. No. School oh. of Rock. Actually, yes, I love Jay, School have of you Rock. seen um? Have you seen Tombstone? No. That's no. Okay. I like it. I like it too. Kingsman: The Secret Service. I have seen both of them. Phantom Boys. No. Robin Hood the... Men in Tights. No. <laughs> per the Perfect Storm. No. Oh. Cinderella Man. No. Games the Imagine... of New York. No. All right, Captain Phillips. You... No. Jaws. No. The Ring. Really? No. Schindler's List. No. <laughs> the Future. Wait, what? Really? That wasn't like required. I mean, I watched that bike <laughs> in high school. Apparently not. I had to watch the oh. Dead Poets Society. In high I, I went to high school in oh, Germany. So did I. So, yeah. Okay, uh, The Fugitive. Uh, no. Hook. No. Oh. Castaway. No. You've already oh. asked me that. One. Guys, oh. the vote. All right. right. So Smud Boy is Wait. absolutely in the lead, but the other two are like neck and neck. Like literally one vote between them. Oh boy, it's what? close. They're both at thirty percent. I would okay. Get... Oh. <laughs> Okay, Shit. what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to say, like, all right, in 20 seconds, voting's done, and then you just pause it, and I'll just take a screenshot, and then I'll let you know. What the all right, all right, that's fair enough. So it. we're close. I'm going to post it one more time. 19. We are closing the voting in 20, 19, 19 18, 18, 17, All right, Jay, 16, Red Dawn. 15, 14, no. 14, the Truman 15, Show. 15, 12, 12, no, 12, although Men that's, in Black. Def that's really half on the list. I've seen all nine, three, eight, eight, I think. Seven. Six, seven. Six, five. five four, uh, no. Three, Pan's Labyrinth? Two, two, one, no, but that's one. way Dodge high ball? up on the list. Ding, 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 all right, ding, ding. we have... All right, oh, we have... Here are the results. Shut your pie hole. <laughs> no. All right. So, number one is Smud Boy with 184 votes. Number two, uh, no, I don't have anything to beat. Uh, well, I mean, <laughs> oh, I'm looking at it right now. No, it's a Das Bullshit is number two, and he only won. He has 150, he has 146 votes, and he only won by four votes. Yeah, and those two keep tying. So, um, the consolation prize would be I'll totally bring uh, Chase Face on to an EFAP at some point in the future because I feel bad that he came so close. But I just don't want it he, to be too stacked up. 
He's I'm just so sitting glad. in bed right now, like oh, hugging the, his knees, crying. Uh, He's like, I don't really want to come on tonight. All right, let me ask so, one more, so Jay, before I guess. Didn't get a really old. Jay, but, one more yeah, last so one before I go. All right, my friend is asking me if you have seen No Country for Old Men. I have. Hey! Oh. Hey! That's what I saw at school. Wait, did did you bring? Oh, never mind. I was about to say it's like you brought everybody after all. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, this is the thing. Once Rags and, and, and uh, Tonal Loke go, we'll have <laughs> four. Yeah, we'll have four. And it's just that if we bring in Chase as well, uh, we'll have five. And I don't know. D does everyone think that could work? Haven't they been so for his expectations, we did, bring we did five once, and it was because Doomcock was only available for a small amount of time, but things got confused in scheduling, and we had five people for like an hour, I think. Right. I think we should bring on um, no bullshit. No, no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> is my audio okay? By the way, I know we had a problem yeah. earlier. Uh, oh, I was going to list okay. off a load of people as a joke, okay. and now I can't think of anyone else. That is uh, the link that you may require. Oh, thank you. Well, I shall be leaving. Very well, sir. So, thank you so much. Okay. And I, I wanted to say thanks to Rags, but he's gone already, so I'll just have to DM him <laughs> later. But uh. Thanks for hanging out for, um, you know, 6 hours and 41 minutes. <laughs> yeah, my whole, my whole day. <laughs> so Jay is going to beat that record the second you leave. Hey, I was done that eight-hour stream with... Um... That's true, that's true. Also, before um, the stream was started, I was, I was here before you, so... Uh, yeah, there's all, all these different tiebreaker things. Hey, hey, I'm the better friend. He calls me for movies, like, three times a week. Well... I, I don't have to come back to that, I just said well. Exactly. All right. See ya. Doodles. Bye. Um, Jay, you're the overseer. Could we survive five people or not? Uh, sure. I, d I don't see why not. Jay, that's not an overseer thing to say. You have to be definitive. <laughs> um, yeah, no. God damn it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like, my guilt is getting to me. I, I kind of want Chase to be here now just because of the fact that he came so close. And it's just, I'm about to bring awesome. him in. I'm gonna say, like, that was a nail biter, dude. <laughs> I'm going to say, say bring his ass in. We can't. We can survive it, but uh, if it goes wrong, then we can't. Okay. During, so, um... so just just to be clear, I'm all for this unless it goes badly. In which <laughs> all case, for it unless it goes bad. That makes sense. I mean, we had this number during the uh, major leaf thing. We oh, did, but it was a little bit chaotic. Like uh, there was a bit of like everyone wants to speak on something. It's tough with five. Boys. Hey. You you are very quiet. Hello. I'm probably not going to say a ton because I'm not um, intimately acquainted with Mahler's original video, but uh, I will be here for psychoanalysis. Mm -hmm. Can you I have boost seen the microphone? All of his videos. Yeah, you're very soft. Is this better? That's slightly better. Find a way to fix it. You're way too quiet because you're on 200% for me. Weird. Uh, if I do it anymore, I'll kind of be peaking. Is that okay? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, go back down like. Just, just slowly 20%. turn it while talking, and then I'll tell okay. you when to stop. I'm talking, and I'm going a little bit down. I'm going down incrementally. And right there. That should be good. Okay. Cool. I'll just change it if I need to. And then, yeah, so. Yeah, that's fine. That's the link. We are 39 minutes into this debauchery. What do you think of it, uh, people who have just arrived here? So, uh, I guess, go from left to right. Uh, uh, Daspocia, what do you think? Well, um, I'm actually surprised you're still doing it because um, I was watching it like I came in late, so I had to just kind of watch it as it was going. And I was pretty sure by the time uh, I was done that it was going to be over, but we're still here. It's pretty awesome. Um, but anyway, on the subject of the actual videos, yeah, this is frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> this is very frustrating, and uh, I love to be a part of this. All right, smudge you next up. Oh, geez, I wanted to be in this from the start. I actually messaged you as soon as I woke up. I was like, oh, I got to get into this because I saw you guys just <laughs> streaming. I thought it was going to be Thursday. I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I actually missed that PM for a while. I already saw it as of uh, looking for extra guests because I never look at PMs once I've started streaming. Um, oh. It's my it's my era. Uh, but you, you've been watching it since it started, have you? Oh, well, I took a break for uh, for dinner and whatnot, but mm -hmm. uh, geez, it was, I was, like, it was driving me nuts because I was re-watching it uh, last night. We were talking about it yesterday, too. I was like, I'm going to do a video about this, and I kept listening to it. It's like, no, this is really specific to you and, and Rags. I'm like, oh, if I do this, I'm going to be, like, kind of defending you. You don't need me to defend you. You're totally fine doing it yourself. 
and it would just be a waste, really. So that's why I, I mean, want to. I've, uh, I've, I've just been I've just been bickering with uh, what was the name Jack on Twitter because mm-hmm. the way he goes about his very smug points is just kind of embarrassing. He doesn't and, seem horrible. Uh, it particularly well. He was really he was really digging in his feet, and I was just trying to ask him, okay, why don't you want rags to be there? And he's like, be, because it wouldn't be even. And I said, okay, well, are you saying that they wouldn't be respectful of you and that they would just like be a bunch of hype men, as he put it, and start like ragging on you, no pun intended? And uh, he just he just kept kind of repeating himself. And I was just like, well, I don't really think it's a good look to just keep taking like these cheap, immature pot shots on Twitter. Like, w- w- how does that make you look good? <laughs> it just makes you look really fucking unreasonable. And plus, the people who aren't watching, they're probably missing a lot of context and wondering what the hell he's talking about. Well, yeah, this yeah. this the stream is going to be for as a as a definitive take, and you might be like, "Oh, they more ago is taking a fifty minute video into however long this ends up being." And I'll just be like, it's just "Well, yeah." The people keep people keep falling back on the lazy. Oh, his response video is going to be five hours. It's like that's as he as he would say, "That's not an argument." Yeah, <laughs> and it's like so. Um, yeah, that's also What's wrong because it's going to be like twelve. Well, I think anyone who talks to him directly, like anyone who uses objective observations and talks about objectivity versus subjectivity, we're going to give him every reasonable doubt, whatever he wants to say, and we're going to evaluate his facts. And that's it. Or anyone would do that. Rags would do that. I would do that. Anyone here would. Yeah, exactly. I'm not interested in attacking him or anything like that. I just think if you make a lazy video that misrepresents somebody, uh, I think it's fair to uh, dispute that. So really? if he's watching and he remembers me as the annoying cunt from Twitter, Jack, I don't hate you. I just think you're really fucking annoying. And uh, <laughs> I, I wanted to, uh, I, I really do want him to come on and talk to you guys because I, I genuinely think it would be a very enlightening exchange. But he seems uh, hell-bent on refusing, uh, you know, abs- doing anything he can to avoid that for some reason, which I suspect is because he thinks maybe he'll be humiliated on a live stream. Well, this, this entire awesome video, this, this entire video yeah. is- one of the most aggravating things to watch. Like we saw another two hour video that someone made, which the arguments were so bad. And and the whole title of this video is that it's long and not deep. Like that's the exact example of something that's long and just not even worthwhile to watch. So this kind of video is, is like part truth and part misconstruing and out of context. You just, it's very aggravating that, Mahler, whomever, made this long video to explain things in detail and to not derive any sort of meaning out of that is like, are you, are you listening to his words? And then when they literally cut video clips out of context, you're like, okay, now I know you're not listening to his words. You're just saying this for the sake of argument. And that's not how you should form an argument. That's not how you should talk to someone. It's like, if I was Mahler, I'd be kind of like, Jesus, this has got to be addressed and Thank well, yeah, that's why I got the references ahead of time, and it seems to yeah. have really dispelled it, like, showing the clips as they were originally, and then showing what they came away with is telling as fuck. And also, you know, you get to the point where it's really hard to say, like, so this was just uh, an accident, right? They made a mistake? It's like, hmm... Mm, I don't know. I have to be generous to say it, but I mean, uh, not out of the realm of possibility. If they had an editor, if they had a third opinion, or I don't know, someone else who was like, "Hey, who actually liked your sh- your stuff?" and said, and there were some guys in the comments who said, "Hey, this is a good, this is probably the best attempt." And I'm like, "Yeah, I guess it is, but it's still pretty bad." So, um, I mean, it's a pity that Wolf and Rags on here to answer this question, but it's just like, is this better or worse than TRO's video? And I'd probably be like, I think it's worse. Um. There's more misrepresentations in this th- than there is in the TRO one, because TRO is uh, banking on the space in Rags' responses to interpret. So it's like he's actually going from the text and then using it while Quinton makes a couple of blatantly bad takes on something, and then one of them being an outright lie. While here, like, it f- feels to me that Jack has done his very best to find any way of uh, cherry picking and straw manning. Like, it's like he's classically trained in that. If he had actual facts that you pointed that were false and he would attack you on that, that'd be great. That's, that'd be a great example because you're not perfect. There are flaws for sure. But I didn't see any of those. And you even admitted to the, some of them. It's like, well, why didn't you just attack those? That would be totally yeah. fine. And instead also we have just so much dismissal. Um, 
not to derail us, but uh, Jack was accusing people uh, who were, you know, basically calling him a coward for just sort of tucking his tail between his legs and doing everything he could to not to join you in any sort of discussion. He he said those people were, uh, he's like, is this one of those straw men I heard so much about? And I was just like, oh, you're so smug. <laughs> you're so smug. How is that anyway a straw man? I don't, I don't get that. Well, I don't know. What can we assume about his take on what a straw man even is? I don't know. I mean, he clearly doesn't understand, understand a lot about him. him. Well, even with uh, the other gentleman, they weren't defining their terms again, and they keep talking about how important themes are, and you're like, what is a theme? Please tell us so we can understand you, and they never got to that. It's as if it's universally assumed this nebulous term is just, everyone knows the first definition is true. You're like, what is it? No, defining terms, uh, this, so there's, there's like two angles to it. It's like um, to ignore the terms that I've defined and then to also not even give your own defined terms. It's like they, they do both of those things regularly, so it makes it really hard to understand what they're even trying to say. Yeah, and I was, I was uh, in the comment section of the original video still typing. I, I think you actually left a comment in one of the, the comment chains to at least three other people. And they're trying to tell me about formal logic and informal logic, and they're trying to define logic. It's like, listen, he uses logic. Do you understand the various flavors of logic? Because I don't. I just know the one flavor. And it's the one that A follows B and B follows C, and therefore A is equal to C, or, you know, basic stuff. I was like, well, I teach logic. It's like, I don't care. He's not trying to teach someone <laughs> logic. He's trying to explain what happens in a movie and why there's a problem. That's all he's doing. And it was just like this bizarre back and forth. And then someone was talking about the climate change. I'm like, okay, this is going into politics now. It's bizarre, these people who are trying to attack us or attack you specifically about objectivity when it's just, yeah, it's a tool we use. It's very effective and we use it and we have facts and we look at the facts and we talk about- It's mainly in about... favor of clarity, just so that we get to the point where when you argue a thing and I'm like, is that just how you feel or is that an actual thing? And you're like, that is an actual thing. And you're like, okay, cool. I can actually check it. Yep. Exactly. And uh, they don't seem to enjoy that more than the visual experience. Like, yep, that's certainly part of the experience of watching a movie or reading a book. There's, there are visuals, there are descriptions. Uh, it's not the be all. It's certainly a part, but there's also dialogue. There's, there's narration. There's all sorts it's, of it's, other things. Make sure the video is actually right, working for everybody. That... Is that, can you see Eric right now? Yes, we can. Yep. Beautiful. Um, weirdly, the chat for me, like it's working for stream because it's embedded, but um, the chat for me is broken. I can't actually see it. It's not working right now. I'm waiting for it to update. And my live dashboard on the other monitor is just gone. Like it's a white screen on the browser. Rip Rudy. Neither of these things are reassuring, but the fact that the stream is still functioning and everyone can hear you guys and the video still works, I guess I can carry on and just hope that it fixes itself while we uh, continue. Yeah, chat's working and everything. Um, but mm -hmm. don't worry about super chats, folks. They will still be, um, I can still access them even if the live dashboard fucks up and we'll just do every one of them at the end and obviously anybody who wants to stay is welcome to stay for any of that. And um, as for descriptions for channels that are people that are here, I'll sort that all out at the very least in post, but if I can, I'll, I'll update the description. I think when I updated with the straw poll, it like killed the live dashboard. I don't know why. <laughs> um, so yes, uh, that was... There was the, just the additional section from Eric Taxon. Oh, sorry, I must have skipped ahead to... Yeah, okay. If I come on to EFAP and it turns out you haven't seen any of these, uh, I, I'm just going to step right the fuck back out. Sorry. I'm also going to step out if Rags is there. Oh, shit. The Moore's most recent hurt. review of 2018's Predator reboot is incidentally marked with all the same issues we've seen in The Last Jedi review, The Black Panther review, and every other extended critique. A tedious summary wavering between superficial digs at things you don't like because it makes you sigh and say what the fuck, and literally just saying things that happen with no real reason to remark on it. And I'm not fucking kidding here, guys. She ends up shooting herself with the tranquilizer in her own fucking foot. God, really? A strong female character making mistakes? Can't have that in today's <laughs> Hollywood. Oh, what a take, right? <laughs> oh, yes. It's a woman. Hey, Mollard, That's your you only you reason. Women? Oh, I hate, Just like, the concept women. of women. It, an actual woman? <laughs> Oof. Yeah, never mind going line movie? by line. Oh, my I, God. I what were you thinking? Going for. <laughs> so, uh, for context, because I don't need to show these, I can just tell you guys at this point, because the other references have shown how much of a 
I was gonna say liar. Let's just say how much of an incompetent yeah. person Jack is. Um, so they need the, the. There's so much about the film The Predator that is fucking awful in terms of storytelling, and um, obviously they need the girl to be knocked out so that the team of heroes that we're with can take her back. And like when she wakes up, she's like, "What the fuck? Why am I here?" And then they break it down. And then she works with them. So they needed to get her out of the action situation, but on board with them. That's your writing problem. So you go, how do we do this? Like, we'll get her unconscious, and then they'll pick her up to help her, and then she's with them. How do we do that? Well, we could have her, like, you know, fall off the van that she's currently on, and hit her head vaguely and just knock her out. It's like, no, no. She's holding a trank gun. Have her shoot herself in the foot. <laughs> it's like, what? You know, like, she just shoots herself in the fuck. I don't, I don't know. You know, like, so she's sitting on the van with her legs in front of her, trying to aim at something, and they hit, like, a rock with the car and uh, the van, and she accidentally shoots herself. And, wow. Okay. Yeah, we'll go with that. That was a fifth. And so, my rage videos are supposed to be me in, like, utter disbelief at some of these things, and you'd be like, you didn't explain why that's bad, and I'm like, oh, well, yeah, you got me. I, I just thought that was stupid intrinsically, but, like, sure. And the, the irony is that he's been doing it throughout this whole video with a lot of uh, quotes and clips of mine. But he, like, doesn't appreciate it when I do it about a movie, as opposed to him doing it about my character. It's like, cool. The standards are very interesting. Um, but yeah, and then his take the, how dare a woman make a mistake? Yeah, and it's weird, too, because it's all, like, it, he's immediately equated it to a strong female character doing it as if that's supposed to be normal. Like, are women supposed to fuck up that hard and you expect that? I, uh, I think he's just trying to be tongue-in-cheek. Because I literally, sorry, go ahead. I literally don't understand what kind of point he's trying to make because it, it seems to go against previous points he's been making. If he is suggesting that you think she should be stronger than this as a female character, if that's the insinuation, like I find myself thinking about this statement a lot with his video, but I'm like, what do you think you're saying, Jack? Because I, yeah, that's, I'm not getting it. That's basically the question I would have for him at this point. What does he think he's saying? What like, point does he just think he made? Give it well, to me again. Between, different. between the rage and the praise videos is you go line by line. That's the same thing. Everything else is like, well, you're going to be gushing about one thing. You're going to be hating on something. So that's a pretty clear distinction. He's not, I don't think he actually made that distinction between your type, as you described throughout the, the show. He, he just wasn't catching on to the fact that, oh, he's really praising something here. Or in this video, it's all hated or it's all criticism. It's like, okay. Can can you, is there a different style he's using? Perhaps is he? Is there a reason why he's doing that? Either way, let's continue Indeed. with the tranquilizer in her own fucking foot. God, really? A strong female character making mistakes? Can't have that in today's Hollywood. With all that said, I think I'm getting it now. Writing this with <laughs> Eric, combing through the archives, I get why Muller and those who follow him have convinced themselves that this is the same as a real, in-depth, nitty-gritty critique. Real, in-depth, nitty-gritty. <laughs> what the hell do any of those mean? Does, does he want, like, like, like dramatic structure? Basement. Like, what does he want? To, what, what is the def definition? What, uh, you want, like, want you to write a book? Like, a, a, an essay? And, like, publish it? Like, what does he want? Well, I mean, you know, he's, he's, he's telling me that there are no such things like an objective standard that I can adhere to or have presented, and then he's like, I am not adhering to standards that he, he apparently has, that I are nebulous to. And it's just like, God, this is just so confusing to follow, but... Sure. Hey, it's the, it's the right. notepad. Is that the first time you've taken that out, this video? Well, the problem is that, um... It's all horrible, and I don't know which... I'm trying to think of which part... The thing is with the notepad, what I've just put down is in a, is already been from other videos, the real thing. In-depth and nitty-gritty, I guess I can keep, but we, I've already planned to put real into the thing, because it's just funny to keep referring to the thing you're describing as real. It's not that I've never done it before, it's just that... Come on, Jack. Real and in-depth. What is a real critique? What does that even mean? Yeah, what would he define as one... What do you think you're saying, Jack? Because clearly he's saying this in, con in, in uh, you know, he, he's saying it in a very sarcastic way. So it's like, okay, so he's, he's, is he suggesting that it's fake? So what do you suggest is real? And, um, Can yeah, it's just... real first, by the way? They're just placeholders because he can't actually figure out what he's actually trying to tell me. Like, does he mean inaccurate? That's a different word altogether, you know? 
Yeah. <laughs> you have an area unexamined in your mind, and that's where the combination of conscious and unconscious impulses that make you feel certain ways about certain things lie. You've there's, built a system, a concrete... There's no such thing as being aware of your unconscious mind, and that's called the subconscious, if you want to be specific. You're correct. But, yes. But you wouldn't be aware of your unconscious during that time. You'd be asleep in, in beta mode or whatever. Well, I'm assuming he's making the argument here that what I'm referring to as objective criticism is just a part of my mind that I'm not quite aware of. Uh, you, you use both. <laughs> you, you, that's bizarre. I, don't, I would never want to guesstimate his mental state or yours, but... If you listen to any of your videos, whether it's the rage or the praise videos, you do use objective observation, and then you have a lot of emotion behind it. So it's not really half and half, but there is a difference. Uh, apparently, clear. Jack just said he's still up for chat with Mola, but nothing other than a one-on-one -on -one at this stage. At least he's conceding that. I, I personally, I would do it just to see how it goes down. Because the thing is, would that be easy? I feel like, or would it just be he he has to leave at one point and then I bring on Wolf and Rags again? <laughs> well, here's here's the thing: he's not going to fucking he's not going to work with you unless you strictly adhere to his rules. So that's pretty much the only way you're going to get him to talk to you is by you know letting him throw his tantrum and just believe you know just going by his terms. And I would say just do it just this once well, we to humor him. It'll clearly show that you're like the bigger person because I, I understand not throwing rags out. That makes perfect sense. Uh, but if he's going to concede that he's at least willing to have a conversation, I would be interested in hearing it. It's just so weird. What is the animosity towards rags? It looked like he was going to elaborate on that and then they just cut it out. because he just wanted it to be two on two. He wanted yeah, to be him and Eric. Rags? I I don't know. He Maybe will... he's toxic. He once, uh, Eric once said after he'd completed his video on Wolf that uh, he's happy to talk to Wolf about it personally, but not me and Rags. And I asked him why, and he said, because me and Rags are two of the most toxic YouTubers on the platform. So I was like, okay, interesting. But if he's, like, if he's willing to, to talk to me now... My birthday party. Sorry? It comes down to, I don't really want him at my birthday party kind of situation. Yeah. Um, <laughs> obviously, because we've school. addressed this now, but it's like... Um, the whole he called me a schoolyard insult. I have this the reaction of it's a schoolyard insult. I'm confused. Why are you taking it so seriously? If it's you would you agree that it's something that shouldn't even matter? Um, and I've seen you be very very polite to everyone that disagrees with you whenever they come on your you know in your show. Like I know you'd well, the, be just a simple H bomber guy. We're talking about rags though. Uh, from what I, rags is like. I don't know. What would you describe him as? Rough or, or brutal? Rough. Rough, blunt. rough I He's get it. Blunt, <laughs> blunt sure. Um, none of these are qualities that I actually have any problem with with Rags. I like how uh, clear he is with the person he has an issue with. Uh, but there's an element that you might find him too intimidating to want to, um, I don't know, be engaged with, maybe? maybe. But, like, if they don't provide us a reason, we should right. have to assume one. Jack has also just said your crowd led to the mass harassment of Star Wars crew members. Okay. Yeah, that's not true. Jack uh -huh. uh, orchestrated many abuse campaigns in uh, several countries, including Australia and Germany. If I say it, it's just true. That's how this works. <laughs> say, repeat the lie enough, right? Also, I want to say, I, I like Rags a lot. I think he's really cool. I always enjoy listening to him. And I left this comment on his newest video about uh, Fallout 76. But holy shit, somebody give him more royalty-free music to use. Because after an hour of that one lo-fi hip-hop song being used, I wanted to shoot myself in the mouth. <laughs> well, again, I, point, I really like, like Rags. But I was miserable. <laughs> <laughs> well, at one point, music like the music just ended, like for the last like forty-five minutes or so, there was like nothing left. There was no music oh. at all. <laughs> I would take no music over that same song for an hour. <laughs> I do agree that does need to switch it up a little bit. Um, How can he say that this is the kind of thing that results in the harassment? The casting crew, when there's literally a part of the stream where you tell people not to harass him, because it's, that would be it bad. doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. Um, I've had other people uh, address this before. They'd be like, Mola, what do you say to the fact that your critiques would give people the sense that they are right to go after the cast and crew members, whether or not you intended that? I'm like, what do you want me to say to that? And they're like, I want you to admit that you're responsible for cast and crew harassment. And I'm like, I'm not. There's this weird, like, I don't know if it's like an ideology thing, but like, 
if you read a book on fishing and then decide to kill your parents, it's like, you can't blame the fishing book. It's sort of a guilt by association thing, honestly. It's a very weak argument. Like, your your followers are adults. They're going to do what they want. I disagreed with Jack on Twitter about some stuff, and maybe I got a little bit nasty at first just seeing the way that he was approaching things really irked me because it was very insincere and very immature. But, you know, I I tried my best not to attack him or anything like that. Mm -hmm. and I just think that people conflate the two very frequently. Um, but yeah, anyway, let's kick on. Give, it, give us it. everything you got, Jack concrete coherent system that has made it easier for you to identify what things specifically you don't like mostly somewhere along the way you convinced yourself that these things being objectively a part of the text arguably makes your feelings on them also objective no arguably yeah but the, <laughs> arguably his, even if everything he said here was coherent and true um all i have to do to prove him wrong is give him a film that I think is objectively bad, that I enjoy. Uh, therefore meaning my feelings are contradictive to the, what I would consider the objective assessment. Because his, his, his revelation here for me is to be like, Mauler, don't you understand? All of your feelings on films happen, just so happen to line up with all your, all your objective assessments on films. And I'd be like, but they don't though. Then he's like, oh, what? And I'm like, yeah, so like, The Room? I think it's fucking awful, but I really enjoy it. Batman and Robin's fucking awful, but I really enjoy it. Um, uh, there, there are movies like Infinity War. I think it's really flawed, but I think like I, I enjoy it to a level that's far beyond how flawed I consider it to be objectively. Do you, do you see where I'm going? Oh yeah, for sure. Is, yeah, the rest of this video is just going to be a ten minutes of pseudo psychoanalysis followed by a three minute patron crawl. I'm going to be pissed. A little bit. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to hop out for a minute. I'm going to go grab just, a snack, and then I'll just mute myself for, like, probably ten minutes. All good, man. So really? that these things being objectively a part of the text, arguably, makes your feelings on them also objective. And now you've decided, without a lick of real study into how most of this stuff could or should be measured, that you're simply on another level to other critics. You've seen the code. Now you can spread the word by giving really long summaries of things and going, this good, this bad, this good, this bad. Hell, if you do it enough, it's just like a real analysis. It Fuck, Holy nailed it. shit. Nailed what it. What the wow. hell? That's just That's mean. exactly what you do. This is the cuntiest misrepresentation I've ever heard of your content. <laughs> this good, this bad, long man bad. He keeps long saying man long bad. man bad. That, that's, that's the meme, that's a new one right there. We're using that. I really like it, long man. <laughs> How do you measure things like, objectively? Like, you, just, you just look at it. It's just there. It's right in front of your face. That's it. That's all we're doing. What's weird is he keeps referring to the unbridled rages where it's just like quick and mostly entertaining and you you flat uh -oh. out said like it's All not right. facts. I just realized um we're at 7 hours and 9 minutes and there's no way we're finishing within an hour I don't think especially with super chats we read out. Apparently YouTube streaming has a limit of 8 hours. Oh. Start another. Well, I was going to say I can, <laughs> I can start another but that's like We're not stopping awkward. for anyone. <laughs> Should I do you think I should stop and start now so it's chunkier on the other end of it or yeah, could. I would say so. I think that would make sense. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, this is going to be a two-part two part, two part EFAP. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't um, have laughed that hard. EFAP. We two will fart. just... I'll take the break for about five minutes, I suppose, to make sure they separate out. Um, and then we will return, and I, I can just redo the thumbnail because it'll be a different cast. That makes enough sense. And we will address the rest yeah. of this video and then all the Super Chats after doing sort of conclusion. It's going to be great. Too far, too far. Right. Two farter, let's go. <laughs> so yes, uh, goodbye, chat. We will return. Give us five to ten minutes. Donate to my Patreon. <laughs> <laughs>